Surviving 1,000 days in hardcore Minecraft is not easy. But during that time, I can destroy entire dimensions, make massive builds, and find a lot of diamonds. And by the end of this 1,000 day journey, I went from 6,000 to 7,000 days in my world. As we said, it is great to be back. And now that I'm past 4 million subscribers, the villager has been added to the collection. And in order to build this massive end hub, I'm going to have to sort out a pretty big problem. You'll see as I go through this portal, 100 ender dragons live here and, and they would just destroy everything. And I'll grab my bow, grab some arrows, and then get busy defeating every single one. That's the first one defeated. And my bow is just broke, but I did get the second one. So it's time I tried plan B. And that plan is to grab some slime, some TNT, and a bunch of redstone components. Next, I can use these to build a machine that will defeat the ender dragons for me. That's way better than having to do all the work myself. It's going to be a simple TNT cannon. This slime block will push the TNT towards them all. And this contraption that I'm building right here is where the magic will happen. Fairly simple contraption. I think that is all there is to it. Other than the fact that I need to hook this redstone up to this piston. And I forgot to bring the lever. One of the most important parts. I'm sure there's one in the end I can use. Yeah, this one here will do just nicely. Now, I have calculated this to be in the right position, so it should get the ones down there. But the moment of truth is now. Oh, they're going. Look at that. Some of them are just falling straight down, which isn't too big of an issue. But a lot of them are heading down. And are the dragons getting damaged down there? Yes, they are. Look at that. Fantastic. All right, we now have a weapon to defeat them all. And I just have to wait for ages and ages for them all to be defeated. It looks to me like quite a lot of them... Are, are in that moment of dying. Like, they're trying to do the animation, but to do it, they have to get to me. Is this, is this going to be the next problem? <laughs> I can only assume that if I turn this off, that'll let some of them get down to the bottom, because they do get knocked back from the TNT. And then they seem to be bouncing off these frozen ones in the area, so I, I suppose I have to get rid of them as well. This really is becoming more complicated than I thought it was going to. Getting rid of them will require a brand new infinity bow, and I might have the books for it already in here. Yep, flame, infinity, power five. You'll give me on breaking three, at, at least you would if I had enough emeralds. So it's a good thing I have an unlimited supply of them right here. There you go. I'll do some combining. I'm not bothered about getting punched too, and you can't put mending and infinity on the same bow, which is very annoying. So what I have here will just have to do. Also just about kept above a thousand levels which is nice. And now I can get busy defeating these ones down here. That's you gotten rid of. You also look like you could be problematic to them and boost them upwards. So you also have to go. Look at them. There's two of them at the same time. That's just so cool. Three of them. Oh now they're all able to land. It's so cool to watch. Now this machine can be put back into action. Everything was running fine. The dragons are slowly getting less and less, you can't tell, but, but trust me, they are. But then one of these dragons got flung into my machine and broke it, so I've just got to fix it. And from that, normal service can be resumed. And it looks at this point like every single one that was perching has now gone. Which means this can be turned off, and it's just all these frozen dragons around the outside that now need to be removed. And my goodness, there seems to be a lot of them. So this <laughs> could be quite a challenge. Kind of satisfying to land hits on it like this, isn't it? Seems that when it comes to using your elytra and bows, this is the strategy to do it. I think I need to turn the entity distance right up just to be able to see. Okay, there's quite a lot dotted around, isn't there? Did not expect there to be this many. If I go ahead and reload the world, look, it starts to perch. And I've managed to do it if I go near some other ones as well. They also start perching. So this could make life a little bit easier for me because it means I can just use the TNT machine on them. Basically, it seems that any dragons that are above these obsidian blocks can fly back in and be unfrozen. And the ones that are below, well, they're stuck forever. Oh, my lights have gone. Uh, don't panic. Whoa, that was close. That was very, very close indeed. That's why I carried a spare pair. This dragon was more trouble than it was worth. And I'm going to leave these four dragons alone because I plan to trap them in four different cages in my end hub. And so the next very, very fun task is to remove all of these obsidian pillars. Thankfully, I've got haste too, but it is still going to take me quite some time. I'm just going to make sure I don't make the same mistake as I did in the past and fall into the void. Although, as long as I'm careful and keep an eye on things, I, I should be fine. I've just realized I have run out of firework rockets. I do have the shulker box, but if I'd have been in the void and run out, that would have been a bit problematic, wouldn't it? And I've also completely run out of space for all the obsidian. I might as well keep collecting it up and chucking it in here. As I always think, you can never have too much obsidian. And this is it. I'm on the final pillar 
of this entire tower. Finally, it is mission accomplished. And there's no way I can do this for all the other towers. It would probably take me a year. A, a, a Minecraft year, that is. So I have a plan on how I'm going to do the rest. I just hope that it works. The plan is going to involve using withers because they are one of the few mobs that can break obsidian, but only in certain circumstances. So it's, it's going to be tricky. And I can't even think about building the machine until I have more wither heads. Thankfully for me, I have just the farm for that. So I'll get busy using it. Whilst being AFK at this farm, do you know what I've realised? I've realised that it's just too slow. Like, I spent quite a bit of time here, and yes, there are mobs coming down, but I could make one that's so much better and so much quicker. And so that's what I'm going to do. Yes, I might be getting a little bit sidetracked, but I really think it has to be done. That farm's been there for nearly 6,000 days. It's definitely time for an upgrade. And considering I have an entire nether perimeter down here, I'm sure I can utilise it well to build a very, very fast farm. This right here is already a fortress farm. I've got it turned off at the moment, but it only spawns blaze and pigment. However, I can use a similar concept in these four chunks here to build the perfect farm. The only thing I am going to need to do it is a lot of nether brick. I will need other things as well, but that's the main thing I'll need to do it. And what do I have a lot of in a chest? Well, not, not nether bricks. Yep, I've got a few in here, don't you worry. Loads of bricks that can turn, be turned into nether brick blocks. And another thing that'll make this useful is it'll also get me plenty of coal, which I never seem to have enough of. I've, always, I've got loads of blaze rods for fuel, but coal always seems to kind of elude me. On top of the bricks and the temporary blocks, there is also going to be quite a few other items that I'll need, such as walls, which I can't see. I can see the odd measly wall here and there, but not, not a proper amount of them, so that's something I'll just probably end up crafting. I could craft them out of stone, actually, because I seem to have an infinite supply of those. I'm not going to bore you with the details of every single other item, because there is quite a few. That is everything. And when building this, I'm going to have to attempt to use my brain, which is never an easy thing, to make sure I get everything right and make it as efficient as it possibly can be. First things first, I'll craft a couple of stacks of these, grab some items, and find the center point of these four chunks. I know I keep on the same level as this. Basically, it uses the fact that we're still in a nether fortress's bounding box, so if you place nether bricks, mobs can spawn on them. And this is going to be the middle point of the farm, so I'm going to have four chests. This is what the iron golem is going to be on. Now all these chunks need to be completely filled in with nether brick, which is why I originally needed so much of it. And now that the entire outline is done, I can fill in all of the middle. As I'm building this, I've realised something. Due to these redstone lamps, this part of the platform is going to be lit up. Those redstone lamps have to be on to switch off that farm. But then things won't spawn on this bit, so I'm going to have to move the entire farm a chunk in this direction. I was kind of trying to rectify it by placing netherrack in the way, but it's, it, it wasn't really working. And now I have the fun job of mining all these up and then collecting them on the bedrock. That's going to be kind of, You know what? I might just ignore them and leave them forget about them. Because gathering blocks down here can be very, very tedious. Also, on the positive side, all the time that I'm here building stuff... My gold farm is working away just a little bit. The reason I know this is I, I could see stuff going across and being sent into that storage system down there. It's getting there, but I have run out of nether brick. So it's a good thing there's an entire fortress here that I can use to grab it all. And I'm also a little bit tired of mob spawning when I'm trying to build this, so I've, I, I've got a plan for them too. I'll go back down this tunnel and then fly all the way along here to my mob switch. I've just got to activate it, I believe, by flicking that lever. And that should disable mobs from spawning anywhere in the nether. Yep, looks like it's working. I can now get back to building in peace. The only annoying side effect is the gold farm will no longer be in use, but it doesn't matter too much. I'd rather have that than have Blaze shooting me every two seconds. That's that all filled in. And now I can begin spawn proofing it so that magma cubes can't spawn. Wall posts will do that trick for me. Realise I once again haven't quite built this platform right. The border just needs to be removed so it's, there's a one block between the edge and the end of the chunk. Minor detail and thankfully very easy to fix. And now that's done, I can properly fill in all of the walls. It's basically just a massive grid that covers the entire platform like so. To get rid of pigment, turtle eggs are going to go on each of the four corners. Now I can add more walls around here with blocks on top. And this is basically going to be the place that the iron golem is going to go. Let's spawn you and then I can get you trapped in. Now the beginning of the portal can be made. I also then need to add even more walls and top them off with slabs. This is going to allow the mobs to get up into the portal. And these repeaters will make it so that only the taller mobs can see the golem. All the other ones won't go for it. Now I can complete the portal. This bit is now completely done. And so I must now build up and make another portal directly above it. This is the spot. That's the AFK platform done. The other portal is going to be in this very spot. And this is where I'll be able to take out the mobs. This side's completely done. So now I need to go back to the overworld side so I can build the chambers 
that will send them through. Right about here is the spot. Now to get up to the correct height. That's one of the portals done. And it started raining. Well, that's not what I want to see. Thankfully, it's going dark, so I'll be able to sleep through it. But we're going to have another portal right here. And I don't know why I'm really spawn-proofing them, because there's no need to. But, but, but anyway, I have done. Also, don't really need blocks behind it, because they're, they're going to teleport through. But just in case, I, you know what? You know what? Let, let's remove these, because... If for some reason they, they can't teleport through, at least these ones will be pushed, you know, down down there. So I'll add some slabs so that mobs just get automatically pushed upwards into it. I'm going to come over here, add myself three cobwebs, and head through here. Come walk through that door. And it should be working. In theory, this farm should be ready to go. These blocks are kind of annoying me. And the best way that I have to turn off the mob switch is just going to be to reload the world. Because that will mean that the chunks that the chunk loader are in are no longer loaded. That is that done. Lots of mobs should be spawning down below. And they are starting to come through, but I fear that because I haven't built this in the center of my perimeter, there may be some spawning spaces for other mobs that I need to remove. I think it's up here. I think this little area here is probably just in. And so I have the very fun task of heading back home, crafting a load of slabs, and spawn-proofing everything. And I'm pretty sure I have now spawn-proofed every single block. I don't really need to place me there, but I am anyway. Yeah, it should all be done. So, so many slabs. I'm going to actually struggle to get out of here. I've just got to go down like this. There's also a block on the edge here which needs to be removed. Let's Get rid of that. Yeah, I think it's I think that's all I need to do because of the height the way I've worked it out. I'm pretty sure that's out of it. Time will tell. I will just see how this farm performs. And they do seem to now be coming through much, much faster. So I'm glad all that spawn proof it wasn't for nothing. It's way better than that other farm I had at the other fortress earlier. And it should get me over a hundred heads per hour, so. I'm going to put that to the test. Well, this time round, the farm has worked so so much better at getting me what I need. Look at I've got like three sta over three stacks of the heads plus loads of coal it, it really has been a very very productive time and it's getting a little bit chilly so i've just put my four million subscribers hoodie on which is available at sp77.store i can also offload all of these coal blocks apparently i'd run out of them and put all of the heads into here and now i can get back to the end and back to the big mission of removing the entire end island in order for the wither machine to work that's going to destroy the obsidian pillars the actual end stone around the bases needs to be removed all the way down to the void. I'm estimating it probably needs to be about this wide around it to have space for the machine, but then all the way around. And if you think I'm gonna do this by hand, you've got another thing coming. We've got to use TNT. But before I wanna start using TNT and all that, I need to get these four dragons moved out to safety, which will mean grabbing some redstone items to make flying machines. That is every item I need. <laughs> Not too much, thankfully. Should also grab a few more firework rockets because I don't want to get caught in somewhere like flying over the void and run out of them. That would definitely be a disaster. Now I need to do a little bit of building, which is easy enough because they're quite straightforward flying machines. And I have to make sure there's obsidian at the other end in the perfect spot. Otherwise, they would just float off into the great void of nothingness. I'm gonna place this, it should set off. Push the dragon along to exactly where I want it. Enderman, pack it in. You're ruining this moment for me. What do you think? Okay, you know, whoa, ladies and gentlemen, don't die SP, come on. The most pointless waste of a totem ever there. Let's, let's line that up and maybe try to be a, a little more, okay. I just about to say I need to be a little bit more careful than I do that. Just get out of here, all right? Just pack it in. Anyway, yeah, it stops up the obsidian and I can get busy moving all of the other ones. All of them have successfully been moved away now. I don't know why, but I can hear a dragon flying around. I just can't see it. But if I go down here, I can hear the noises. I can only guess that there is one somewhere underground. Have I found it? Is this his wing? What are you doing down here? And more importantly, how am I going to get rid of you? Can I hit... Okay, this is, this is kind of working. If I... Well, do I have to just take the hits as well? Yeah, this isn't working. I think a better idea is to go in the ender chest, grab the bow... Grab the arrows and get busy lighting it up. And there we go. It's been defeated and it is dying in the spot you'd expect it to right in the middle. And now it is true. I have built many things in the end. There's some good stuff, but it has all got to go. Every single thing. And I know I said I wanted to remove the obsidian towers. <laughs> Look at that hole. But they're best done at the end. It is best if I remove the end stone first and there is space for the wither machine. I'll be using TNT to destroy the end. Things like this obsidian cage probably need to be removed. I'll also manually mine up that beacon. Don't want it all to be blown up. That You know, some helpful items there. But everything else is going to be destroyed by TNT. Everything's nearly removed that needs to be. I just need to find a place for all that bomb. It was for the old dragon farm of a thousand days. What a blast from the past that was. I'm just collecting little pistons here and there as well. This water's also got to go. Once upon a time, the obsidian farm was good to me. I've got a lot of it that I needed. But I'll have to make a new version of it at some point when the end base is completed. I would like to gather up loads of materials here, so... 
I'm going to drop off all this stuff into this chest right here. And then grab a few shulker boxes to hold some items, such as all of that bone meal and all of this subsidian. It's kind of sad that all this stuff is, is going to go, isn't it? You know, it's memories. It's, it's a good old farm back in the day, but... There's bigger and better things ahead. I've nearly removed absolutely everything here, but my inventory's kind of full. So I'm going to empty off again, and I can remove the last few little bits. That does include the void trading station, which I'm a little bit sad to see go, because it's been a very, very good little thing to me. I'll probably rebuild it later, but right now it will be a problem, and it needs to be removed. I think that's that. I think I'm ready to destroy absolutely everything else. Can't believe I ran out of inventory space again. Man, there's so many stuff to mine up in this place, isn't there? After giving some thought to what the best course of action is, I think I should manually remove some of the tops of the very tallest towers. And if I build the World Eater at this level, which is level 96, the TNT will fall far enough that it will break all of the endstone on the entire island. I also think another dragon has appeared in the endstone. I don't know where. I, I guess I'll find it later on. And if I'm going to be mining the tops of some of these pillars, I think a new beacon needs to be set up, which once again means offloading items, hopefully for the final time. What on earth? Why are you guys flying again? You're meant to be frozen. Are you kidding me? It just... It just flew that one off into oblivion. Oh my, well, at least you're out of the way, I suppose. You, on the other hand, are kind of a nuisance, but I'll leave you alone for now. Instead, I will just focus on quickly building a beacon, setting it to give me haste too, and then I can shave off the top of these pillars. Although, before I'm doing that, I should probably get rid of the bedrock and mining it ain't gonna work. But thankfully, TNT mixed with pistons and trapdoors will get the job done nicely. I'm pretty sure this is the setup. It's been a while since I've done it, but all being well, when I flick this lever, it should break the bedrock. Yes, it did. Also, I don't know what we're doing with another escape dragon. I thought it froze over there, but apparently it, uh, it's flying around again. It really should be possible for it to do that with all the obsidian up there. I, I, yeah, I don't know how it is, but I'll just leave it to it and continue. That's another one done, which means there's just eight more to go. That stupid dragon destroyed my beacon. I'm glad you're frozen now. I didn't know they could destroy the actual beacon block. What a waste. And that is every single one done, which means I can repair my beacon and then trim down the tops of these towers so that the world eater will fit above it. And at long last, I think I'm happy with how tall the pillars are. Mining every single bit of obsidian felt like a massive mission, but on the positive side, it has got me a lot of extra obsidian. Every single item has been gathered up that is going to allow me to make the TNT world eating machine. But before I can build that and set it off, I do need to get rid of this dragon, which is, yeah, co completely in the way. I'll do that by building a nice little flying machine that will push you away. And then it's Operation Destroy Everything, which will start with both of these beacons. Also got to remove stuff like this water and cover up the end portal with obsidian because otherwise TNT would go through and then completely destroy spawn. Yeah, I definitely don't want that to happen. I'll also do the same thing with this end gateway there. Because I've got a void trader on the other side that I definitely don't want getting ruined. That's both the beacons completely gone. And I'm going to build three of these world eating machines. Starting with the first one right here. I've built this machine many times before for doing world eating projects. So it's, it's going to be similar to that. Because I know it works well. And this is going to be one of the easier projects. Because there's no lava and there's no water in the end. So it's just basically just blow it up. And the only annoying thing that I really have to worry about is all those obsidian pillars just getting rid of them. Everything else is very straightforward. Anyway, the first of these machines is done. So now it's time for the other two. And that is every single one of them done. I can remove this temporary endstone platform. Mission accomplished. And with that, every single thing is ready. I'll just break this little bit of endstone scaffolding. It probably could just stay where it is, but I'm, I'm getting rid of it anyway. Only one thing could go wrong now, and that is for my pickaxe to break. As you can see, it's very low on durability. It is at 66. I'm kind of confident, though, that I can remember to repair it before it runs out. And I've got a plant. Hello, Enderman. What are you doing up here? But I've got a plan on how I'm going to repair it as well. The Enderman farm. That Enderman farm down there has got to be the perfect place to do it. I just hope it lasts till then because I keep... My... I want to basically mine away this entire bridge and then go. And I'm worried that it might run out. But it seems to have just about stood the test of time. All these Endermen can now be dealt with. And the pickaxe repaired. Including my Elytra too. That's mission accomplished. And I'll just quickly get myself up to level 1005. So now I couldn't be more ready. Couldn't be more ready to destroy the entire end. I do need to get rid of these little flying machines too. Because I don't want TNT to land on them and then hurt the dragons. <laughs> that would that would just ruin everything if I lose these dragons. Removing the first one wasn't too bad. But getting rid of this one is a bit trickier. Because, yeah, the, the dragon's too close. But I think that should be enough. I can't get rid of that bit of endstone. But everything else is sorted. So now I can set these off. And watch the entire end get destroyed. All of these seem to be working as intended. And it's just great to see that everything is going according to plan.
The machines are finished and pretty much everything has been destroyed. However, there is bits that were missed mainly because of the position. I think was this, I, I, just, I don't know why this bit was missed actually, I couldn't tell. Oh, it's just too low down, right? Same with those over there with the millions of Endermen all stood on. They're just too low down for the TNT jubers, but if I'd have built those TNT things any lower, then they would have blown themselves upon the obsidian pillars. So it's kind of an unavoidable thing, this really. Unless I mind the obsidian pillars to be lower, that, that might have solved it. But anyway, the dragons also have decided to, to, to kind of, they flew for a bit, then they refroze. There's one there and there's, there's one in the middle. The other two, somewhere about. But anyway, I'll get rid of this random little platform at the edge here. And then I can begin to tackle this massive bit right here. It would probably make a lot of sense for me to build a beacon in the middle so that I then have haste to and can mine all this endstone much, much faster. Whilst it is a bit of an inconvenience to have to mine this and instead not just have it be blown up. The good thing is I'm gaining a load of endstone from this which could come in useful for future builds. Otherwise it would just be lost and I'd have to mine it some other time. So yeah, every, every cloud has a silver lining I suppose. Although I've I have just run out of inventory space. I've got so much junk in it. You know what? I'm heading back. I'll get myself back through this portal. Are you going to let me leave? What's the big idea? I just I want to go home. Maybe from here will be better. Yeah, I could. All of this stuff can go into there. And I'll grab an extra shulker box for endstone. Just in case I don't have enough space. I would also like to make it a yellow one. Just because I, I always make the endstone ones yellow. It's the closest thing to that colour. So we'll dye that. I'm also a little bit short on rockets. Two left. When you're in the end and you're over the void... You want to make sure you always have loads, so let's do that. That should be more than enough to keep me going. And with that, I'm ready. I'm ready to head back to the nether and then through to the end, where the mining of endstone can continue. i tell you what I would like to do. Just get rid of all these little bits of straggler. It's a good thing that, that it's so easy to see. Like, endstone just shows up really, really well against the dark background of the end. So I can, yeah, just tell anywhere where there's a little bit that needs removing super, super easily. Ah, this is where that dragon was, and I couldn't, I couldn't get past. So I can mine both of these now. The, yeah, the dragon decided to fly back that way, which is it's one of them. A little bit annoying, but not the end of the world. Can I do this in midair? Oh, I can! And for this one, I shall land a very precise flight, which is all good practice for getting good with my Electra. I think once I mine that and... Oh, these little bits under the obsidian couldn't be broken. But yeah, once they're... Oh, there's one more piece there. But yeah, well, once they're gone, there's just that stuff underneath. But I think all the random little bits are finished and sorted. Just this little bit of floating obsidian. I can't really remember what it's from. But it is still definitely worth getting rid of. Now I think all I've got to focus on removing. There is stuff up there that I'll eventually get rid of. But I've mainly just got to focus on removing all of the endstone in this main bulk of it. We'll take a bit of mining. There's also this underneath. Shall I get rid of this now? There's a lot of string down here, you know. See you later, string. Get ready to be voided. Who remembers that challenge? Was it in 5,000 days or somewhere around that day mark? It was a, a very interesting and, and risky moment. That is job done. And now to get busy mining. That is all now completely removed. Basically just me and a bunch of Endermans on this platform. And the beacon can be mined up as well. Getting rid of every single bit of Enderstone took me way longer than I expected to. But... It is now officially done. And I now have the joy of removing all of these obsidian pillars using withers. If it sounds complicated, that's because it, 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 it kind of is. After a little bit of research and testing, I've realized that I can't yet use the wither pillar eaters. To make sure that they don't break, I'm going to have to build an end mob switch. And the easiest way for me to do that is basically going to be to get two villagers to the end. At least I would have to do that unless... I already have some villagers in the end. Talk about falling into place. This is absolutely perfect. I can simply press this button, send a villager, uh, hopefully, yeah, through the end gateway. And I'm actually going to need two of them, so let's, let's send you as well. Then if I go through... Are you guys alright? Don't take damage. Stay safe. You don't look like you're staying safe. Let's just get you nice and uh, platformed below, should we say. Then I need to decide where I'm actually going to put this mob switch. I don't really want to put it in the middle above the end fountain because... Yeah, the, the dragons have a habit of flying around over there. Instead, somewhere underneath seems like the best place to do this. This mob switch is going to require quite a lot of materials, to be honest. So I'm just going to start gathering up every single one. And here is every single item that is going to be needed. So now I can get to the end and get building. It's a very similar build to what I did for the Hero of the Village Farm. And I shall begin by building the Villager Breeder. Every bit of dirt is placed, so now I can start adding the slabs, which need to be waterlogged, but unfortunately I, I don't have an infinite water source. So I'll have to fly back to grab some ice. A stack of that will make water storage much, much easier. And I can refill the bucket right there. The only problem with this being the only platform in the whole area is yeah, it's just covered in endermen. I can just kind of punch them off like that, but you've got to make sure you actually get them off. And with that, the platform is pretty much empty. Oi, leave my farm alone, picking up my dirt. Who do you think you are? I get distracted way too easily. Anyway, I shall grab this netherite hoe and begin tilling the ground. Look, man, I wasn't joking when I said this. Yeah, you want to get angry? 
I have every right to be angry with you. Stealing farmland like they own the place, right? But I think the important thing here is going to be to get the carrots down as soon as possible, which I can simply do by planting them. Apparently, these edges aren't light enough. And to be honest, it'd probably be better if I just first do all of the walls, then I can do all of the lights, and then I can properly plant down every single carrot. This is looking good, and I might as well get the villagers in now, which means building a massive railway bridge all the way to this platform up here. And I actually don't have enough dirt or rails for that, so it is time for a restock. I've made it up here with the bridge, and thankfully the journey across is very much downhill for most of it, which means I don't have to worry about powered rails. To be honest, the momentum should get them very, very far. I'll, I'll just go with powered rails for this last little bit. Every single one is placed, so now to give them some power with the levers. And you, good sir, can begin your journey down. And so can you. Don't think you're exempt from it. Look at him go. Look at the speed. He's loving it. I bet he's never had such a great... No, Enderman. Oh, no. They're all in the way. Causing real issues, Enderman. I don't need this. Pretty sure once they're gone, they won't be able to spawn it. Do you mind? It's a good job I've got a light trip. As I was saying, once they're gone, they can't spawn on the bridge again because it's powered rails on top. You two are in. So, okay, well, I need the glass, as I was about to say. Welcome to your new home. I don't know how we're going to actually get you out of there. There you go. Now, if you could please get jobs and get to work... That would be amazing. And in the meantime, I'm going to block this up and begin work on this bottom part of the mob switch. This is the bit that's going to eject the villagers into this little spot. This is where they'll get to, well, they'll get infected here. Then they'll all be staying in there. And this little bit right here is what is going to sort them. It's starting to come together. This spot right here is where the guy that's going to infect him is going to be. So I'll have to get him at some point. And the machine that sorts the baby villagers from the adults and then the adults can go into here is, is, is going to be sorted next. So I'll just continue building. Also nice to see that these two are actually doing some work. And I'll do a temporary little area for them here with some beds. So they'll hopefully start getting me some babies. Glad to see this is kind of work because my villagers are sleeping. I better not try sleep with them otherwise I, I will blow up. Instead I'll go home and sleep and then they won't mind me destroying those beds and building a bigger bed area. Alright guys, show's over. Come on. Get, get back to work. I've got stuff to do here. The bed area has now been significantly expanded and now I've got to get a fella into that slot which once again should be fairly easy the only difference this time is that the bridge needs to connect to that obsidian platform I've almost made the new bridge I'm just getting rid of these rails so that they can be used instead for this straight right here next I'll get every single bit levered up and operation trap him can begin it is dark which is perfect so first things first I'll have to disable the mob switch and then mobs should be spawning in and I can start luring them it would also be a good idea to grab a name tag for them and the one with the sword is actually exactly what I want through the portal he shall go and then you and me are off to this end portal man I should give him some swiftness or something it's a shame I don't have any that I can splash on him because he is so so slow now you can go in there, go and get to Oh my goodness, you pack a punch. Yeah, I suppose I have taken my armor off, which hasn't helped. I mainly did it because of the thorns, but rather than risk death, maybe I should put some other ones on instead. Does he just walk straight in? Oh, well, that's very handy. Now, okay, there's just stuff everywhere, but just hopefully he gets in the mic. Okay, we've got an Enderman in the mic. Oh, that's, that's very annoying. And, and you... Oh, it's all gone wrong. Stupid Enderman are picking up my dirt blocks. You're on the correct... Oh, not quite. Now you're on the correct track. Yeah, it cost me a totem. I don't care. Because he is in the machine. Well, it was kind of in the machine. There, he's gone in himself now. And I can now wait for this breeder here to get me every single villager that I need. There are plenty of villagers now here ready and waiting. Some more on the way too. But to get all of them to be persistent mobs, I need to trade with them. And I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't really have the emeralds for that. Not to worry though, because I know a very nearby place that does. Yes, the Void Trader. Down here, there should be loads and loads in that chest. Oh, there's a few in there and there's loads more here. So to set up the mob switch, I simply trade with the villager once and then push this. He goes through. He's having his, his, his everything go wrong over there. Then I trade with the next one and just keep repeating it. And because they've been traded with once, they will be persistent. They won't ever despawn. But they will still count towards the mob cap and stop Enderman from spawning. Well, this one's holding a shovel. That means that he won't count towards the mob cap. So he's, he's got to be gotten rid of. It's just something that happens every now and again when these guys get infected. And that is the last villager that I have that's an adult. And I've got a grand total of 23 in there. So it's, it's, it's going well. But I need to wait for you guys to grow up and you guys to breed me more baby villagers. Pretty sure the breeding part doesn't happen when they're trying to sleep. And it is technically nighttime, even though you can't tell in the end of what are you doing it? Why Why are these deciding that they don't have to be frozen anymore? Very annoying. I was going to try and go through the end portal and sleep, but, but with that there, it's probably going to be hard work. So instead, whilst they breed me more villagers, I'm going to tidy up the whole area, which involves spleef and enderman. Sorry, guys, don't take it personal, but this is very, very funny indeed. The end is definitely starting to look much, much tidier. Don't really know what to do with all these bricks. I'm just going to craft them and 
shove him in a shulker box. And I think the next thing I should get done is remove all of these little world eater things. With the end completely destroyed, there's no reason to be here now. Although the sad thing is that most of the resources are probably going to end up going into the void. Not a lot I can do about that because, well, unless I just fly after him, but yeah, I don't really fancy that. But on the positive side, it's not like these resources are in short supply or anything like that. Although on the positive side, most of the resources I break on this one can be picked up. Job done. All of them are now gone. And I might as well remove this little flying machine. This oh, I fell. As I was saying, I might as well remove this little flying machine that was there to push the dragons away. Look at this. More villagers grown up that are ready to be put into the system. And whilst I wait for more, I'm also going to get rid of these big leaf bridges. There's one there and one there. I don't need them because I have a light trick anyway and I just fly around. That is that one sorted. And also this one. And in fact, whilst I'm in the area, I might as well take out some of these guys so that my elytra will be fully repaired. And my pickaxe for that matter as well. I do also need to remove all these broken items right at the very top here. The old dragon destroyer I used to have. Which was great until I decided to spawn in 100 dragons and they, <laughs> they completely destroyed it. Yeah, they got their own back on me. It's enough of a challenge to land on a single piece of obsidian in a purple world. But making it onto one measly little iron bar. Now that, that is a real challenge. Challenge that I'm sure I can be successful in. Yes, I did it! All that just so I can mine it up. I have to say, I'm loving the fact that my end is just starting to look so clean and tidy. Nearly every single thing is gone. Mission has been accomplished. And there's once again a few more villagers available. And the inventory is looking a little bit full, so I'm going to try and get through this middle portal. Not easy with you guys flapping about in it, but I'm sure if I just sneak in underneath... There we go. And then I can offload all of these items. I'm hoping that this pushes away the other one without getting destroyed by that one. It, it seems to be working okay. And the other one could finally perch and hopefully fly right at me. That's it. And be frozen. I have also just run out of fire rockets. So if I miss this jump... Ah, just kidding. I don't care. Um, <laughs> if I actually miss something here though, I will die. Better top myself up. Okay, it's the last stack as well. Oh man, I completely forgot about this one. I pushed it so, so far away. Wait, did it go through an end game? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Right, well, I'll, I'll worry about it later. Instead, I'm just going to concentrate on finishing this mob switch. And once you are sorted, every single one is in that needs to be. By my calculations, there's about 90 of the little fellas trapped there. I shall now take this opportunity to mine up the entire thing. There's really no point in me keeping it here because I have no use for it now that the mob switch is complete. And I'll be honest, I don't know what's going to happen to these villagers and the baby vill- Oh, I can't be evil, can I? But yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not going to be good. I'll just make it so that the villagers can get out of here. And then maybe in the massive end base we could have villagers roaming around that that could be an idea i'll try and keep them alive all right guys i know i've removed the walls but seriously if, if you walk into the void it, it's on you well one way or another they've all walked off to different spots I, I, I don't know why you think going down here was a good idea but i'll, I'll leave you to it sorry villager there was always going to be casualties and and you are going to have to be one of them I feel kind of evil and it makes it even worse knowing that uh, yeah there's some other ones on the menu too bye good sir Yep, go and see the other villager down there. I'll let those two babies grow up so that they can go into there with all the other ones. But you guys, yeah, just just swim for your life. That's it. Yeah, it's, it's all going wrong for you. That's kind of crazy. Look at me, swim for his life. Oh, and there he goes. <laughs> Any others? Yeah, I don't know why I'm enjoying this so much. Just just sending them into the... Oh, no, you survivor. Just kidding, you know. So I won't break anything more up here until those two have grown up. Isn't it cool that that's a mob switch right there as well? <laughs> it just doesn't look like it, does it? This Enderman farm is far enough away from the mob switch that it still works. That's good news. In that case, I'll probably keep the mob switch permanently because I won't want them wandering all over the end hub. And I can now finally begin building the machine that will destroy the obsidian pillars. I've got everything I need. It's not actually that much. Probably less than what the mob switch is, which is good. And also, before I go there, I've just remembered I've run out of firework rockets. So it might be a good idea to... Do you mind? I'm just, just trying to commentate it. As I was saying, it might be a good idea to craft a few more just so that I don't run out whilst in a sticky situation. Because seriously, falling into the void and not being able to do anything about it would be a bit of a nightmare. Now, the first machine I'm going to build is for the biggest pillar here, which is this one. All the others are nine wide or less, but this one is 11 wide. So thank goodness I'm not going to have to manually mine it. This right here is where the withers are going to go. I'm obviously not going to spawn them in just yet. They're going to be put on top of these walls so that they get trapped in the machine. And then over this side, there's going to be an iron golem that they are going to try and shoot at. I'm not going to spawn him in for now, but I'll just build everything except for put the pumpkin on top. And because the withers are going to be breaking the obsidian bit by bit as they get pushed downwards, I need the entire machine to be pushed down, which is why we've got slime like this with pistons and observers there. Just to make sure that the entire machine keeps moving down. And now I need to build up the redstone on this side above the withers so that I can connect it to that and, and then the whole machine will work. Theoretically, anyway, it should. So above these withers, there's going to be obsidian just so that when they spawn in, they don't fly away. This, along with the 
walls should keep him into position. And then there needs to be more slime and pistons redstone on this side. And there's also going to be a snow golem over here, which is going to be the thing that makes the withers angry. And then that's what will make him destroy the obsidian. The redstone's almost all done. It's starting to look pretty complicated, isn't it? But I apparently I didn't bring enough slime. I'm, I'm two blocks short. And there also has to be a minecart here. And I've got to do it cleverly. If I just put it straight on top of the rail, it would set the TNT off and blow up the whole thing. So instead, I'll steal a piston and push it on like that. There we go. It's working fine. Also, apparently I did bring enough slime. I'm just blind and it was in a shulker box. So anyway, that is that sorted. And now I've just got to build a rail system here that's going to connect up the snow golem. There we go. It's, it's near enough done. I just need one more block and I didn't bring enough. But I'm going home anyway because I have to waterlog these slabs along the middle here. Doing that will stop this TNT from blowing up the whole machine. Kind of an important thing. Also, those baby villagers have now grown up so I can destroy almost all of this, except for this container right here that they're in. There's the ice that I need, plus a bucket, and also one more of these smooth stone blocks. That's that bit done. And then this is filled in with water. Oh, I did not mean to break that slab. Oh, just about saved it before it went. Oh no, don't break the machine down there. I think it was okay because the chain stopped it going anywhere, but it, it could have gone wrong. Anyway, then I can put the slabs on top and it's done. Theoretically, it is ready to break the entirety of this obsidian pillar. I really hope this works. Now, the first step is to spawn in the iron golem. Then I spawn in the snow golem and have to get him in a minecart, just like that. And now for the fun part, spawning in the withers. They are all in. I have to get well away from them, otherwise they will start attacking me. I don't want that. I want them to attack the golem. There we go. They're all in. I think it all looks okay. Yet another one is built. And with this one, I'm definitely worried about that dragon and that dragon. I think I just moved them both away. Although to do that, I'm going to need more sticky pistons and some endstone. There's the sticky pistons. And there is the endstone. Down to my last two firework rockets as well. This is the time where you get some more out. But to be mindful of that all episode working over the void. Just don't run out of them. And the good news is, I seem to be able to build the flying machine up here, which is much easier than having to try and suspend it above something. All it needs is one more observer. And this first one is ready. Basically, I need them far away enough so that I can destroy this pillar without them being too near the withers. And I would say this distance definitely fits the bill. And now to get rid of you in what should also be a very easy manner. And on a side note, it also means I can get rid of this endstone bridge I had to make earlier. So that, that definitely tidies things up too. It went through the end gateway. I, I didn't mean to do that. I've, that's two I've sent to. I suppose it's easy having him through there and then I can bring him back later. I've just got to make sure I remember which end gateways I actually sent them through. That's that sorted. Let's get golem number one in, then golem number two, and then I can run the pillar destroyer again. I just love watching this machine do its thing. It, it's so, so cool. So you've seen how the pillar removal method works. I'm just going to keep repeating it on every single tower until everything is gone. And now the last one has reached the bottom. Getting rid of all these towers has took me so long that I've managed to have a shave and a haircut in the time. But now I can get rid of the last of the withers, which I've, I've become quite good at doing. There we go. And for the final time, the machine can be destroyed. That's mission accomplished. Just got this little bit right at the top to mine. And you'll also notice that there's one tower that I haven't fully gotten rid of. Also, apparently there's one redstone block that I also haven't fully gotten rid of. Well, this is the easiest one, so I'll, I'll get rid of that first. And yeah, basically this tower, I've been manually mining it. It's not a massive one, but I was mining it as the other machines were working. So I think it still makes sense to completely mine this one up by hand and then the project is done. And finally, I'm just about getting to the bottom of this. It would have been a lot smarter for me to set up a beacon. It would have saved me a lot of time, but I was, I was too lazy to do that. Instead, it's just been slow and steady, me mining away obsidian. And I got quite a lot from it. There's, there's stuff in the shulker box as well. You know, probably a shulker box is worth from all this actually, which is not too shabby. And the end is now completely emptied of everything. What a great day. Finally, it will be ready for me to build my massive end hub. I do want to get rid of that bit of redstone stuff just by the dragon. Apparently that end stone's here to stay. Never mind. But yeah, it looks so strange out here. I mean, imagine if those two farms weren't here and, and the mobs down there. It's, it is bizarre though. The entire end completely destroyed. And it's ready for me to build my massive new end hub there. I'll also take this opportunity to drop off all the resources. That makes everything feel a lot better and a lot more organized. I also remember building this wheat farm and never actually using it. And at this point, every single wheat has grown. So I want to see what a full usage of it gets me. Let's have a look. So look at that. The whole thing harvests. Oh, fantastic. Look at it go. And it all should go into the hoppers. Look at it tumbling down. It looks amazing. Apparently too much for the hoppers to cope with. It's just off. Okay, yeah, there's a lot in there. And it looks like it's mainly been seeds that can't get into the hoppers. So that's fine because I actually need to collect a load of them to replant everything. My goodness, it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to to uh, replant it all. Also, if you'd land in the middle of the farmland, you won't break them. So that's, that's what I was trying to do there. But despite the fact that it took me so long, it's still not finished filtering them all into the chest. Wow, there's loads and loads of wheat. 
I definitely want to still see how much it gets, mate, but I'm not just going to sit there and wait. I'll, I'll go and... Ooh, that's a torch, not a firework. As I was saying, I'll come back in a bit once it's finished filtering through and see how much it actually got me. And the thing I'll do whilst I wait is I think I'm going to get rid of this. You know, it's it just for me, it's a bit of an eyesore up here. Like, I reckon there's enough villagers in this village now. You know, it's, it's a bustling thing. A lot of them live inside this giant palace. Look at them. They love it. I th they're everywhere. I think maybe sometimes they have casualties, though, because they walk off and then they just... They fall down like that. <laughs> but generally speaking, they manage all right. So yeah, I, I don't want to keep this villager breeder here. If I had another one, I'd probably put it underground anyway. I just feel like this entire thing looked ugly at world height. Like when I look across my world, I don't want to see a giant structure in the sky. All right, yes, I know we've got a planet there. That's okay. But we don't need this to be here as well. I've also just realized how annoying it's going to be to get rid of this water tube. It'll probably be handy to grab a load of dirt to use as temporary blocks to plug up the water. In hindsight, sponge might have been a better idea. But you know what? It's done now. So I'll get back to mining it all away. The massive dirt I saw is gone. And to, I could just keep this little thing here and continue having them breed me villagers. I mean, it's it's not that bad, is it now? Yeah, I think it's fine. Before when it was a massive dirt thing, I didn't like it, but now I, I think it is fine. And I'm not too happy with the condition of my armor, these this pickaxe, these shears, you know, things like that. So I think some time at an XP farm could be a good idea. And the one I'm going to choose is the fortress farm that just basically gets me blazes and pigment. As I think it's faster than the witherhead one I made, but you know what? Let's just test that out. What? Look at you all kidding out in your fancy chain. I'll just, I'll just test out and see how fast this one is. I'd say my answer is not fast enough. I mean, it, it, basically, it needs to be something that gives me a non-stop, constant stream of XP, and this farm does not do that. So I'll flick this lever to turn the farm on. And I was going to say, let's see how fast this farm goes, but I think something's interfering with the rates because it's it's very slow. Yeah, everything's still spawning on this farm. Yeah, yeah, I've kind of made these farms clash. I'll have to fix that at some point. So when it comes to getting XP, there's one place that I know that is the most reliable. It may not be the fastest farm in my world, but my goodness, the old gold farm really does work well. Built on 200 days and it is still the most reliable one. A apart from my Ravager one, but that just needs loads of TNT so it takes too much effort. But yeah, this one here does indeed work very, very well. That's enough of that. I'm not going to use it to get myself actual XP levels. And everything from this farm has filtered through, giving me a double chest and a half of wheat seeds and pretty much a double chest full of wheat. That's fantastic. And I'm very glad that wheat can be condensed into hay bales. That's going to make life and storage so much easier. It's taken quite a bit of time, but now every single item is here. We've got all the concrete, all all of these different stuff. Loads more materials in here. Yeah, this end hub is, is going to be a pretty big build. But first things first, I need to transport every single shulker box all the way to the end. I think I can just build a little netherrack platform for all the materials. And after four trips, every single bit has been transported. And the way this build is going to work is I'm going to have one massive building around this end portal. Then lots of little ones connected to it with bridges and stuff. And then eventually they'll connect to those end gateways over there. And the way I plan to build it is start from the bottom of this main thing and kind of work my way up a little bit. But... I apparently have not got any water, which is a bit of an oversight. I'm going to need some, so I'm going down. A couple of buckets can be easily filled, and then work can begin. I was going to use the water to kind of float down and place blocks as I go downwards, but I've just realised I've got these that I can build off from. So if I just kind of build outwards from about this level, I, I should be absolutely fine. It's magenta glass that I'm going to need to start off with, which I have plenty of. This is the position of the very first ring, and then the second one, the third, and once I've mined up a few more temporary blocks, also the fourth. From there, I'll just be building the rings upwards and making them bigger, so it makes it look like the entire end hub will be hovering with these beams coming downwards. That should be enough of those, so I'm now going to build upwards a little bit and start building four pillar-like things for the bases to go on top. And yeah, the good thing about this that makes it straightforward is it is just repeating the same thing four times. Whilst that does mean you end up using loads and loads of materials, at the very least, I don't have to think about what I'm doing too much. This is what I've got so far, and I'm just adding some redstone torch decorations around the outside. This is the, the first one done. Still gonna do it on those three there. And I feel like it currently doesn't look that impressive, but but don't worry, okay? Give me a bit of time and it'll look better as it as it gets bigger. And at this height, I'm now gonna connect them all up with one big massive platform. And this massive platform is gonna be in the shape of a giant circle, so I've gotta make sure that I get it completely correct. The circle's all done, so now I'm filling in the middle of it. This first main building bit is really starting to take shape and I'm gonna expand it out even more with blackstone slabs to kind of make rooms here. This is going to be a big room as well. I've just got to kind of decorate it all, add staircases and stuff like that. And whilst I'm flying, let me show you it from down here. So there you go, you can see. I mean, this is a small, small part of it, but it is looking very cool indeed. I also have run out of firework rockets, which is a very dangerous situation, so I'm going home to make more. Good job I built these tunnels, because I'm having to do the whole journey on foot. So I will require one entire shulker box of gunpowder, and it'll also make my life easier if I just put everything into here. And I think nine paper will do it. So nine paper, all of that into there, one full inventory, 
start crafting, and I'm back in business with firework rockets, which will all go in this shulker box right here. And now with the new rockets, I can get back to building. Tell you what, I just stepped back to get some more materials, and when I look at it from here, wow, it's looking good, isn't it? Look at this. It's starting to take shape, this futuristic looking kind of end up. Yeah, this is going to be one massive room, as I've said. The walls are still being built upwards. I did actually just run out of sea lanterns as they go behind the grey stained glass just to make a cool light effect, which will be going all the way around. The outside's starting to take shape more and more, but I'm thinking I should also start to focus on this inside bit because I can build like the staircase structure and then connect these walls to it and make like the ceiling just to bring everything together. So I'm, I'm going to do this bit now. The inside is getting there, so there's kind of some pathways along here you'll be able to walk. I think I'm also going to put carpets on top of these sea lanterns here as well, just to make it look a little bit nicer. And I can use these rooms for something. I don't know what I'm going to use them for just yet. Maybe some crop farms or maybe a village down here. That could be cool, but it's going to be a massive room, massive space. So that's 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 not idea. And then along here, I'm just going to have stairs going up like so. And in the... Oh, not, not upside down though. But yeah, it's the same all on this side. And then the middle, it's going to be polished diorite. Just using two different types of stairs gives it a little extra detail, makes it look a little bit better. Fairly simple and quite effective. Yes, it does make the staircase take a little bit longer to build, but... It'll still look, well, it'll be worth it in the long run, won't it? The staircases are starting to look like they go through proper arches. And I'm going to have them go upwards like this and then to the side like so. So let's just keep building them across and upwards. And when they connect at this point, they then go up this way. Quite a lot of building to do to finish this room, but I'm going to put my best foot forward and get on with it. This little pathway bit down here is completed. And so now I'm building a bit of a beam along the middle here, which is going to have deep slate tile slabs along the outside of it. And then there'll be all sorts of interconnecting beams to just support the entire roof. With then rods in between, of course. I think I'm happy with that. Let's have a look at it from below. Yeah, look at it. Now that it's all in place, I can grab a bunch of yellow concrete and build a massive roof over the top. It's taking a lot of concrete, but... It is now done. Apart from these bits here, which I want to fill with white concrete and smooth quartz. White concrete I have here, and smooth quartz is in this one. Nicely done. And this is what the room looks like from down here. I think it's pretty cool. And so from here, I can just continue to work on expanding these walls and building up the staircases. I'm having these two connect to a room that goes around the end portal. And at this level, there's going to be four cages for the dragons, which is going to make look really, really cool. But I think I just need to kind of continue building up this side first. Make it all be in line. Because it's definitely getting there. It's got that futuristic feel. It just needs to be continued to be built up. So this is how the main bit's going to look. You can see these four circles are for the four dragons. And I'm going to go around the outside of these now and build up the cages. I won't be able to put the roofs on properly because I need to push the dragons in. But I can get a good part of it done. That's all of the cyan terracotta down. So now I can start adding the glass on top. And that's as much as I'm going to build up. Because if I go any further, yeah, it's, it's going to start getting broken by the dragon. Instead, I'm going to focus on this middle bit here that goes underneath the portal. Once I place stairs all the way around like this, the middle bit around the portal is finished, although I will continue to have stairs going upwards on certain bits to like connect to the pillars. But the main thing I'm going to focus on now is having these bits go up because they're going to kind of merge together on all four sides to eventually make one big roof. This first one is pretty much at the right height and now I'm going to kind of make a circle around that the other staircases can connect to when I've built them high enough. A staircase has successfully been built all the way up here and it will lead to like another area above but for now I need to finish the area down here and to do that I'm going to begin by placing loads of stone in a ring around the top bit. Or at least I would do that if I hadn't completely run out. Good job I've got a shulker box. Oh, I had to fall now. As I was saying, good job I've got a shulker box completely full of it so I can continue placing. So I've expanded it up and kind of connected to the stairs. I think it looks all right with the stone. So from there, I've got this all around here and I'm just thinking we're just going to put clay along the top and kind of just fill in all of it now so it's like one big platform. Hopefully that makes sense. Gonna take quite a lot of this cyan terracotta, so I'll, I'll put my best foot forward and get to work. I'm also leaving a bit of a gap in the middle so that I can have the stairs go up. So I think if we just go like that on both sides, you could just walk up to this top bit. And now that it's getting higher and higher, let's step back and admire the view. You know what? It, at this glance, it's starting to look good. But at the same time, considering how long I've spent on it, I almost feel like it's, it's not that impressive. <laughs> I mean, it's getting there, but... Yeah, at the same time, it's it's, it's going to have to be really big by the by the time I've done. And this central building is going to eventually have an Enderman farm at the very top of it. So I'm going to keep building upwards towards that. It'll look great when it's finished. I've just got to keep going. Just a little update as to where I'm at. I'm currently building this up so that it'll all converge. Not quite at the middle because we're going to have a tower here. This is where Endermen are going to land for an Enderman farm. There's going to be a big chute all the way up 
to an Enderman farm at the top. At the moment, I'm just gonna have it so the Enderman die when they get to the bottom and it's not an XP farm because I feel like the Endermen are going to teleport otherwise, which would definitely cause trouble. And yeah, this is a pretty straightforward task that I'm doing here. Just bring it up like that, then continue there, add more stairs. They're all sorted and I've added a nice little ring around the outside. It'll just help with that futuristic look. And the main thing to do now is just, yeah, build this, this tower really, really high. So I'll put my best foot forward and get busy building it. And it is done. Yeah, building that took so long, I managed to move location while I was at it. But it is a complete Enderman farm. The only thing missing is there needs to be an Endermite at the top here. I'll add that later on. I can't be bothered right now. Plus, with the mob switch, no Endermen are spawning. But look at it. It really is coming together, isn't it? And whilst it does look amazing, there's still lots of work to do. Like, I need to add extra buildings. I need to connect up all the end gateways. I need to connect it up to that obsidian platform over there. Yeah, no time to rest. Instead, I'm going to focus on building the smaller connecting islands that will go around the outside. That involves some glass rings, much like the first ones did down there. And there's going to be loads of these all over, so I'd... <laughs> I'd better get busy. Start to realize just how big of a project this is. I've, I've ma managed to do every single hovering bit, which is, uh, has taken me a fair bit of time. Let's mine that away. And yeah, there's going to be buildings on top of each and every one of these that connects to the main place. And hopefully building these up won't take me too long. This bottom bit is going to be made from sea lanterns. Should be nice and bright. And then a mixture of andesite and stone on top with a bit of a bridge on both sides. So this bridge is going to come out three and be a little three by three one. And then the same thing on this side. And this is going to connect up eventually to that bit of island there. So it's all going to be interlinked with bridges looking something like that. Although I can't really build too much more until I finish that one and I know the positions properly. So I'll, I'll just kind of continue building this up. I've built up a couple more, not as far as they need to go yet, but they're, they're getting there. I've just found that if I just do these bottom bases, because I'm using the same blocks every time, it's easier than having to switch out to other ones. So this is another one where you just put these down and then it's just, yeah, the same block palette as that, so makes it 10 times faster. It's just nice because it means I don't have to keep opening and closing shulker boxes all the time. Progress is very, very steady, but I'm slowly but surely building it higher and higher. Now I'm, being, I'm able to make some pathways like this out of stained glass above the emeralds, which looks very nice indeed, if you ask me. And making the decision to just do one layer of every single one of these buildings at a time was definitely a good decision because it's so, so much easier with my inventory management because I'm pretty much just using the same blocks all the way around. So yeah, it's 10 times better. And ultimately in each of these four corners, there's going to be a big dome shaped building and there's going to be like a, a floating building in between them. That's the plan. Then we've got to connect up those. That's, that's all we've got to do and move the dragons, you know. Shouldn't be too bad. But anyway, I can't get too excited about how the finished product is going to look because there's still a lot of work to do. So I'm just going to keep going layer by layer. And yet another layer is now done. And as you can see, it's looking very, very good. It actually makes the islands look like they're quite established and built up now. And what I'm going to do, instead of doing it each layer all the way around, which does work well for the block palette, I'm going to build it up to the top. Then I know exactly what I need to do and I can just repeat it on the other four a lot easier. So down here, we're just going to have some extra stone just to kind of give it a bit of definition, a little bit of detail. And then I'll just repeat that going upwards. So another bit of obsidian there, then stone on top. And it's kind of almost going to be a small version of that building there in a way. So I'm going to add a window along here, then a bit more obsidian. And this bit in the middle is just going to be kind of like a little spiral staircase. This is how the building is looking so far. I'm kind of starting to branch it outwards now so that it makes a bit of a dome. So I need to go across like this and then round. Yeah, just kind of making a bit of a circle shape up here, which goes all the way round. Now, at this height, I'm going to make it so that it opens up into a big room. So there's going to be glass along here that you walk... Oh, we've run out. As I was saying, there's going to be glass along here that you walk onto. And then I'm going to have a big circle of stone up here completely filled in with stone. And this is how the walls of this room are going to look. Just got to finish this little bit up here. And now we've got a bit of a roof area here. And I want gold blocks to be in this bit. Yeah, remember I spent ages getting all that gold. Finally, I'm going to put it to use. Although to do that, I need to find where on earth I put the shulker box with it in. Here it is. Loads and loads of blocks. And they are going to be placed along here. And now that they're all down, I'm going to have another layer of them up on this bit. And from here, I can detail the roof by adding sea lanterns. Then glass in front of it. And then sandstone slabs in front of that. Then I'll add even more gold blocks that you'll only be able to see from underneath here through the glass. On top of this, 
there's going to be obsidian. And now I'm switching back to yellow concrete just to keep it varied, keep the detail. It's always good to use similar color blocks with slightly different textures just to make the build look quite a bit more interesting. And rather than have it converge into a dome at the top, I'm going to have a little watchtower up here. So I'm going to add some iron trap doors like this. And it's going to be quite detailed just to keep it that futuristic feel. Let's have some concrete there. I'll continue this glass around the top. And then I always feel like redstone items are a key to making things have a futuristic feel. And now to properly detail, I'm going to have an anvil here, then a slab there with a lever underneath like so. And I'm going with brewing stand, a chain on top of that. Can I, can I get on top of that? I reckon that like that. And to finish it off, a redstone torch at the very top. Can I reach the top? I can. There you go. Let's have a proper look at the building from a distance. Oh, yes. I like it. It's got that futuristic. I think I like it anyway. Yeah, I, I think it works. I think maybe when everything else is around it, it'll look a little bit better. It looks a little bit out of place at the moment, but it definitely does have a futuristic feel to it. And it's very functional. You can go inside it all the way up to the top and then look through the windows. I don't know what I'm going to have up here. I definitely want villagers to live in here and stuff like in this whole end hub, but whether in here exactly, there could be a little farm in here, you know, some crops or something. I don't know, but it, it, it looks good. Look at see, look, this is what I meant by gold there. And then it kind of goes into sandstone and then it goes into the concrete. I really like that. Could maybe add like a light chandelier in the middle or something. I don't know. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. Maybe some end rods. But all in all, I'm very pleased with it. And now I'm going to get busy building the three other towers, which are all the same. So I won't bore you with the details. I will just get busy and get to work. And once I get these last couple of bits on with the chain and the redstone torch, the final one of these towers is finally done. And now with them all here, it's actually starting to look really really good and starting to take shape still need to build connecting platforms for all of the end gateways still need to move the dragons not looking forward to that one and you can see there's a staircase i've started here so that's going to connect up to those end gateway platforms i'm going to add a few decorations as well on these they're all a bit, a little bit blank and i want some like hovering buildings as well in this blank space and the hovering buildings are probably the biggest project i've left so that is what i will crack on with so just as is underneath the whole thing those hovering bits we're going to have the same little thing here. I'm just going to put that in the middle and then these in a little square with magenta panes in the corners. From there, I can mine up this stone. I might end up needing it. I probably should have just gone back to the chest somewhere, wherever it is, and <laughs> got the netherrack. And then for a careful landing so that I can build up three more blocks. Probably shouldn't be using wool to build either, but anyway. And then I can just do something like this in a slightly bigger square. And uh, yeah, just repeat this all the way up. There's going to be two for this side because it's going to be like a, a double thing. And there's going to be that in each area. Yeah, it's, it's a big project, but I'll just build this one here first and then repeat it in the three other locations. Now the other ring is here. I'm just building a kind of exhaust thing with stairs just to make it look good. And it will have sea lanterns in the middle. And that's the first of these exhaust pillars built up. As you can see, it really has that rocket feeling. I'm going to build another one there and then like a building in the middle to connect them. Since it's just doing the same thing again, it should be very, very straightforward. There we go. Nicely done. And on their own, they actually look quite good. I, I kind of like how it is, but I do think a bit in the middle will make them look even better. So I'll get to work on that. These bits are going to be purely decorational, which means they're going to be hollow. Don't have to worry about anything going on the inside. And because there's no blocks to place inside, it will speed up the entire building process. Once I go like this, that's all I need to do to connect them up. And I've nearly reached the top. I've kind of got a cool little room here with a window. And so that needs completely roofing over. At least I would roof it over if I hadn't run out of blocks. Take two. There we go. And I'm going to use some nice blocks to create a nice little convergence as it, as it kind of towers up to a little point in the middle, which when completed should look very good indeed. Let's let's step away and have a little, little third person. Oh yes, I like it a lot. And when you look at it in the context of the rest of the build, it really does make it come together. Let's get a little side angle. Oh yes. Lovely, lovely stuff. Now I've just got to build three more of them and they don't take that long. So that's, that's good news. I'm starting to run out of time, but there is not much work left to be done. And I definitely think they're looking good. So I'll now focus on building up the staircases on all four of the sides. And then I can start adding platforms that go around all the end gateways, which will be connected up by a slightly circular pathway that again has yellow concrete in between. There you go. You can start to see how they're going to look when they're connected. And this, yeah, has to go all the way around every single one. And because I don't have end gateways in every single slot, I'm pretty sure I should have more than 20. And maybe I haven't actually generated each one. Should have maybe done that before building them. I think an end gateway only appears when you take out a reborn ender dragon. Like, actually take it out. Whereas I've defeated the ender dragon loads of times, but using TNT in a machine. So... That's probably why I don't have every end gateway. No, I say it doesn't make sense because I took out loads of 
dragons earlier. I don't know exactly in the last episode, but maybe it's because it's not the original dragon. I don't know. Either way, because it would probably look weird if I didn't have an even amount of circles spaced around. I'm going to just make ones with nothing in. Now, you can actually get bedrock in 1.20. There's a glitch to get infinite bedrock. I, I, I haven't actually probably looked into it. I've just heard it's possible. So, I will probably be doing that in the future. And I can build my own little end gateway things. that just won't have the, the portal inside. But I'm sure it'll look really, really cool. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is mission accomplished. I've also got loads of spare obsidian and concrete. Mainly because I kind of overestimated how many I needed for the entire build. A lot of materials I've got spare. Which is good for storage for future projects. And I suppose I can still use some of the obsidian just to make some decorations like this. I'm going to do it on every single one of the corner bits of the islands. This bit I'll have some sort of stair structure where the stairs go around like that. And then the same thing also happens but like in an upside down way. So I, I guess I need to... <laughs> This is going to be a... Yeah, this is going to get confusing. It's not actually that confusing. If I go like that, then like that, followed by that, and that. There we go. That's what I'm thinking, but I'm going to get rid of those on top as well. Lovely. I'll do the exact same thing on this bit too and over here, but not on top of Sang Terracotta. I was trying to think of the name of it. I've <laughs> happened so much building, it's easy to forget them. Let's go then build this up, create another of those platforms. And with that, everything is looking quite good. And now I'm going to repeat it seven more times. There we are. That is enough of them for me. I think I've, I've got them around. I don't want to overdo it with decorations. I think, yeah, there could be something on there to make it a little better. But I'm happy with this. This is the end base. This is what we've spent all this time creating. 500 days in the making. And there's just one thing left to do. I've got to get those dragons, <laughs> which are a long way away, into the cages. This is what I've been putting off for ages, all right? And, and, and probably with good reason. But I can put it off no longer. Time to get some end stone, get some pistons, and, and just get moving them. And then I'll be able to build the cages up and around them. Until the dragons are in, I can't do that. So yeah, let's let's go through this. I've got to find the way to the portal. Looks very fancy indeed. It is snowing and I'd love to sleep, but I don't know if I do that. I might not have enough time to move them. So let's not, let's not cut any corners. Let's give ourselves the maximum amount of time. Definitely don't want to be going over time if I can help it. I'll need levers. Pistons. And in fact, I'm going to grab all the items I need to make a fly machine. Because for some of them, I might have to do that rather than just push them block by block. I don't need to go in there. I meant to go in the endstone chest. I don't know why I went, <laughs> went all the way down there. I think that's everything except for some slime blocks. And I think I'm probably going to need a ridiculous amount of temporary blocks. So let's just grab a shulker box. Some extra netherrack. And I want to bring loads and loads of endstone as well. Just for, like, push them about. Lots of bridges need to be built. That's it. That's perfect. What exciting times ahead. So I have realized an issue. I have got... One dragon there, and one dragon there, but I completely forgot that two of the dragons went through the end gateways. I should have brought them back before building all this. Now, it shouldn't be the end of the world, but it does mean I'm going to have to, like, push them all the way back. So, I know there's one through this end gateway, and there's one through an end gateway over there. Start by heading through. Did the dragon just go through? I was just building the tower. Did, did it go through? It has. Is it going to start flying? Okay, I'm pretty sure if I save and quit, then reload the world... Please, please freeze. It's frozen. Just before going and destroying everything. That was close. That was very, very close. But we've got one of them back, which is good. And I want to start by pushing this one far away, as far away as that one is. And then I can set this off and theoretically... Okay, I've done something wrong. The observer's the wrong way up. Never mind. Now take two. I can set... No, what on earth is going on here? Only I can be stupid enough to mess that up. All right, yeah, that's it. Go back that way. And I'll gather up the glass to put that back as well. <laughs> Can't believe this. I'll fix that right at the very end. Don't have to worry about it too much now. All i got to worry about is that getting pushed. Is it going to work or has something got in the way? Just built a whole new machine. All right, that, that time it will work. That's far enough away. So for the next task, we fly through here. And that dragon is also completely frozen. Then I build yet another flying machine and push it all the way back. I was going to see, can I actually stand on it? Oh, yes, this is fantastic. At least it is fantastic until I randomly start taking damage from the dragon. Okay, that's annoying. Seems that you can only stand on it for some of it. All right, you know, I'm just going to fly with it and just, just patiently wait. I see land in the distance. We're getting closer. I just got to be careful, though, because when I get too near to that dragon, it's going to start flying, and I've got to make sure that I reload the world before it goes and breaks everything. Yeah, dealing with ender dragons <laughs> was never going to be easy. So at this point, I'm going to fly back towards this dragon. Is it going to stay frozen? Sometimes it moves, sometimes it don't. Okay. It's, it stayed frozen. That's good. I'm trying not to hurt it. So now, I'm going to get this one as close as I dare. I think this is probably close enough. Let's break that, okay? Stop the machine. All four dragons are in the vicinity. They're all frozen. So now I just have to get them into their cages. I'm going to first start by pushing this dragon upwards. Because, yeah, I built that in the way. So I need to move it up, across, and back down again. Using these pistons is pretty straightforward. No point using the fly machine. Might as well just keep going with this. And at this point, I'm looking at the hitbox. I think it's definitely high enough. I could, of course, do this with a fly machine. I look weird with the hitbox, don't I? I could do it with a fly machine. 
But I just feel like it's slow and safer doing it this method. Yes, it's going to take time. and I don't have a great deal of time left until 6,500 days. But I also don't want anything to go wrong, so I'm happy to take my time. Looks like we were high up enough because it's not breaking anything below it. That's good news. Right, guys, I've been pushing this along and I've made a copy of my world just to test things out before I get the dragons too close, okay? Just to see if it works. If I push this dragon any closer than it is, it decides for some reason, tries to perch and blow everything and, and destroys everything. I can't have that, okay? I think I'm going to have to sadly give up on the dream of trapping the dragons because there's just no way that I can get them there without it all going wrong. They just they just keep... They, well, they stop being frozen for some reason. And I then... I then try and solve it, really. I don't know... I don't know what to do to solve it. These dragons aren't going to go anywhere as long as I don't move any closer. If I take them out, they will fly to the middle and destroy stuff there. I don't want that, so I think I'll just have them hovering. You know, I'll just have to allow them to be hovering around the build. Could even build cages for them, like, outside of the end gateway area. That might be quite a clever idea. Who knows? All I do know is that I need to... Oh, careful. <laughs> but I need to get rid of this because it's just a massive eyesore. And then I've also got to repair this little bit of broken glass below the build. There we go. That's nicely done. Goodbye, Netherrack. And also, random observer. Then I'm flying back to this platform to grab the remaining glass that I have so that I can complete these domes. It's just a shame that they haven't got dragons inside of them. Because the dome itself looks amazing. Oh, it would look so good with it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to build the roofs of the other three. Instead, I'm going to test around in between episodes and see if I can find a way to get the dragons closer. I'll just use a copy of the world. Because if I can... You know, I don't have time now to mess about, but if I can in the future, it's got to be worth it, hasn't it? And then maybe you guys have an idea in the comments, you, you guys that are very clued up on it, might be able to do it. If we could find a way to do it as a community, it would be so worth it, wouldn't it? It would 100% be worth it. And even so, I'm very, very happy with this whole thing. Without the dragons, you know, it's a shame, but it's still an unbelievable, unbelievable build that I'm so proud of how it looks. And I mean, now when I come to the end... It's a cool place to be. It's none of this just average, oh, and an end island, no. This is a true end hub, a proper, proper custom place. And I haven't even built any farms in it, really, other than, like, an enderman farm in the middle there. There's loads of space down here to build some stuff, so I will have things in these gaps. And worst case, if I can't work out how to get the ender dragons nearer, and they have to stay far away, I'll build some cages out towards the end gateways. They'll still look great. I can just, like, kind of use the same designs I've got for that. Big massive dome, stick them in there. It'll still be really, really good. Just not in the position that I wanted it to be. But still, a good enough plan for me. Now, before I upgrade this world to the next version, there's a few things that I want to do first because they'll be harder to do in 1.20. And it involves netherite. You see, in the shulker box, you can see we have a decent amount of ingots and ancient debris. And in fact, I'm going to quickly take all this and smelt it away in here. And from there, I can turn them into the ingots and store them up. You see, once I upgrade to 1.20, making netherite armor is going to be much, much harder. And because I want every single armor trim combination, which is like over 700 pieces of netherite armor, I'm going to make as many pieces of that as I can before updating. That should be enough. It's almost two shulker boxes worth. And it is a while since I've been netherite mining, so I have no idea how much this is going to get me. Not since I completed the monster project of the netherite beacon and getting enough netherite pieces for every single armor trim combination actually requires half a netherite beacon's worth and it's going to require over 20,000 diamonds for all the smithing templates so yeah very very big project and the only other youtuber i've seen that's taken it on is recrap and he's quite far ahead of me so i probably won't be him but i'm gonna try anyway since i always love a good challenge i think at this point i'm far away enough so i can begin digging down Straight into lava. Thankfully, I have good enough armor where I, I should survive no problem. I um, just want to place some blocks above my head. And then the great long tunnel can... Well, what a great start. <laughs> I've literally only dug about 20 blocks and already we've got some ancient debris. Today's going to be a very good day. I can, I can just feel it. Another one? You can still see the end of the tunnel. This is fantastic. But I bet now I won't see any for another 1,000 blocks. Oh, no, I won't. Okay, I will. Never mind. What on earth? I've, without a doubt, chosen the luckiest line ever to do this. Here's piece number four. And anytime I find gravel, I am going to mine... Oh, piece number five, too. But yeah, anytime I find gravel, I am going to mine it up to replenish the stocks in the shulker box. And look at this. Mining gravel has exposed my ninth and tenth piece 
of Ancient Debris. And that is Gravel Shulker Box number one, completely filled. And at this point, my Silk Touch pickaxe is nearly broken. So I'm now going to be mining up any quartz I see to fully repair it. And I might as well pick it up as well because it will be very, very useful later on. It's also repair my Elytra too, which is very, very nice. 16 pieces of Ancient Debris. Very nice indeed. And a whole load of gravel below it. I think at this point, the tunnel is long enough. It's thousands and thousands of blocks long. So I'll put the remaining gravel into here, the spare quartz in there, and fill all the rest of the space and inventory with TNT that I shall lace the entire tunnel with. I've now officially run out of tunnel. I've still got quite a lot of TNT left. There's some in there as well. I think I'm going to extend it by a few hundred more blocks. Actually, you know what? There's lava in all directions. I can't bother. Let's just light it up and I can see how much ancient debris we end up with. Apparently quite a lot already. Look at this. Three have just been revealed and I'm really hoping it's the first of many. Actually, it's the first of many. There's some there, more there, even more way in the distance. And I've forgotten how fun ancient debris mining really is. That is half a stack. Although I did get most of those 32 just from mining the strip mine. Never mind getting it all from this blown up tunnel. You see, this is the beauty of using a bow and arrow to light your TNT because you don't have to be there. From all the way back here, you can set the chain off and continue collecting. And that is my first stack. Hopefully there's many more still to come. And this is the second stack. Look at this, five pieces of ancient debris all in close proximity. That's something you don't see every day. And that has also helped me get to stack number three. And there's not going to be much more than that because we have reached the end of the tunnel. Not too bad of an amount. I would have loved to get more, but I can't complain. Instead, I'll just dig my way out, okay? Or I'll, I'll go into lava on my way out. That's maybe not ideal. Can I, can I fly out? Okay, I don't know where we are. I'll, whoop, we're nearly dead. That's what we are. We, well, oh, yeah, there goes a tome. Now we're completely safe. It's always a risk trying to fly upwards through lava. I'm out. No idea where I am. All I do know is that home is somewhere in this direction. And it'll probably be a wise idea for me to go into this shulker box, grab myself the yellow one, because I, I need another totem. I don't want to be flying around without one, because one wrong move and it could be 6,514 days down the drain. Here we are, home sweet home. At least we will be once I never get around all this junk. I should probably just get rid of that old creeper farm, shouldn't I? In there. Oh, what a move. That was beautiful. Let's chuck away all the netherrack. We don't need magma, blackstone, gravel. And I can split these into eight separate piles to fill up my six different blast furnaces. Yeah, I miscalculated that. I thought I had eight, but I've just got eight normal furnaces. Never mind. I'll just have to split these ones up as well. Gonna need at least three stacks of gold, which means taking some gold blocks. I'll just craft them all. Got way more than I need there. And I just have to wait for these to finish. And whilst I do, guys, if you're new and you're enjoying the video, don't forget to subscribe. Now, I'm gonna keep my shovel in my hand as I do this because it's it's gonna get me a lot of XP, which should hopefully repair it up a bit. Indeed it has. Have we got any other ones? No, we've got nothing else in there. So let's craft this. How many ingots is it? 48. Okay, that is quite a lot, actually. Especially when you pair it with the 15 I already have. I'm very pleased with that. We're going to turn these extra bits of gold into blocks to go into here. Oh, one more piece of netherite scrap and I could get a 64th ingot. I've got to go for it. It'll probably take me loads and loads of time strip mining to find it. But even if it does, I, I don't care. Because I'm getting loads of extra gravel whilst I do it. There it is, just what I was looking for. And there's an extra one right here as well. Now I've just got to make the long run all the way back on this one. You know what, forget it, I'm just digging out. Hopefully without coming into lava this time. No, we didn't, perfect. Although I, I nearly did. Wow, I got lucky there, straight into an island. From there, these extra two pieces can be smelted. I can make the 64th ingot. And then I need enough diamonds for the amount of armor sets I'm going to be making. So I'm going to be making 16 armor sets. Oh, look at this, I've got so many diamonds. Look at all the ores as well. So yeah, 16 armor sets. Each armor set requires 24 diamonds, so it's 16 times 24 which is 384. I'm not going to have enough inventory space for this. I tell you what, we've got to split it up. I'll first make all the netherite boots. And I need armor stands. I need somewhere to put them. That should do it. And I have no idea where they're all going to go. They're going to have to be somewhere kind of away from my base. Because the 700 armor stands it's going to take are going to be very, very laggy. So yeah, I don't want them too near. For now, I suppose these ones can be near because I'm not placing down every single one in this episode. So they could, they could just go at the front of my house. Let's get down every pair of boots. And thankfully, I don't have to keep going downstairs. I could just craft all the leggings and grab the smithing table that I have in that shulker box. I knew I had one somewhere. We could just make them straight away here and place all of them down, followed by chest plates. And I would say I'll finally craft the helmets, but yeah, we've only got four diamonds left. Not to worry though, I'm, yeah, you know, we have too many down. Maybe the floor's gonna have to come up for this project at some point, but yeah, loads and loads in there. I can make the 16 I need, turn them to netherite and add them on. Looking good, that's just saved me 64 netherite upgrade smithing templates. And you either have to find one of them or take seven diamonds to craft. So that's 500 diamonds I've just saved. And I could steal some blocks. I 
could take blocks from the netherite beacon. And then I could get all of them. It would save me a lot of diamonds before I update. Yes, I know these beacons are sacred things that should never be touched. But you know what? I'm doing it. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't mean to break the string. But yes, I'm doing it. I'm telling you, it's 100% for the greater good. It's going to save me so, so much time further down the line. I also don't actually know how much netherite I'm going to need. So I'll first see how many diamonds I have available for crafting. So yeah, we've got, we've got a lot there. I will mine up every ore. I think, you know what? Every diamond I own is going to get put to use before I update my world. Yeah, it's not going to be pretty. It's going to make things look bare. That includes you, Diamond Beacon. But I'm telling you, in the long run, it is definitely going to be worth it. Just been doing a few quick calculations. I need 3,840 diamonds for all the netherite sets and 640 netherite ingots. I'll start with getting all the diamonds together. I've got 54 stacks remaining, which is literally just two shulker boxes worth. Shouldn't take me long at all, especially when you consider I have a fortune three pickaxe. I knew I was collecting all these diamonds for something. Just temporarily, diamonds are not for peasants, okay? They're just for somebody who wants to get every single armor trim combination, which is definitely not something uh, that a peasant could manage. You know what I'm starting to realize? I have nowhere near enough diamond ore to pull this off. Like, I've not even filled this shulker box and I have used them all up nearly. It's very worrying indeed, but thank goodness I've got a full diamond beacon to go. And it's still not enough, so you know what? This entire floor has got to go. I was hoping it wouldn't come to this, but I, I have no choice. Ironically, me using all these diamonds is actually going to save me loads of diamonds in the long run. So just remember that. That's what I keep telling myself anyway. Before I mine anymore, I'll just see how close I am. Oh, I'm still miles away. This is a disaster. I need, I need five stacks, nearly six. And there's no way I get it from here. This has taken me 6,000 days to get all these diamonds, and it's still not enough for the project. That, to me, is quite crazy to think about. Did I... I, must, I didn't even get a stack from that. Now, guys, is there anywhere else in my world where I have diamonds? There has to be. I know there's some spare ones in this shulker box, so we can grab those. I know there's 64. Okay, that gets me a step closer. We need three, nearly four stacks. And I just noticed there's 11 deep slate in here. Don't want to forget about them. There has to be more somewhere. There has to be some place that I've just pointlessly built out of diamonds that I didn't need to. But where? Where would it be? It's a shame it's not emeralds. That would be a lot easier. Yes, where would it be? There's this one place I can think possibly has some. It's not a guarantee, but it's definitely worth having a look. Oh, this pathway. I completely forgot that I made a diamond ore pathway. Okay, that wasn't what I was thinking of. I was thinking of these diamond blocks here. It's good to know I've definitely got all the diamonds I need. I'll just start with these blocks and then see how I get on. Because realistically, you'd think that this is probably going to be enough. Also, do you like the misty floor effect of this room? It's very, very cool, isn't it? So turning those blocks into diamonds... Oh yeah, we've got enough. And now I have the fun project of crafting all of these into armor sets. I still think doing it in batches of 16 is probably my best bet. And then I can hopefully keep track of everything fairly easily. Now, according to my calculations, that is every single pair of netherite boots. And now to do all of that again for the leggings. And midway through doing this, I have run out of netherite for the next batch of 16. Not to worry though, I could just go to the infinite source that is the netherite beacon and collect plenty more that way. And now back to crafting leggings it is. Operation get every single one of these is also done. Which means it's on to the chest plates. And once I finish upgrading these, it's also every chest plate obtained. Finally, only got the helmets left to do. It's, it's taken so, so long. Don't know how this has happened, but I am 14 diamonds short. Where did those diamonds go? And you'd think I'll have to fly all the way back to that other place I was at with the giant enchantment table to get the missing ones. But don't you worry. There is one diamond block up here that I can grab. That still doesn't give me enough. But don't you worry still, because down here, look at that, we've got a spare netherite as well. I can't break a block next to the portal block, otherwise the portal will break and I have to do update suppression to get it back. Not doing that. But I can safely break this one without any problems. My goodness, putting back every single one of these diamonds is going to be such a nightmare. But the helmets are crafted. They can be turned to netherite. And once in this chest, I can safely... Upgrade to 1.20. And I'm gonna have to tweet a picture of all these netherite pieces to Red Crab just to flex him that I've got him before him. Anyway, enough of that. I'm glad I won't need to use the smithing table for any of these armor sets. This is the last time my world will be 1.19. It's time to get all the new features. I cannot wait. And in fact, I'm so excited that I'm even gonna first go to bed. All right, perfect. Now I can update. And here we are, 1.20. I'm so excited. Also, just realized I've gone below a thousand levels. That's not great, but I'm sure I'll get them back. Anyway, what I wanna do now is I want to go out. I want to go out exploring. I want to fix that sub count being wrong, but the website's not working. But yeah, I reckon the thing I should start with is getting every single new advancement. There's no new nether ones. There's a few new adventure ones, though, to do with... Okay, let's have a look at this. Basically, got to find all the hard ones and apply them. Okay. Need to breed the sniffers and the camels. And there's a few more that I can't see in that menu right now. So first things first, I'm going to fly far, far away in the nether. Then when I make a new portal, not 
like that. I'll be far, far away in brand new chunks. Now that I'm here, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for a chicken. There we go. Don't mind me. I just need one feather. Actually, I I've got two for good measure. And then I need to just delve down here for copper. Man, I'm really rolling back the ears here. I'm going to have to smelt it, but I don't have a furnace. So that's getting made. Can I be bothered to get some coal? Okay, you know what? It's right there. I Yes, I can be bothered then. I'll mine up one piece of that. Smelt both of these. I also require one stick. So the other three can just live in this chest for, for the rest of the days. Actually, I'm going to make get two sticks because I'm making two brushes. Then I can pick that up and craft the brush. Yes, we have got it. We're ready for archaeology. And there's no better place to do that archaeology than out in the ocean at the ruins. I'm going in. All right, give me the good stuff. The Elder Guardians suddenly have more of a use than just sponge, okay? Because, that, you know, that's not much, is it? Defeated. And did we get it? Did it drop it? It did not. Well, I guess it's time for take two. Pretty sure if I remember correctly, it's a one in five chance of the Elder Guardian dropping what I'm after. So it's entirely possible that I don't get it from any of these three, which would be very, very sad indeed. Come on. Give it to me, please. And uh, nope, we didn't get it from you. Which means there's just one chance left. Please, don't let me down. And... We got it! Yes, we did get it! The Tide Armor Trim. Now, bear in mind, for the project of getting an armor set for every single armor trim combination, I need 250 of these. I need 250 of all 16 armor trims, which is kind of ridiculous. A desert! Okay, you know what? Maybe I have finished. It was the world's smallest one, so yeah, I'm going back to the ocean, where I can continue searching shipwrecks and also ocean ruins, because this is where suspicious sand is. And suspicious sand gets you free loot, like wheat. Yeah, I really wanted that. No, but despite the rubbish stuff in there, there is something really, really good. Is this it? No, it was coal. I'm talking something way rarer than that. Okay, I don't care about that. And it goes back in, I don't even know. Also don't care about this. Can I just break it? That's it, get out of it. Maybe I'll care about this one. Although I I don't think so. It just looks like another axe. That's it, get, get broken. Looks like you'll have to wait a little bit longer before you find out what I want to get from the suspicious sand. And I'm also struggling to find ocean ruins. They seem they seem quite rare at the moment. Look at that. That must be the smallest desert in the world. And look what's bundled in the corner. A desert pyramid. Now, I remember when I used to have to search these all the time. They do have trail of ruins in one... Oh, here we go. We've got suspicious sand. Now then, I don't think you can get what I want from the other place here. But look at this. Is this a pottery shard? Oh, yes. A prize one. Nice. Don't actually know exactly what's down here, but it's definitely worth an explore. You've got to be careful because if you go too fast, you end up breaking it. And breaking pottery shards is not what I want. Okay, are they all, the, all pottery shards here? It looks like it, doesn't it? Pretty interesting place, you know, doing a bit of archaeology. Okay, they're not all. That, that I'll, just, I'll just get that. We've got some emeralds. And honestly, when you've had a world this long, anything that's not a pottery shard is kind of useless to me. But I guess still cool to find stuff anyway. Anyway, so here we can get another armor trim. Diamonds, though, are also kind of going to be useful to me. We didn't get anything good. That's a shame. I'd love the June armor trim. Don't worry, though. I'm sure I'll come across another desert soon. Come on. Please be good to me. Give me the sniffer egg. What oh, a bit of pottery, though. I'll take that. And finally, is that what I think it is? Yes, sniffer egg number two. Which is fantastic. It means I never have to worry about ocean ruins ever again. Instead, I can focus on tracking down the other new stuff. Such as those pillager outposts. Which still has not given me the trim. And other than the outpost trim and the desert trim, there's no other ones in the overworld that I need to get. Well, there is some in ancient cities, but, you know, we're going to worry about that later. And yes, in the strongholds. But I mean above ground. Anyway, right here, we have camel number two. Now, if I can get the that to be with the other one, then I can breed them. And if I can breed them... I can get infinite camels and infinite sniffers. It'll be fantastic. First, I'll start with taming him, and then I'll do the exact same process as I did before. That's complete. Through you go, and you can be safely boxed in. Another desert pyramid. Come on, give me the armor trim. I only technically need one. I don't need loads of them. Don't let me down. It's going to... No, it's done it. Fantastic. Of course, it's the last one I checked. And I got two of them. So even if this is not an ancient city down here, at the very least, these will help repair the Electra. Should really get a hot. Oh, okay. We have got an ancient city. I wasn't even paying attention. And the shriek is. Now, do I just do this like the, the gung ho way and just go for it? I have no wool. I'm not scared of the wardens. I just need to find armor trims. Let's do it. Who cares? Okay. Nothing in that one. I do need to try and clear some space though. I have too much rubbish in here. Let, okay. Let's, let's go over here and do that. Basically, because I've been doing so much treasure hunting, I need a shulker box just for pottery. And that straight away frees up plenty of room. And now I can Continue. I need to find the silence armor trim and the ward armor trim. Although before any of that, I need loads and loads of sculpt to repair these electrics. So I'd better do that. Oh, look at that. Revealed some diamonds too. It's actually a great way to find diamonds. It is mining the skulk. Because diamonds have a higher chance to spawn when they're not connected to air. And you just reveal a lot of blocks really fast with this. Anyway, that's that done. So now let's get hunting and get spawning in those wards. There we go. First shrieker off. Don't you worry about a thing. Nothing. Oh, okay. I didn't expect him to come out this soon. I had a few more activations before that would happen. Oh, well. Not to worry. 
Oh, wait, we've got it. We've got the... Okay, I need to keep my, my eyes peeled for that. But yeah, we've got it for the first time. Still need to get the silence one, but at least I've got the easy one. This will be so much easier when I have the warden disabler on at the moment. I can't see the chest very well. And just having loads of these roaming around is... It's probably not a good idea. Now, bear in mind, it's about a 1% chance to get this silence armor trim. Which means you have to search a heck of a lot of chests to find it. Oh, there he is. I could hear him roaming about. Better be careful he doesn't get too close. Oh, yeah, he's getting close. He looks angry, too. <laughs> let's, let's just keep moving. Although, I can't say no when I see some diamonds in the wall. As risky as it may be. Take it from me, people. When you have a warden disabler, and you also have survived over 6,000 days in hardcore, and he's not advised to let about 20 wardens spawn with you in an ancient city. Anyway, the search is going well. Just sadly no not chapels. But hey, if this was going to be easy, then everyone would do it. Now at this point, I'm fairly confident I've searched everywhere. And the trick with spawning all the wardens is just to keep moving. Don't stay in the same place. So when you're trying to look in chests... That's not easy. He spawned right where that chest was. I think I'm done. I think I've already searched a bit. Yeah, I think it's already looked. Probably seen what's in these as well. So it's time to get out of here. There's a cave that took me straight to the surface. Amazing. But yeah, that was a fun experience. From now on, I think I'm just going to stick to searching for that outpost. Finally, another one that I haven't searched before. And... Nothing. Thankfully, there is another one that was pretty nearby. Hopefully, it's a bit better. And it's the fourth one I'm going to search. So statistically speaking, it should have it in... And it does! Hey, the statistics never lie. Thank goodness for that. I thought I was going to have to spend the whole video searching for outposts. What on earth is the villager doing it? Okay, you know, I'm not going to ask questions. Because these need walking all the way home. Uh, uh, come on, hurry up and get up. As I was saying, they're going to be walked all the way back. The other one's about 400 blocks in this direction. There we go. And then I've got the very, very long walk in this direction ahead. Because I'm 10,000 blocks away from my home. Yeah. <laughs> Better put my best foot forward. Welcome back, a good camels. Now I've just got to somehow safely get you down there. Yeah, just, just don't, don't follow me. Slime will be the best method, but I can't get them into this portal in the ground. But maybe I could use this one. I can't remember where this actually goes to. Is it where I transported the mobs to the mob collection? Who knows? But it takes you to a portal hit. Was this portal always here? Has it just made a new portal in my world? Okay, that works for me. All right, camel number one. That's you through. And the same for that one as well. All right, guys, welcome to your new home. Yeah, it's a lot colder than where you're all from. Makes me really sad to look at that netherite beacon and realize it, it's not even close to a beacon anymore. And that I've not got a diamond beacon. Was I too hasty in using up all my netherite? Ah, well, it saved me loads and loads of diamonds, so I guess it was worth it. And yeah, sorry, guys, I don't actually have anywhere for you to live, so I'm just going to put you in with the pigs for now. Hopefully that's, that's okay. Oh, wait, it's not going to be okay, because you guys could just walk on fence. Scott, yeah, I've just realized, look, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, a, you know what, there you go, stay there, and oh my goodness, there's a lot of eggs here, I wonder if I can get another chicken whilst I'm uh, in the vicinity, baby chicken, we got one, we got two, we got three, four, five, six, seven, wow, we got loads from that, now it's very important to me that I breed another camel, did I really just leave this gate open, any villagers could have just wandered out, but yeah, if I breed the camel, then it just means the only thing left to breed is a sniffer, I'm just sitting here till they hatch, they've already cracked a little bit, so hopefully it will not be too long, I've got bored of waiting, you know what I should do, I should sort them out at home. There's not really space in the village for them, is there? Well, maybe they could go here. I could clear out this bit of land. And believe it or not, there is a pathway here. You just can't see it. He's either light this up or put string down or something to stop this from happening. And wait, they've hatched. I heard him. Where are you? There. Are you both? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just blended in with the surroundings. We've got two little snifflets here. All right, guys, you're going to take 40 minutes to grow, okay? Just be careful, all right? Don't fall off and don't die. Where are you going? What did I just say? Like, whatever I tell them to do, they just do the opposite. I'll leave them to it, as long as they don't die. And I've had a change of heart. I think the sniffer home and the camel home should be next to the frog's place. Look at this. Not only is it a cherry grove, but it's also a bit of a mountain. Oh, look at this. We've been to every biome again. Wow, brand new wood tap. Oh, I haven't even done the bamboo one yet have I, either, have I? I haven't, haven't made that. Anyway, one thing at a time. This cherry grove is going to be completely deforested. It's not the biggest biome in the world. Every time I've seen one, it's pretty small. And I'll probably just end up recreating a cherry grove biome closer to my house outside the sniffer one as well. Just because I do think they look quite cool. I also do want to take some of these back with me. You may think I have to grab loads and loads because there's a limited supply, but fear not. Because if I just craft a composter, purely so I can get some bone meal, you'll see that if I place one of these down and bone meal it, it grows, so I can get infinite amount of them at home as long as I have one of them. I'm also randomly breaking a bunch of grass blocks because I'm instead going to change them to be moss just to give it a bit of variation. Very nice. Now we can have a sapling on here, another one there, and one right here. From there, I'm going to break every single one of these fences. I didn't even need to place them, really. I don't know why I did. I guess it was handy as a marker, if nothing else. And I'll tell you what Minecraft needs to add. Elytra trims. I know technically if you wear a cape, it affects your elytra, but a trim to customize it would be so, so much better. Also, that trim is like the world's fastest growing tree. It's amazing. 
So I am going to make these into the fences and add them all the way around. Then I want a few gates. I can't believe another one's grown out really quick. Followed by pink petals just all over the floor. If anything, I didn't bring enough. Okay, it's time to dig out the bone meal. Every piece of bone meal I have it equates to one petal. So I want loads of it. I don't know how many petals I'm going to need if I'm taking the whole shulker box. This is going to be great because you guys can sniff me up some torch flower seeds. What are you doing in the corner? Well, yeah, they can sniff me up torch flower seeds, gets me new plants, and I can also breed them for yet another advancement. Okay, cherry tree. Grow. They're all nicely in. That's good. They all kind of merge together, don't they? But anyway, it'll be fine. Then I'm just going to go like this. Oh, look at this. They're just all sprouting. Oh, you could easily make a farm for this, couldn't you? Just put a hopper and put a dispenser. Not that I really need a farm for it anyway, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. But yeah, not, not the entire floor, but most of the floor does need to be covered up. Look at this speed with the jitter clicking. It's so fast. You know what I should do? I should just go around bone mailing these rather than like getting more to sprout like that. I should just go around, yeah, placing them up. Okay, well, we don't want grass. Do we want grass? I don't know. Maybe we do, actually. Maybe we, we, we need a little bit of extra. No, you know what? I think it ruins it for me. For me, it, 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 it shouldn't be here. It's a pink petal only zone. And I feel like all that's missing is water. I am a little bit worried that this is going to turn to ice underneath. I, I could go and put more glass up there. Can't be bothered, though. So it's time for plan B. First, get your buckets of water. And then also seagrass. Yes, you see, water that has seagrass in it can't turn into ice. So all of these that are along here are getting it. Just so that doesn't look too strange. I'll dot some more around as well. In fact, I'm going to dig this down an extra block because, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Just having all that seagrass at that level. Although then it won't work, will it? Because uh, it needs to be double tall seagrass then. Okay, let's go like that. I think that works. You wouldn't even suspect a thing, would you, when you come here? Definitely got that cherry grove kind of a feeling. So I say I should grab a couple of leads, attach you both up, remove a window because I've kind of got no choice. And then you can both... Come with me. Having a couple of prehistoric dinosaurs in the world is very, very cool indeed. And I know you guys are sniffers and you want to start sniffing for seeds. So once you're in here, you can sniff to your heart's content. Although I seem to have lost one on the way. Come on, you're going in there. Also, what are you doing lying down? Oh, wait, you've sniffed. Oh, wait, is that how you dig? I thought you were going to sleep. What did you get me? You got me a pitcher pod. Okay, I want torch flower seeds, preferably, guys, if that's, if that's not too much trouble. Maybe you could sniff instead, eh? What do you reckon? Is he going for it? He's digging. Come on. What have you found? What have you found, boy? Come on, another pitcher pod. Are you kidding me? I want I want torch flower seeds. Anyway, I guess we can plant these. So my understanding that you need to till the ground, which which works fine. Put it in there. Oh, look at this. Plant in the past. I guess it's like a prehistoric one. Should we have another one? I'll, tell, I'll have it. I'll have it over here. Can we can we till this bit of ground? Yeah, nice. And then can we just skip out the waiting thing by bone mailing it? Oh yes. Is it breakable? What does it get me? A picture plant. And then and then it just plants down. Cool. Not the most useful thing, but a nice new flower. And I'll have to wait a little bit longer to get the torch flower seeds to breed them to get that advancement. And I should also probably grab a shulker box, dye it pink, and put all the cherry wood items inside of it. Now to repair my house and wait for the eight minute cooldown of the sniffers to end so that they will sniff up more seeds. Trust me, I don't mind waiting. I really want to get that advancement. Although to be honest, I could still be doing other things whilst I'm waiting in the area, such as grabbing some slabs and crafting the new chiseled bookshelves. From there, there is a minor advancement where you have to use a comparator coming out of it. So there you go. It's, it's done all of that. The power of the books. And I just broke it with an axe. Wait, are you kidding me? Is it, do you have to have silk touch to pick it up? No way. What? I did not expect that. It's not too much to worry about, but yeah, just, just didn't think it would be the case. Anyway, now I want to take these chisel bookshelves and put them in this room. I think they'll look good around the top, but right now they look bad because th they're empty. So I need a load of books to fill them. Also, we might have the issue here of snow appearing on the sniffers area. Yeah, like on the floor and stuff. I could just put like more petals down on any blocks that need it, such as right here. Or even easier, I could just mine it away and turn that one into a grass pass. As I'm a bit too lazy to go and get some bone meal for more petals right now. So in this chest, I've got loads of books. Now, I'm pretty sure these are books that can go into a chisel bookshelf. I'm hoping so. Otherwise, they won't be very good bookshelves. And I guess this item, or this block, now means that we can sort out books as well. Like, for example, if you have a fish farm. So that's a nice bonus. Oh, yes, it works. Look at this. So it just goes into random bits. So we'll just kind of fill whatever we can in them. Look at that. It even goes to the exact part that you place it at. So look at that. I actually could do with more. Although, you know what? It kind of has that nice feel about it. Let's just go and maybe take that one out. And then that could just go up there. Yeah, I like that. I've been saying put a single... Oh, no, I put one in the top left. I was going to say I didn't put any other. I think this is nice. Just a nice little extra thing, you know. Some sparse book cases, not like that one. Then I can grab a few more of these to cover up the snow. And they're doing it. He's splooting. That's what it's called when they, like, lie down flat and stick their head in. And we got it. A torch flower seed. Fantastic. I don't know how this works. I, I, I Well, I know I can grow it. What happens when I break it? You get a torch flower and then they just craft into orange. Wait, is there any way to turn that torch flower into a seed? I, I take it 
No. Oh, okay. Well, we've just got a random torch flower. Nice. Maybe I shouldn't have been so hasty in planting and growing that one because now I have to wait for you guys to sploot me more of them up. Did you, did you just do one? Where is it? Oh, you did. Oh, it's another of these picture pods. Well, we're not interested in them. I reckon a barrel placed into the tree is going to be the best place to store the picture pods and the petals and the bone meal. So whilst I'm waiting for more torch flower seeds, I'd like to get some clay, smelt it, then I'll take said bricks and grab four of these pottery shards. Now, I've never crafted this before, so I've no idea what's about to happen. But I think, how does it work? Do, I, I guess that's not what you do to go like this. Wait, is it a full? I don't even need those bricks. Oh, <laughs> that's, I guess that's if you just don't have anything on it. Then, can I just place it down? There we go. I've got an advancement for it anyway. That's the main thing. Then I reckon it would make good decoration in my house. Now, where should it go? Well, I've got so much stuff in here, haven't I? What do you reckon? Just, just on top of an ender chest. Okay, that's the worst place it could have gone. Let's craft a flower pot. Place it in the corner of the sniffer pen. Put that on top. Put a torch flower right there. It's interesting. You can't actually put picture plants in as well. But they must be too big. So just, just a nice little side point. Now, other than getting a load of the other armor trims and applying them, there's no other advancements I need to get. Except breed sniffers and feed a baby sniffler. So I shall stay and wait for torch flower seeds. You can have a torch flower seed. You can have a torch flower seed. Now get me the egg. We can get it planted. And we've got the advancement two by two again. That's great. There it is. I'll just chuck it right there. Okay, it will hatch soon. It'll hatch in 10 minutes to be exact. I'm going to hang around and wait for that as well because I definitely want the advancement. So come on the leg. Do me proud. Oh, look at you getting me another seed. This egg has almost hatched. Hey, you get me a torch flower now, don't you? Did you? Oh, you did. Might as well plant it since it's going to spare. And then grow it up. What a magical moment. The egg has just hatched. Here you go, little fella. Got your little torch flower seed. That's another advancement. Which just leaves probably the hardest advancement of the update. Smithing with style. Because there are many armor trims that I have yet to obtain. And I need to not only find them, but then also apply them to some armor. So yes, whilst I bet I could just wait until I've got every single armor trim combination on all of those different armor pieces to get the advancement. But no, no, no. I want to get that today. And I want to get as many of these new trims anyway. So I'll put my best foot forward and go for it. I'm just flying really, really far away at the moment because I feel like all this area here, I've probably already been to. I need to get to new chunks. Now, I don't know for sure, but there's a chance that this bastion is in new chunks. So I'm going to have a little look. See if there's a snout trim knocking about. There is. Oh, nice. And I've just been hitting lava. Perfect. Well, that's very good to find. I will just check up there. Risking my life a little bit, but let's do it. Okay, ancient debris. Nice. Give them the old run around. That's right. You go around that way. I'll go around this way. Another one. A netherite upgrade. Not bad. Ball being completely finessed. You're now stuck. Oh, no. There's one left. Okay, this is uh, this is very, very sticky indeed. Okay, I was... Yeah, I, what was I doing? Let's just get another of them. This time, I'm swooping in. Putting on my thing. Look at that. You can you can easily just switch. Oh, not like that. But you can easily just switch. And then you're going down. All right? You think you can mess me? I'll come back stronger. Yeah, it goes for you too. The rest of you are all trapped. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, more ancient debris. Another right. You know, I need it all now that my beacon's gone, you see. So that's why I'm kind of bothering about it. And the golden carrots. I, I just feel like they're always, always nice to get. Here's fortress number two. Which has to trim. Fantastic. I was starting to think it wouldn't. I will scour the rest of this fortress just in case there's anything left. Like diamonds or more trims. But no, I've, I've covered every single corridor so I can start making my way back. Although I won't be going all the way home. You see, I need to stop off somewhere on the way to collect another of the trims. Now there's two libraries per stronghold, each with two chests in. Which means, also these chests here, they're the old chests. They have a 10% chance of having it. But yeah, this means that it's guaranteed I get four from here, assuming I find the library. Now then. Where is the... Well, we found one library. Assuming I find the other one. There we go. There's the first eye armor trim. And up here is the second. Time is kind of of the essence, but I'm going to keep looking. See if I can find that other library room. Well, these places are so big that it's not always easy to find it. Oh, another one. Nice. Oh, portal room. Very, very good. I will be using that to get back home. But not before I've done just a little bit more searching. And here it is. The bookcase room. So this has been pretty profitable because I've got five armor trims when I only really expected to get four. Certainly can't complain at that. Now I've just got to try and remember the way back to the portal room. I'm pretty sure it's through here. I go through this pit, through the archway I marked, and straight in. Now, yeah, the quickest way home is to go here. There is an armor trim in the end cities, but we ain't gonna have time for that. Wow, look at this. I forgot how cool my end looked as well. I've still got these dragons. I've got to try and work out. What are you doing? Oh, no. Does that... Don't. Get out of it. I've got to leave. Okay, I didn't expect this to happen. A dragon is unfrozen. Mayday, mayday. This entire place is going to get destroyed. I don't even want to watch it happen. I am just going to leave. We can worry about that in the next video when I go to the end again. There's still six smithing templates left for me to collect. One of which is found in end cities. Now, these do have to be structures that I found in brand new chunks. As you can see, this one 
I've already been to. So first things first, to find this new template, I need to fly very, very far away. And then I will just continue searching every single chest. And I'll grab ender chests. I think they're cool. Both cool and quite useful. Oh, there we go. We got it. Fantastic. Now remember, to get every single armor trim combination, I need 250 of each template. So... I'll continue searching for more, as every smitten template I find is the equivalent to saving seven diamonds. Another armor trim, fantastic. And if there's ever any armor without any curses on it, I'm collecting it. Because it'll go nicely towards my collection when I get home. So with another trim checked off, now I have the challenge of finding a woodland mansion to get the Vex template. This should be far away enough. So I'll head through and come through a portal that leads me to diamonds. Or should I say diamond, because it's uh, <laughs> it's only one. Now, the place I'm looking for is a village. And yeah, an ocean is the worst place to find that. That's more like it. Next, I need a cartographer that I can trade with to get a woodland explorer map. And with that obtained, I've just got to fly to it. Here it is, mansion number two. And this time, there seems to be a lot more mobs. I should probably put my chest plate on and get my sword out so that I can deal with them. And I think I'll explore this place in the way that I usually do. Start at the bottom, clearing out all the mobs and check in every single room, including the secret ones. Come on, odds. Be my favor. Yes, it has the trim. Is that one? It looks like it. Okay. Once you know what you're looking for, they're not actually that hard to find. I'm going to combine these two brushes to make one with a bit more durability. And then we start, okay? Do we want red stained glass? No, so we break. And then I have another massive trail ruin that I must carefully excavate, making sure that I don't destroy any of the potentially precious loot. It is always very cool to excavate these, but man, it does take quite a bit of time. This looks a little bit promising. Come on, be a brand new one, please. And the verdict is Shaper armor trim. I'm pretty sure that's new. Yeah, to get 250 of each, man, it's going to take a lot of diamonds. And so for that, I'm going to build the biggest diamond farm that anyone has ever built. But building one of those machines is going to take so, so much ancient debris. So getting all of that is my next project. You see, the machine is going to look something like this. Each one requires three ancient debris at the front, and I'm going to tile it so that there is loads and loads of them in a row. And now to build this diamond factory, I need to be far enough away from my world, mainly because it's just a little bit laggy if I have the render distance at 32. So I'm thinking somewhere in this direction should be the place. How about this? The other side of the raid farm, and... Mm, no, actually, I was going to say, I could have the machine start here. <laughs> Okay, why is there a raid? Okay, I guess it's just something to do with the, uh, the, the, the farm. More importantly, why is there a random villager down here? I completely forgot I left you here to, just to live your days. See, I could have it start down here because it's going to be a really wide machine. But I think I'll put the diamond factory right about here. This, this big hill will probably be removed. And I am going to need to dig a massive hole, which is why I'm digging down. The bottom of the hole is going to be y equals minus 53. That means that the room will not overlap any of the lava lakes at the bottom of the cave. So I'm going to start by building the main control unit. Oh, well, what, what great timing. Thanks for the rain. Anyway, I'm going to start by building the main control unit here. Basically, every time I go ahead and use this note block, it will move the machine one this way and send all the TNT to blow stuff up. And then this is what one module is going to look like. As you can see, it's not that big, not too complicated. The TNT gets flung onto this ancient debris. And because ancient debris is blast resistant, but you can push it with pistons, it's great for this farm. We've also got these TNT dupers. There's update suppression going on with the coral reef fans. And the only thing that's a little bit annoying for setting up this machine is that for every single module, I have to piston push a minecart to there. If I don't push it on using a piston like that, and instead just straight up place the minecart there, it sets off the TNT, blows everything up. So I have to do it in this order. And yeah, that's the module finished. I'm not actually going to show you it in action because I want to build not just one of these, not just two, but there will be 144 of them by the end. Nobody's ever made that many that I'm aware of. So I'm going to put my best foot forward and get busy building. And as you can see, each module is connected by either honey blocks or slime. It doesn't really matter which of the two I use. I just think it works well and looks good if I continue alternating them and it lets me keep track a bit easier. I've now made it to the section where there's actually a floor below me, which is making my life so, so much easier. When I had to do it and I, and I kept falling down, hovering, it was a little bit of a nightmare. But now that I'm doing it in this position, it is much much quicker and easier. And whilst there still are many modules to build, I, I don't know how many I've done. 15, 15, not bad at all. So yeah, it's still like 65 in that direction, 70 the way. But I'm going to do the rest that are over this bit because they're just annoying to do. And once they're out of the way, I don't have to worry about doing it ever again. So yes, I will be going through a little bit of annoyance, but in the end, it will be all worth it. And I'll tell you what, getting, <laughs> getting across on slime blocks, or honey blocks, I say, is, is a bit annoying. Not being able to jump. We'll just do that instead. And then on I will go. Finally, they are all done over in this section. So it's nothing but smooth sailing from here on out. And at this point, I've actually done 31 modules, which means 
I've only got 103 to go. Actually, it's 113, but you know what? It's still pretty good. And when it's finished, it will be even better. And this entire half is done. Look at them all. Machine after machine after machine. Oops, trying not to crash SP. But endless machines just placed on and on and on. The fact that I've got to do this again on the other side does make it a little bit crazy. Wow, just look at them. This alone would probably get me hundreds and hundreds of diamonds every minute. So I can't wait to soon double its size and its speed. But before that, I also have to add every single minecart. And that is probably the part of the process that's going to be slow and boring. Mainly because every single one has to be pushed on with a piston. Anyway, there's no use complaining. I just need to get on with it. And finally, they're all in. Over 80 modules locked and loaded and ready to be used. Look at them, there's just so many of them as I just keep on flying and flying and flying. This is going to be a crazy machine. It's going to be a thousand blocks long when it's done. And I think for size, it may be the widest machine that I have ever built in my world. Which I think is kind of cool. I just hope that it works. Because trying to fix a machine this big would just be an absolute nightmare. It's done. It's completely built, apart from the fact that I'm missing one TNT because I accidentally blew one up, like, right at the start of the build. So I am going to have to go all the way back home to get... My goodness, it's just a mission to get from one side to the other. <laughs> Never mind building it all. Anyway, I'm not actually going to have to go all the way home because I have a plan. If I go up to the top of this Ravager XP farm and land very carefully because I don't want to accidentally use a totem. Okay, hopefully he doesn't do anything to me. Let me start by getting some food out of a shulker box and eating just so we can regen. Kind of important. And then, yeah, there's TNT right here. So I think if I just break that and then... And then fly in. Yep, look at that. Pick it up. Jump all the way down. Okay, we need to be on this side, don't we? Jump down there. and It looks like a cool machine, doesn't it, with the honey? It gives, gives a bit of pizzazz and colour to it, doesn't it? But anyway, let's get flying all the way back across. Not uh, into that and using totems for no reason. I think that's the third totem I've used flying through this trying to get from one side to the other. It's a more dangerous thing than you think. Anyway, that can go right there. And I can do my most favourite thing of the whole build, which is getting down every single minecart. Yeah, it's definitely not my most favourite thing. But it's just repetitive, it takes a bit of time, but I'm sure I'll be done fairly soon. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is done. Every single one is in place, all the minecarts are down, everything's built, there's nothing more I can do. Just look at it all. Absolutely massive, rows and rows and rows. I don't think anyone in Minecraft has built one this big. Calves built one that had 140 of them, and it, but it kind of broke a lot. This can't be any wider because then it goes out of render distance, so this is, this is as big as it gets. I could build another one on top of it quite a bit higher, but realistically, this is amazing. I cannot wait to test it out. Also, I can wait to test it out because if it, if it goes wrong and breaks, it's going to be a very, very sad moment. But anyway, I want to see how many diamonds this gets. I bet it reveals loads and loads of diamonds. Basically, the way you operate the machine is with these note blocks. Every time you use a note block, the whole machine gets moved across one and it fires a TNT. Let's, let's see it in action. Here goes nothing. I operate that one and that one. It's going to fire out all the TNT. Look at it all. It's absolutely loads of it. It blows everything up. And then I just fly all the way to the end to make sure everything's okay. And we can see if it has actually revealed any diamonds on this first bit. Doesn't look like it. Okay, granted, there weren't any diamonds on this first... Well, okay, what just happened here? I've no idea why that just broke, but I will just quickly fix it. And is it going to trigger you that this is going to be made out of a different wall to all the other ones? It's always the little things, isn't it? The annoying part up here is I have to go and get some more TNT. So, basically, I'm thinking that one broke because it was slightly out of the render distance. Maybe not out of the render distance, but too far to the side, if that makes sense. Let me just get you. There we go. But yeah, that's basically just based on what chunk I'm stood in. So, I need to make sure I am stood in the correct chunk when I operate the machine. I think that's how it works. Anyway, I'll double check if the other one is broken or if that's okay. But I'm fairly confident it'll be fine. Yep, no problems over here. I'm starting to think it's just one machine too wide because I can't really stand in the other chunk when I operate this one either. So, I'm just going to go like that and go like that. And accept that this end one's going to break. Funnily enough, <laughs> in it breaking, it has revealed diamonds underneath. Fantastic. So these are my first ones from the machine. And it wasn't even where they were supposed to be. That's kind of funny. So it doesn't really matter that that is, you know, in the wrong place. I should say it doesn't really matter that that one's not moving. Because it'll just stay there and the rest of the machine will work fine. So it's a 140... Oh, we got the first diamonds. Nice. The first real diamonds as part of it. But yeah, it's a, it's a 143 module machine. Not 144. More diamonds here too. As you can see, revealed some in the roof. Are you kidding me? Gravel. I didn't think about the fact that I need to remove any gravel that falls. That's another module that I'd better repair. And you know what? I think I'm just going to fly home and get a load more TNT. That's the annoying thing that I just never have enough of. And it's quite important material when making repairs. 38 ought to do it. Is that all the TNT I have? No, hold on a second. I've got loads in here, haven't I? Where is it? Where's the where's the, the shulker box pull? Let's get a stack. We might as well. Oh, there's, there's loads of TNT there. I could have just stole it from these fly machines 
that I never bothered to get rid of. Kind of wish I'd thought of that sooner. Anyway, the machine is now fixed, locked and loaded. Doesn't look like anything else is broken either. I can grab a few extra diamonds that I see and run the machine again. It's very, very satisfying to do. And it's revealing diamonds all the time. So everything's working as expected. In that short time, I got 26 ore and 9 of these diamonds. So I'm going to spend 30 minutes using this and see just how many diamonds I get. Then I'll have a good idea of how many diamonds it produces per hour. I don't know how many to expect, and as long as the machine doesn't regularly break, I should be able to find and search for diamonds quite quickly, and I'll get used to looking for things that could break the machine, like this one. The gravel made it so that this could be pushed forward, that's all that happened. The fix is pretty simple, I just go like that and put it back to how it was. I really think the trick to this is on the way here, I just keep an eye out and make sure- oh, well, don't crash, but I keep an eye out and make sure that there's nothing like gravel in the way. And then on the flight back, that's when I look out for the diamonds. Should be a foolproof plan theoretically. Let's go ahead and see just how much I get. And that is pretty much the 30 minutes up. I'm just doing the final check on this bit. And I'm getting faster at using it as well. So the amount of diamonds I managed to get in this half an hour, I'll probably be able to get more in future times. The total is 252 diamonds. 30 minutes, 252 diamonds. So it's at least 500 diamonds an hour, this method. 500 an hour, guys. That is... A ridiculous amount. I'll tell you what else it is. It's just very, very satisfying to do. In the whole time, I also didn't have a single one of the machines break. I've got that down to a T in spotting what... See, you see, basically, if you just see gravel, you know that's going to break it. Anything else is fine. I haven't come across any water and lava because of the height that I've built it at. And it does take a lot of flying around, so I have gone through quite a lot of firework rockets. But on a positive note, every single time I find diamonds and mine them, the XP repairs the Elytra. So I've got no need to worry about those breaking. How many diamonds was that? Just check the video and it was 16. 16 diamonds must have been two veins that like would to merge together. That is, that's a crazy amount in one place. As long as I keep an eye out for the pesky gravel and remove it every time, everything seems to work out fine. And that's that. In this very short session, I've managed to get an extra 386 diamonds. I've also somehow managed to go overtime. There was no need for that. I'll turn these into diamond blocks. Look at that. Fantastic. And then I can repair this little thing here. Fantastic. It was like it was never broken. And some of the blocks can be placed back on the beacon. It's fantastic. The world is recovering. They're the right beacon's the main one to worry about, but yeah, I'm, I'm still getting there. So in the last video, I built this diamond mining machine that is over 1,000 blocks long. And I'm going to put a timer on screen and see just how long it takes me to mine up 1,000 diamonds. Already found the first ore, because this machine uncovers them so, so fast. Already got 38 diamonds in two minutes and counting. Look at this, there's another one here, which gets me up to 40. This is going to be pretty crazy. And that is my first stack. And it was in less than five minutes. And after about 20 minutes, I have got over two and a half stacks, as you can see, coming up to three stacks, which is pretty fast, but there's still a long way to go. And in about 48 minutes, I have managed to get over five stacks, which is pretty good progress, but I was hoping it would be slightly faster. But anyway, I suppose all I can really do is just continue exploring these tunnels. And as I mine these, I am now just past halfway because I've got a total of eight stacks. So in theory, I should have a thousand diamonds in less than three hours. But the worrying thing is all my totems have now broke. I used my last one. As you can see, the shulker box is completely empty that would have them in. I don't think I have any in any others. So as I fly backwards and forth, I am being way more careful because I know if I do anything stupid, it'll be the end of SPO and something's broken. Probably the gravel that caused the issue. But if I just do something like that and then place that there, it should fix everything. When you've used it this many times, you do become a bit of an expert at repairing them. So I'm around two and a half hours in and I've managed to get a total of 923 diamonds. That means there's just 77 to go, but unfortunately, I've run out of firework rockets. Not got any tomes left, not got any rockets left. What is the world coming to? Thankfully, I've got a shulker box of paper. I've got a shulker box of gunpowder. So for once, I was actually prepared for an emergency like this. Is it? So no doubt that that's the case. So we'll go ahead and put all the gunpowder in there, make myself three stacks, and then both of these white and gray ones can go back in the shulker box. And I can continue on the home stretch of getting those 1,000 diamonds which has turned out to be a much bigger project than I expected. That's my 15th stack, which means I just have to get 40 more. Almost just died there. That... I was just about to try and eat some food, and I just crashed into one of them. I, why am I letting things get this risky? I really don't need half a heart moments like that, do I? Come on, let's just eat and just do a little bit on foot whilst I get my health back. <laughs> I, 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 it it, it kind of made me nervous, but because it all happened so fast, I kind of didn't realize it happened, and then I was like, whoa, how have I just not died there? So used to just having a totem that could be reckless, and I've been very careful the last, for the last two hours, but that one little moment 
Could have unraveled everything. Got a few more diamonds here. Less than 20 to go. And now there's just 11 left. There's one on the ground there. Will this be enough? Will this be the moment? It will indeed. 1,000 diamonds in less than 2 hours and 40 minutes. I think that's pretty good. Now it's on to the next project. As I mentioned before, it is to save the camels, okay? Because if I just show you where they're living right now, it's not very good. Look at them. They're all just living with the pigs and... And on top of fences and just, yeah, it's it's not good at all. So I want to build a proper camel. Oh man, these beacons are so cursed when you look at them, aren't you? Anyway, I want to build a proper camel sanctuary. I mean, the Sniffers have got this lovely cherry blossom home, all three of them. And then the camels are just living in absolute poverty. So it's going to be fairly big. I've got to pick the right spot. I don't think it's really going to fit in that section. And I don't want to place it in front of the gold palace. All right, let, let, me, uh, let me work out a good spot. After some careful thought, I've decided the best spot for this is going to be where this terrain is. So, I need to get rid of it. It, it has to go, all right? I've got a good shovel, as long as I don't let it break, because I've, I've got a habit of doing that. But yeah, I've got a good shovel. All of this area needed to be flattened at some point anyway, so it needs to be brought down all the way to this layer. I do also have haste too, so I don't have to worry about the stone, because that's also insta-mineable. And then the big camel sanctuary is going to go in this area behind the gold palace. It's a, it's a pretty big area. It's a pretty big build. I think it's going to look amazing when it's done. But unfortunately, it does just require quite a lot of terrain mining. Although having said that, there's, there's a giant cave here. So you know what? It's not quite as bad as I thought. You know what? A lot of the a lot of the ground isn't even here. So that should speed things up a little bit. I also could collect up the dirt, but I have a dirt farm. It's times like this, I'm like, why did I make a dirt farm? Why did I just collect up all the resources when I mine away a mountain? But you know me, I just like to farm everything for the sake of it. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to put my best foot forward and mine away all the terrain that needs to be gotten rid of so we have space for the camel sanctuary. Meanwhile, whilst mining, the wither somehow must have killed the golem and escaped. Once he broke out, he went on a rampage and killed the elder guardian and climbed up the stairs to where all my other mobs are. Then the worst possible thing happened because the wither and the warden decided to start battling each other. And I'll be honest, the warden was getting destroyed. He was, he was barely doing any damage. So I went downstairs and I was trying to take out the wither and keep the warden alive. And it was working. I was hitting the wither with my bow until the warden decided to come after me. So I, <laughs> I decided to get out of there pretty quickly and with my quick thinking i blocked up the stairs and from far enough away where he couldn't hit me i just bow spammed him until i defeated him and yeah after that i had to get rid of the wither because it, it was just making a massive mess and if i'd left the wither or the warden down there they would have ended up killing every single mob so yeah i had to put them both down and then i just went back to mining And that is everything mined up. It was so oh, not like that, it isn't. But yeah, it was certainly a much more eventful time lapse than I expected. And I could convert this entire stone layer here to dirt, but I feel like because there's going to be a building over it, there's probably no point. I do need to just terraform this land a little bit more, though, I suppose. Yeah, definitely needs to touch up, although I've got to be careful. Only 47 durability left on this shovel. Do not let it break, SP, under any circumstances. In fact, I'm not risking it. I'm, I'm taking a trip to the gold farm. And then every single one of my tools can be nicely repaired. That's all perfect. I can do much more mining without any worries. And I've fixed the sub count, so make sure to subscribe if you're enjoying the video. Because hitting 4.1 million subs would, uh, would, would be kind of cool. Anyway, back over here I go to continue my little terraforming project. Which also requires me to remove a few trees. I also need to patch up all of these little holes in the middle. That's that one done. And this one is quite a a bit bigger, but it's also completely filled in. I was also just kind of fixing the terraform here, but then I've run out of dirt. Don't know how that's possible. I do have plenty in my house, so I'll offload everything. And then I'm thinking I could grab grass blocks. Yeah, look at all of these that I've got. Fantastic. Let's let's just fill up the inventory. I didn't need anywhere near that much, but anyway, we've got them now. And then I can clean up this terrain. And another big reason why I don't need to mine up all this stone and change it to grass blocks is the fact that once it snows, you're not even going to be able to see it anyway. So that's Another reason why I'm, I'm not bothering. I'm one of the first times I've actually found a use for building my house in a snowy area. also kind of want to fill in this hole here. I, I don't know, is it a creep hole or a charge one or something? I don't, I don't know, it doesn't seem natural. And it'll definitely look nicer when it's completely filled in. Although the fact that I'm leaving it hollow underground as I place the blocks is, is maybe a, a, something you guys hate. I don't know, could trick you all, but you'll soon forget it's there just like I will once the top is completely covered. Yeah, look at that. You had no idea, did you? I'm also just going to kind of bring this over... Like so. And job done. The area is now looking clean and tidy. Definitely ended up bringing too many grass blocks in now. Well, I chuck all the spare ones in there. And next, this beacon is technically in the way of all my... Whoa, there's a hole over there I missed. I'll fix that in a second. But yeah, this beacon is technically in the way of all my plans. And so I'm going to remove the entire thing. I can put those items into these two shulker boxes. So the iron block's there. 
the beacon. Now, I have no idea what I did with that nether star when I took out the wither, by the way. It, it could be anyway. I'm sure I picked it up, but maybe I just didn't, and I, th I thought I did. I ain't forgot about this little hole. Well, it's not a little hole. It's quite a deep one, isn't it? But anyway, I haven't forgot about it. It is going to get completely filled in. And then I can wait no more. I am going to start gathering up the blocks for my camel sanctuary. So glad the massive project of clearing the terrain is done. It's quite a lengthy list, and the main thing that I need is I need five shulker boxes worth of sandstone. At the moment, I have two, and I could craft it all from the sand that I have. Well, we'll see how much we have from this first. We've got a little bit in there, and oh, there's a bit more in here as well. Let's put it all into this shulker box. I don't really want to craft all my sand because sand's kind of hard to get and I actually don't have that much sand anyway. So I reckon a better option is going to be to find a desert that I've blown up collecting sand and I can get all the sandstone that's underneath. It's a foolproof plan, especially when I know where that desert is. Do I want to... You know what? This is the wrong portal. I actually want to go to the EOL portal because there, there is so much sandstone because I actually mined up an entire desert. There's even a desert pyramid there that I can take it from. Yes, getting all these stacks of sandstone should be no trouble at all. The only annoying part is I have to kind of navigate around all the stone blocks. But I suppose it's a small price to pay when there's this much sandstone available. You know what? Why am I messing about with mine all that sandstone down here when there's this, this perfectly good desert pyramid to mine up? Look at it. It's There's way more blocks. Plus, I do need some cut sandstone, and it also has that. Yeah, destroying this has to be a way better option. Oh, look at this. There's a whole bit of terrain that's just pure sandstone. This is the good stuff. None of this stuff, you know, where it's got stone in the middle of it. It's just pure sandstone waiting for me. Although, after mining out all that terrain of grass blocks and stone, I'm kind of not really wanting to just mine loads of sandstone, but I guess it's got to be done. And very soon, I'll be building once again. Also, we've now got three shulker boxes worth. Fantastic. I've just completely demolished this desert pyramid. You wouldn't even know it's still here, would you, other than this sandstone floor and the pattern in the middle? And to be honest, this floor isn't going to be here for much longer either. And I have also now got all five shulker boxes worth of sandstone, but I do want to get a little bit extra because I want to have some sandstone left over after the build. So what I'll do is I'll just break this entire floor up and around the desert pyramid. I think the only thing I'm leaving is a little orange circle in the middle. Everything else is getting completely mined up. And that includes the sand as well. I'm sure it'll come in handy at some point, so I might as well collect it all. Alrighty, well, it looks like I ain't minus entire square because I've officially run out of inventory space. And I don't know where I left the shulker box that has all the shulker box making equipment in it, but I, it is not in there. So I'll just have to head home. Yeah, it's a little bit of wasted sandstone, but it's not the end of the world. In fact, better idea, I'll throw away these two sandstone slabs because they're not really worth it. And instead, I'll pick up a bunch of this. Nicely done. This lot can be nicely put into chests. I'm going to dye these three shulker boxes yellow so that I know which ones the sandstone ones are. And I'll put them in this chest. I'm not sure why I've still got slime blocks in there. We don't really need them anymore. So they can go into here. And I did say I need one and a half shulker boxes of cut sandstone. As you can see, we've got nowhere near that. We've got a bit of that. And how much actual sandstone did I bring? So realistically, I need more sandstone that can then be turned into the cut version very easily at the stone cutter. And from there, I think I'm going to go back to the desert for the rest of those items that I'm missing. And I'll also gather up every other item I need for this camel sanctuary as well. Gathering up all the sandstone is the hardest part of that. Once that's done, everything else is pretty quick and easy. Almost every item I need is right here, except for a few extra items that I didn't have in my base that I need to go out and get. So the first one is lava. I need a load more lava. So... I'm going to go and swim along here to my lava farm. I actually have two of these built, so that should be more than enough. I'm going to go ahead and grab myself 16 buckets, and then I'm going to fill the entire rest of the inventory up with fireworks because we don't want to have any, uh, any anything overfilling. And then we just hold, hold right-click, and any that do have lava in, apparently it's, they've not all regenerated, but any that do... I will collect the lava. The machine has completely been run. Pretty happy with the amount of lava we got. You can see it has filled up loads of stuff. And whilst I'm in the vicinity, I might as well use the second one as well. Might as well, yeah, get, get as much lava as possible into the system. Because you can never have too much lava. That's mission accomplished. And now I can start grabbing a lava out of these and putting it into here. In fact, that's, that's all we're going to do. One sugar box is enough. And now the only other thing that I'm going to need quite a bit of is red sandstone. I don't really have any of it in my chest room, so I'm going on a journey to find a mesa biome to get loads. I do know there's a mesa biome somewhere in this direction. I always just kind of fly this way to find it and eventually stumble across it. But yeah, I, I should probably at some point take down the coordinates and this would be easy. But anyway, I'll just travel over there and then get all of the red sandstone that I need. Come across a woodland mansion. Now I'm curious, have I been here before? I feel like I must have been here and loaded it in, but... 
Just gonna dip in and have a little look. Okay, yeah, I've, I've definitely been here before. There's a portal, right? Let's let's get out of here and continue flying towards that mace. Oh, look at that! There's a portal up there. Really, is amazing what you see when just flying through your world of all the old memories. <laughs> Why is that all burning up? Oh my! You know, I'm gonna stop a forest fire here by patching up the lava with a crafting table. Somehow I didn't set on fire. It's a miracle. Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting distracted too easily. I'm just gonna go to the mesa. Aha! There it is. And the best way for me to probably get the red sandstone is just to get loads of red sand. I don't even know if there's red sandstone underneath. I think it's just terracotta. Yeah. So I'll collect. Up loads and loads of this. And apparently there is sandstone dotted around as well, although it, it, it seems kind of rare to find. And then once I get a completely full inventory, I can craft it into red sandstone and continue mining sand. I'm pretty sure that's all the sandstone that I need. So now I'm ready to head back home. Look, this is a beacon here. Hold on a second. Is there going to be a portal back? Oh, look at this. We've got a shortcut to get him back as well. That's a bonus. Because yeah, now I can get back home even quicker. Look at this. A custom made tunnel and everything. And now that I've successfully made it back, Operation Build a Camel Sanctuary can begin. And this is working out to be a much bigger project than I thought. I should have just made them a little tiny home like I did for the snippers, but oh no, I've got to go big, haven't I? I had to go big and make them something really fancy. To begin with, I'm going to make a big sandstone circle around the outside, which is going to be the entire build. And it's going to be big, and it's going to mark out the area for the entire rest of the build. And I'm also making a larger circle around the outside, and basically this is going to have water in it. It's going to be like a kind of a pool, so you can see there's, there's two circles, really, which is why I had to remove so much of the terrain. That's this entire bottom bit marked out. But now I need to start getting rid of the floor and changing it to be something nice. Oh, we've got haste. That's good. I didn't expect the instant mine. Well, yeah, changing it to be something like sandstone or just, just something that's going to look better than a floor, better than stone. And so I'm going to start off with a combination of sea lanterns in the floor. Then there's going to be black stained glass on... Okay, hold on a second. I can't add the black stained glass just yet because I first want to get all the sandstone down as a floor, mainly in these bits where once I place it, I can't place the glass. Then the glass goes on top like so. And then on top of that or all around that should I say we're going to have the sandstone then when you see the glass you can't see all this stuff like dirt around it, it, it it'll look nicer we'll go ahead fill it in all the way to there and this is like the walkway inwards I think it'll work well I'm also gonna have like a water walkway with glass on top of it here so that's gonna require a lot of mining basically most of this ground is gonna have to be dug out and replaced with sandstone or various other things. The trenches are pretty much ready. I just need to add water at the bottom. And did I bring any buckets? No, I didn't. Okay, which was maybe it's something I needed to do. I think I've got a better idea though than getting water buckets. Instead, I'll grab a bunch of ice and place them down and break them so that they become infinite water sources and I can store a lot more water a lot more easily. I feel like it's easy if I just place all the ice because it's next to sea lanterns. It'll just melt itself anyway. Then I can finish the rest of this all the way up to here and add light blue glass on top. And at this point, I think it's just focused on digging out the entirety of this floor that needs to go. Okay, without falling down if I, if I could help it. And I don't really need to dig out this middle bit here because there's going to be a platform in the center. How the... I, how did I even break that that fast? I don't know how I did it because I, I don't have haste right now. I could do with haste. There we go. If I just walk over there, I've got it. And I can mine up faster. But yeah, I'm going to have a big platform in the middle so I don't have to worry too much about that bit being removed. And in addition to all of this middle bit being dug out, the floor of these outer bits also needs to be removed too. So not just in there, but also this ring all the way around the outside because there's going to be water in here. So I also have to remove two layers in the outer bit since there's going to be water because underneath the water... There will be sandstone. Yeah, quite a lot of digging ahead. Now you can see why I just didn't take the time to turn all the stone into dirt. Because, yeah, a lot of it was going to be dug out and turned into sandstone or some other material anyway. So, yeah, I'll put my best foot forward and get busy mining everything out. I thought that these mining bits were behind me for the terrain, but obviously not. And, in fact, before I do too much, I'm going to repair this shovel because I just cannot let it break. I did accidentally break one before when I was uh, doing that entire terrain. Didn't want that to happen again. I'll go below a thousand levels if it does happen again. And those netherite smithing upgrade things, they're, they're, they're not cheap to get. So yeah, I'll do a quick repair at the pigman farm and then get to work with the digging. And at this point, I'm pretty sure everything's mined up that needs to be. All of this middle stuff is going to be covered up. So I'm now going to fill in these trenches with sandstone, then add walls around it and water inside. And finally, the glass can go over the top. I'm quite pleased with that. And now that I've done it in two of the places, I just need to do it on the final remaining bits, which is right here and also right here. Mission accomplished. They're all done now. So pretty much everything in, in the actual floor underneath is, is sorted. Now I'm just going to have sandstone all over the floor, apart from... A few areas where there is going to be sea lanterns. For example, there's going to be three right here. And then on top of these sea lanterns, we are going to have red stained glass there. And in the middle bit, we'll have a green stained glass. You can see I've already done those ones over there. 
I've done those ones. Just need to do the same thing in this corner. But I'll, I'll probably just get like the, the main bit of sandstone down first, which we've apparently run out of. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit more and continue filling it all in. Been a long time in the making, but every single bit of sandstone that needs to be down is now placed. At least the floor anyway. And I think it's starting to look really good. I want to do this middle fountainy area bit. Just so that this inside, you know, looks right at the moment. Because you can see the stone and stuff. It, it all looks a little bit out of place. And Oh, I didn't mean to fall down there. But yeah, adding the stairs to that is probably the next priority. They're just going to kind of snake around like this. And this bit is like the beginning part of the fountain. So the water's going to flow down from the middle along here. And then into the trenches on all four sides. So that's what I'm kind of making. Oops, whoops, a daisy. But that's what I'm kind of making right here. We're going to need more sea lanterns along this bit. And then more water can be added too. That's this middle bit also done. I, I think it is really starting to take shape. It looks way better because you can't see loads and loads of stone everywhere. But another fairly big project that I have ahead of me is the fact that all of these bits need to be filled in with sand. Except here. This is actually meant to be glowstone, so I should put that in now. But... In there, bottom of there needs to be sand. All of that needs to be sand. And then it'll need to be loads and loads of water. But of course, me being me, I didn't bring any sand. I, I kind of didn't think I'd need it. But yeah, I think underneath the water, sand is going to work best, much better than sandstone. So I must swoop down and see how much we've got. Have we got enough? Oh, we should have enough. Let's go and chuck as much as we can into this yellow shulker box. And then I can get busy filling in all of this. I'm not convinced I'm going to have enough sand. I'll probably have to make a trip back to the desert or something like that. But at the very least, with the 18 or 19 stacks or so that I've got, I should be able to make good progress. And yep, just as suspected, I've run out and there's still quite a bit to do, as you can see. Did I get past halfway? Oh, I did. Okay, so I probably need another 10 to 15 stacks. I reckon I'll just fill up a shulker box. That'll be quickest. And to make it even faster, I'm also going to take some TNT because that is a very quick way to get sand. <laughs> you just blow it up. Try and look for an area of this desert that I haven't already ransacked, but it looks like I've, I've TNT'd the whole place. Maybe if we forget the whole using TNT thing and we just manually mine up all these spare bits on top because there is plenty of sand still about here tnt is just probably not the most effective way to get it at this point i've definitely mined up more than enough for the project as you can see pretty much filled my inventory which means i've pretty much filled up a shulker box just got three more stacks to get well three and a half should i say which won't take very much mining at all i've got more than enough but i seem to have misplaced my shulker box can anybody see a yellow shulker box around i can kind of follow the little trail of broken sand blocks but Okay, you know what? Let's just fly upwards. There it is down there. I see you. The extra gaps can be filled in. And I can head back home to place down the remaining sand. And also, these bits of walls should be sandstone, technically. I don't know why the, the random blocks are. I thought I'd changed every single bit, but apparently not. So I need to carefully mine away at this too. And then carefully add the sandstone in. There we go. Mission to place down all the sand is now complete. And I did put pretty much all of my items back in a chest at home. Well, all the items that I need for building anyway. So I'll offload this junk, then grab everything back out of here and grab two buckets of water. The use of these two buckets of water is very simple. To fill in all of this with an infinite water source. So you can see, basically now that I've got this going, I can easily fill it all up very, very fast indeed. And it's all freezing over. Okay, this <laughs> this is a slight oversight. Building a desert sanctuary in the snow biome. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to have to go up there and place a load of glass. Or, and this, this means that it's a load of waste of sand. There is always plan B. I could fill it on with lava. You know what? I can't be bothered with that. That's going to take so much effort. Instead, I'll just grab a big shulker box full of glass, as well as some temporary blocks to build to the sky limit with. And then all of this junk can nicely be put into the chest. So let's fill it all up. The only things I'm going to be keeping is the sugar box of glass and also the netherrack. So everything else of all these materials is going to go. I think the crafting table... Yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll keep all the rest, all right? And I really hope I've got enough glass for this project. But I'm sure if one sugar box isn't enough, then that's, that's kind of crazy. I can always go and get more from the void trader, which is always good. So all I have to remember is when I get to the top, I need to place one glass right like that. Okay, that's that's all I need to remember. So we've made it to the top of the world. Is this the very, the very height? Yep. So I'm too lazy to try and build a circle that perfectly matches, which means instead I'm just going to build a square over the top, completely covering, because I don't want any snow on top of it either. Now I do have the exact coordinates for how wide it needs to be, so I don't have to worry about working out, you know, estimating it. I know the exact widths and everything. Well, I know the coordinates I have to build to anyway. That's as far as I need to go in this direction. Now I'll go all the way to the other side. And I have successfully cornered it off into one 
giant square. So the, the biggest job now is to fill it all in with glass. Yeah, that's the bit that's going to be quite time consuming. Placing all this down. But by the end of it, it will 100% be worth it. Also feels weird being as high up as a planet over there. And you can see the other glass I've done. I've only ever done this. This is only the second time I've ever tried this. You guys always tell me to do it. And I do think it is quite a smart method and it does work quite well. Even if placing all the glass is going to take me quite a bit of time. And as I suspected, I have run out of glass. I've filled in a decent amount, but probably not even quite half. So I reckon I need another two shulker boxes worth at least to fully fill in all of that roof. So it's time for a trip to the Void Trader. At least it will be once I've got rid of this entire netherrack pillar. Because it'll just be an eyesore. It doesn't need to be there now because I can just fly up there. So I'm very glad to mine up the entire thing. Also, it's almost completely frozen over. At least it, it won't be doing that for soon. Just, to, yeah, I need to fill in all of the rest. Probably going to come in handy for me to bring at least one extra shulker box. I'm going to bring three in total just so I have more than enough glass. Let's dye them all white though because I do always think it's easier if I colour coordinate my shulker boxes and white shulker boxes always seem to make sense for glass. I have also got a little bit here. So how about we move that out of the way and then we also fill up this fourth one. We're going to end up with getting a lot of glass. It shouldn't take too much. It shouldn't also take that many emeralds in comparison because I think one emerald is worth four glass. So all in all, I'm fairly confident that I'll get everything that I need. Let's go and start with emeralds. I'm going to offload everything I don't need into here. The only things I'm going to keep are the pickaxe and the shovel because I want to repair those with mending. This librarian is the one that sells it to me, so you can be sent down and arrive in the spot to be traded with. I'm now going to do this. And yeah, you've seen me do this already today, so I'll just keep trading with him. Mend my pickaxe at the same time and get absolutely loads and loads of glass. I've nearly done all the trading I need to do, but I've just realized it's way faster if I actually take my boots off when I use this machine. I think that's because Depth Strider makes water push you slower, if that makes sense. For example, if I go through and I put my boots on, you'll see that I actually get pushed way, way slower. Look at this, so slow. And that's as fast as I can do the trading. But if I go ahead and take them off, I can definitely get through this a lot faster. So, yeah, I've used this machine, I don't know, probably hundreds, maybe even thousands of times. And now, I'm, okay, I just accidentally traded the glass. That wasn't meant to happen. But yeah, now I'm way, way quicker. It doesn't matter, by the way, that I accidentally traded the glass because I have got nearly four shulker boxes worth anyway. More than enough to finish that glass roof. Nearly actually used a full shulker box of emeralds, but I'll put all those back there. I will grab all of my stuff out of that chest. And I did hear them all make the noise like the... the Oh, okay, he's restocked. You know what? I take it all back. We're going to get the final bits of glass. Since whilst I'm here, I might as well. Wow, yeah, this is this is way faster. This would have saved me so much time in life in general, wouldn't it, if I had just... I just really picked up the pace with it and, uh, and used this method before. Mission accomplished. All shulker boxes filled. And now operation finish the glass roof can be executed in the blizzards. It's, it's a bit of a shame because my whole build's going to get covered in snow while I'm up here. If only I got all of this glass down a few days earlier. And after placing many, many pieces... It is done. And I no longer need to worry about all this water freezing over into ice. I've only got one full shulker box of glass left. I do still have quite a few stacks of inventory though, so that, that can go there. Put it all at the bottom of this chest and I can then grab every single thing here. Plus a fortune pickaxe, you'll soon see why. Well, you'll see why right now. I want it so I can break the ice really fast because yeah, using my fist, it's going to take forever. Using the fortune pickaxe, oh, it's instant. And the water is just coming back straight away. Honestly, when I started the project to build a camel sanctuary, I did not think it was going to be this big of a task. But at least when it's done, it's going to look very, very cool indeed. And I also think the camels deserve it. They, they deserve to have a nice home. So anyway, I will continue placing water down. There also needs to be all of it inside of here with glowstone at the top. And then the same will be the case for all the other pools around the outside. Yeah, it's a big ring of water, which means a lot of bucket uses are going to happen. But it's amazing that you could do all this with just two of them. Once I put these down, I think it should fill itself in. Yep, it has done that. Now I've just got to do the same thing over here. And it's sorted. The water feature of the Camel Sanctuary is finished. Next, it's time for the lava feature. So I'm just going to get rid of these buckets into there. The lava is actually going to go right here. So I'm going to have one, two, three like that. Followed by another three in front of... Okay, without burning yourself, SP, that would be nice. But yeah, <laughs> another three in front of it. And the final three... Along there. And because lava's dangerous and I don't want any camel casualties, 
we have got ourselves some glass over the top. Now to do the exact same thing on this side and cover it with glass. Will these little items just fit into that tiny gap to burn? Oh, they will. Fantastic. I've got a free bin as well. That's always an extra positive, especially when I can't burn. Okay, well, maybe if I throw it like that, it's got to be very well aimed, apparently. But anyway, I'm going to spend a little bit of time mining up all this snow. I didn't put Silk Touch on this shovel yet because it was one that broke and I had to repair it. I didn't want to use up too many levels. So it's just lean to me getting loads of snowballs. To be honest, blocks of snow are useful. Why did I even throw them away down there? Because I might as well keep them and put them in a chest because sometimes I do use them for building. There's definitely no point being wasteful and doing all that has already got me a stack and seven and there's all the snow in these extra bits here that has to be collected too. Two and a half stacks to go into this chest and you can see I don't have a crazy amount of snow already so that is not a bad day's work if you ask me. And now I can actually concentrate on what I'm supposed to be doing which is building this place up. Yeah, it's, it's still kind of small and it's still got a lot of work to go. And apparently I missed a load of snow as well. Okay, well, you know what? I'll just mine up these, drop it off and start building up the walls to be even higher. That's now all the inner walls sorted and on this outside bit, I want there to be iron bars. I want people to realize that you don't just walk and jump in the water because guess what? Once you're in here, Unless you mine your way out or you fly, you can't escape. The iron bar should hopefully be a good deterrent. There we go. It really is starting to look good. And then I'll just continue to build the walls up even higher. And eventually it's going to be like a massive dome around this center area. These pillars are going to be brought up. There's going to be multiple floors to this. I think the camels are absolutely going to love it. And yeah, I am definitely going to make the snippers jealous. I don't think they can see it from here, which might be a good thing. I'm now at the stage where I'm doing the ceiling for these bottom rooms. I, I might eventually put extra decorations in them. They could just have camels in and, and that'd be it. But yeah, the ceiling is going to be made of the sandstone slabs. And then I can add a sandstone floor above all of those slabs. And in these gaps, there is going to be glowstone. So then from below, Oh, it should start to look quite good. Although, yeah, there is still quite a bit of work to be done to get it exactly where I want it to be. A lot of sandstone has gone into making this platform, but it's looking pretty good. And now I am going to need to start placing chiseled red sandstone, but I only have the cut red sandstone and the normal red sandstone. I don't actually need this normal one. So I'll take this shulker box all the way down here to a stone cutter at the bottom where I can convert the redstone to be chiseled. And when you look at it from a distance, you'll see that it is starting to come together. It's starting to take shape. It's a pretty cool build. It's, a, it's just so massive. And I can start building up some walls with the chiseled red sandstone. And before I go any further, you can see it's uh, it's snowing over there, but it's not snowing where I am, thanks to my glass. But yeah, before I go any further, I'm going to need the shulker box with the ice in because I need to place it in there for a nice waterfall. And that's actually going to be used for all four of the sides. You can see for this one, there's glowstone in the middle. So we'll just have something like that. Although it's not meant to flood at the bottom. Okay, <laughs> let me uh, fix that. There shouldn't be any glass above these sea lanterns. Then when I add the water, you'll see it just flows straight into where it should be and it stays put. I've also realized I should extend the glass by one, two, three, four, probably. That way it, it isn't covering this little bit. It's literally just this little bit. I don't even need to extend it by four. I just need to do it in the middle bit. Oh, well, I guess I'll worry about that later. Right now, I'm focused on adding ice to all of these, so it also needs to be in the middle here. Don't technically need to mine it. You know, it would just melt itself, but I like to give it a little helping hand and, and see how it would look instantly. This right here is the final corner, and because it's water below, I don't have to worry about it going everywhere. It'll just stop there perfectly. Oh, and this, look at this. Perfection right there that the, the, uh, the snow stops just where it needs to and I can then start to add the next layers of the building You can see it's just smooth sandstone over the glowstone. We're also going to have glass come one out past this uh, the, the, These orange beams. So this is like the dome that now begins I'm going to mine up these bits though because they they, they were just kind of more temporary blocks because you know I need I need them to place the glass but once I do that I can then remove them after Okay, that's not how it's meant to be. But yeah, once they're done, they can be removed after with the Silk Touch pickaxe. And you can probably see how this is one big window that's kind of domed upwards. And it's connecting to this, which is going to be a roof. But the dome is also going to con continue upwards. This is going to be an entire sandstone floor, which will act as the ceiling for down there as well. And I also want to add a bit of a slab platform that will support that. So it's going to come all the way around like this and just, yeah connect onto the pillars basically then all of the sandstone blocks can go above it right here i've made a nice little border for a lake so i'm going to take my ice and start getting that down basically yeah it's going to be all water and that's going to flow down here and if i've done everything correctly it should yeah look at that it makes a beautiful water feature in the middle also kind of feel like this should be symmetrical do i have any light blue glass anywhere not that i can see but yeah this is a quick way to get up and down and this just basically needs to be a, an infinite water source which 
It's going to be a kind of annoying with these holes here. So I think I'll just fill them up with... Let's just do it with some cut red... Okay, well, glowstone, that'll do then. <laughs> we'll, we'll put the glowstone in there. I'm going to make loads and loads of infinite water sources so that it will all be completely filled in. And then the glowstone can once again be removed. Progress is good. It has to be said. I think I might add like some acacia trees or something in here because the floor is a little bit bare. But I'll do that later. Right now, up here still needs decorating. So I'll start off doing that by placing cut red sandstone around the outside. Now for the bit in between this, I'm gonna have grass blocks. So that's gonna get all placed down. Probably right at the very end, I'll bone meal it just so it looks good. But for now, I'll just leave it as general grass. So yeah, everything here is getting filled in by this, which should look pretty good. Now I'm just making this middle section look a bit nicer because at the moment it, it kind of looks boring. We'll break this eye. Oh, well, that didn't work, did it? If it melts, will it still disappear? I think it'll disappear anyway. So I probably need to play. Oh no, wait, if it melts naturally, it will have the water out. So we just got to wait for the glowstone to do its thing. Man, why is this taking so long? I guess I could do other things whilst I wait and then you'll see how the fountain looks at the end. For example, I'm gonna have more windows and walls around this outside here. And it's easy to tell what goes where because sandstone goes on the sandstone that's already there and glass goes on the sea lanterns. The next level of windows is done and walls, as you can see, all the way around. Now we're adding more glass dome that kind of works its way inwards. And as it gets closer and closer to the top, eventually it will meet in the middle to form a giant beacon, which will be, uh, which will be nice. It'll be a yellow beacon Going out the top of it, I'll probably use it so it gives me haste too or something like that. Because you can never have too much haste. It's always handy to be able to mine fast, isn't it? I reckon that's enough glass. Let's now place down the sandstone. So we'll get rid of that and just have loads of it all kind of covering it as a proper roof. And you know what I should be doing whilst I'm building this? I should be breeding more camels. I've only got three of them. So they won't fill that entire place. I mean, look at it. It's absolutely massive. Oh, it's looking cool with the dome on now, isn't it, as well? I really like that. But yeah, whilst I'm working on it, I should have been breeding them. I could have had about seven camels by now. Probably way more than seven. More like 20. So um, yeah, I'm going to go and grab some cactus from down here, which I'm hopeful I have plenty of. Yeah, look at that. Loads of it in the chest. Also grab one extra lead since we are about to get one extra camel. You two can be fed the cactus. Although for it to work, you, you actually have to get up, mate. Okay, don't. All right. How about we give it to you as well? Somebody who appreciates it. Come on, guys. One of you. Surely you, 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 you want a baby camel. Oh, we got one. Fantastic. All right. I don't know if he can get over the fence. Oh, you're sitting down as well, are you? Well, you're connected to that. And whilst their cooldown ends and that, that baby one grows up, I I can continue building this roof. And I'm adding a bit of a diagonal glowstone along the top. Although it needs to be in both directions for it to... Okay, well, not like that, SP. Come on, don't, don't ruin it all. But yeah, it needs to be in both directions for it to work out. So that should be good. That's good. A apparently, it takes all my brain cells to work out how to do a diagonal line at this point. Yep, I've, I've obviously played too much Minecraft now because my brain no longer works the way it's supposed to. Right, let's get a layer of sandstone around the outside. And then another smaller layer just above it. And this is where the beacon part's gonna happen. So inside of this, we're gonna get the iron blocks and we are going to have a layer of iron followed by another ring of sandstone and another layer of iron. And this is basically just gonna be repeated until I have a full beacon. So there's not many more layers to go. Once I've done this one, I think I've just got, yeah, a five by five one left. I should have the perfect amount of iron as well, I think. I hope I do anyway, otherwise I'm going back to my house to get it. Nope, I did have the exact right amount. I just have to try and remember where I put the beacon. I know it's in one of these shulker boxes, but which one? Okay, it's in that one, so we're going to place this down and grab the beacon and the yellow glass. You might be wondering what all the stone brick stairs and stuff is for. Well, all will be revealed. It's, it's actually something down there that needs to be done. But anyway, I'm going to put the beacon on top. I'm going to grab myself an ingot, which will be in this red shulker box right here. What kind of ingot? A gold one will do. We have loads of them. Could have been gold, could have been emerald, could have been iron. We're going to give myself haste to... And then we're going to cover this up. We're going to surround it with sandstone and put a piece of yellow glass on top. The beam should change color. There we go, it has. It just fits better with the sandstone when it's when it's a yellow beam. I also think it might look a little bit better if like more towards the top. It's just not sandstone all the way up, it's more textured. So instead, I'll use cut sandstone for this layer. I think it'll just look a little bit better if it's not the same all the way. You know how it is. It's always good to slightly mix up the block palette if you can, especially when it's as subtle as this one. There we go, that's all down and that's it. That's the camel sanctuary pretty much done. I have to say, I really like it. It's got a real Egyptian deserty kind of feel to it, hasn't it? Which is perfect. I think the orange really brings it together. And just to bring it to life that little bit more, I am going to nip back home to get some acacia... I only have one acacia sapling. Are you kidding me? Well, yeah, I came back for acacia saplings. And I also came back for bone meal, which is... Yeah, yeah, I do have a shulker box of that. Thank goodness for that. Let's 
go ahead. If I, if I chuck that down there and then put that back, we have enough space. We had enough space anyway. But yeah, I need more acacia saplings. Do I have acacia leaves? That would be a good thing to check. Um, I think this is acacia leaves. I have four. Okay. I need to go out on a bit of a mission to get more acacia saplings. And I will also need dirt. Completely forgot about that, so I'll just grab a bit of that. You know what? Forget it. In reality, I have this one sapling, and with that, I should be able to get loads. So I'm going to find a spot to plant it. How about right here will be perfect. We bone meal lit up, and please, please, it's the world's tiniest acacia, isn't it? Maybe it's not that bad. Oh, there we go. We've got another sapling back. I'm hoping it gives me multiple ones. I'll basically just keep planting them and bone mealing them until I have, I don't know, 10 saplings, something like that. I don't need a crazy amount, but I still want a good amount. Oh, look at another one. Man, I'm, I'm in good uh, good thing with this. Do I have... Oh, it has a fortune tree on it, which is probably what's helping with the sapling drop rate. Yeah, I should, I should mine up as many leaves as I can with fortune three. In fact, even better, I have a hoe with fortune three, and that insta mines the leaves. So, oh, yes, we can get saplings so, so fast using this, although we, we haven't got that many. What did we get? We got, uh, we've got a few. We've got, we've got three. Three is better than zero, so I'll take that. We can go over here and also use the hoe. Oh, there's going to be loads. Uh, two trees. I must have about six saplings at this point. Seven saplings, eight. Oh, look at this. Fantastic. And with Operation Get Acacia Saplings being an absolutely huge success, I can take these and plant them. I, I want it to be in the middle, so I'll work out which block. I oh, well, I didn't think there was going to be all that below it. But I think this is probably the spot. Then we go like that. We bone meal it. And you know what? I think it, it adds an extra dimension to it, okay? So, yeah, they need to look like they're all together. So, I'll just keep placing these around inside. Yeah, it just gives it that, that feel of, I don't know, something. But now that I've, I've grown two, I need to make sure in all the other places, they're exactly the same. So, a gap of three there. Also needs to be a gap of three there to bring it to that. Fantastic. Now, then, am I going to have quite enough bone meal? I think I've just about got enough. I've got 14 left. I can place this. We can grow. The, don't use it all up. Come on, sapling. Grow. There we go. We've got five pieces left, which is perfect for down here. The trees, yeah, the trees definitely help. Maybe the ground could be a bit more decorated as well, but I'll worry about that some other time. Oh, look at that. It looks great. So I now need to use the stairs to get up to the top. So we go up this way. And once we exit these doors, the only way up to the next section is to run all the way around to one of these other three staircases. So we go through that. I should have like pressure plates or something to get up, but we come in here. And then I think... I think bone meal on the ground here. Yeah. I don't want any double tall grass, but just for normal grass, I think I think it just adds a nice a nice little thing. The only issue is, do I have enough? Nope, I sadly do not. Good job I've got loads of bones at home, though, that I can just grab and turn to bone meal. Yeah, <laughs> we're never going to have a shortage of that, are we? And once I go ahead and put this down and just make sure that there's no tall grass sneaking through the, the cracks here, the inside's done. I really like that. It just adds an extra dimension Definitely, definitely makes it better. Yeah, the inside's done. The only thing that now needs to be done for the camel sanctuary, other than adding the camels, kind of important. But yeah, the only other thing is I'm going to add some decorational like objects all along the water. Because at the moment, the water moat, it, it kind of looks a bit boring. I'm also going to go and see if I can breed the camels again. I doubt that first camel has grown up, but I, I think the cooldown will have run out for the other ones to be able to breed again. We will see anyway, all right? Um, you, okay, looks like it hasn't. Yeah, okay. And you have not grown up either. Tell you what, here, here's a load of these. Grow up now, come on. I'm sure it'll it'll do it soon, won't you? Or are you just going to eat all my cactus? Okay, you're just going to eat all my cactus. Not to worry, I'll be back in a bit because I've, I've got some building to do. So the little decorations are going to look like that. They're going to start with this bottom and then they're going to have a sea lantern in the middle followed by glass and then more stairs on top around with finally a stone brick block in the middle. So pretty straightforward. These are going to go all the way around. So I'll just get busy with getting them all built. That was a little bit tedious to do, but every single one is now completed. Now for sure, all I need to worry about is getting the camels. And I think I'm also going to add a little bit more glass up there. Because I don't really want snow to be nowhere, but then it's just randomly on these little bits here. So yeah, I just, just need to fly up to the top and add a tiny bit extra. Although before I do that, I'm going to sleep. And with that, I can get to work whilst in the sunlight. That should cover it enough. I, I might add more when I add a pathway that connects up to that one. Because there definitely has to be one eventually. I'm not going to worry about it too much. The only other thing that is kind of bothering me is the fact that you can just see the squares around it. Where there hasn't been snow. So it snowed everywhere, but then, but then not under the glass. And it just makes the build look so out of place. So I do need to add snow layers into all these bits. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'll just get rid of these bits here. I'll just clear the entrance completely, in fact, because none of this needs to be here. I'll go and check on my camels and see if any of them have grown and are, are breedable. Although, for that, I will also need 
more cactus, so I guess it's it's a drop off everything at home moment. Then I need to grab some extra cactus. And I won't breed them all just yet, looks like you've grown up, which is good. No, instead I'll grab you, put you on a lead, grab... Okay, hold on, get off. I, I'm just looking to steal the leads, that's all I'm asking for. Okay, no, what's going on here? I'm having a bit of a nightmare, right? So we need to unlead two of them and bring two of them with me. Actually, you know what? I'll just bring all four of them at once. Why not? Why, 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 you know, not just do it efficiently? I'm sure I'm about to find out why I wasn't going to bring all four at once. Something's probably going to go wrong. One of them will die or get stuck or something. But we'll see. Maybe this can work with all you guys. Hey, I tell you what, it's working so far. Oh, look at that. From down here, I really like how it looks in the distance. I think it's a really cool build. You guys are going to love it. What on earth? How have you escaped? Oi, what, what's going on here? We've got a... We've... <laughs> We've got a sniffer on the loose. The sniffer isn't happy that the sniffer's house is rubbish compared to the camel's. I'll make a better sniffer house at some point, I promise. But right now, I'm going to have to make a bigger entranceway. Let's move all that water. Can you guys squeeze through? That's it, well done. Why is the one through the wall? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Welcome to your new home, guys. This is the camel sanctuary. I think they love it. Look at them just looking around, enjoying it. Let's get all of these off. Oh, look at that. He's ready for a rest. It's been a long walk, has it? And you. Why did you think this was going to be a good idea? Getting stuck at the bottom. Right, I, I don't know how I'm going to get you out. I guess, can you? Can we just maybe make a nice little... Yeah, we'll make a gap for you. You know, we'll just break everything. That seems to be the only way to move camels. And you're actually going to be one of the ones that I take up to the top. So let's see if we can get you up this stairs. It's going to be a bit of a challenge, but let's have a little look. I tell you what, you say it's going to be a challenge. It's working fantastically. All right, camel. Again, we're going to have to probably break in to get you there, but we'll just break some glass. It's, uh, it's only mine. Yeah, this is fantastic. We'll just break... These four pieces of glass, and then in theory, drag you in. Oh, what are you doing up there? No, down. Take two. Fantastic. All right, that's one in. I'm going to need two up here, though, if I'm going to breed them, so hold that thought. I'm afraid one of you guys can't stay. All right, you look like you're pretty relaxed. Oh, no, you're up and ready to go, are you? All righty, well, come with me, because you're going to a new assignment on the roof. You know, this was surprisingly a lot easier than I expected. All right, we can disconnect that. Let's go and breed you guys. That's it. Get, no, don't go to sleep. I know the sun's setting. Okay, we just still got a baby camel. It worked out. I can patch up this first hole. And I can also patch up this one right here. I think it was just cut sandstone in a shape like that, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. The door goes back on the front. We can get another baby camel down here. And I think, you know, because it's a camel sanctuary, eventually we want them all over the place. So we want some in here. Yeah, maybe just in every room there should be a camel. That could be cool, couldn't it? <laughs> I, should, I, should I just try and breed as many as I can? It, mainly it's going to have to come from the camels down here. And it's mainly going to be a case of waiting for the babies to grow up. But if you just give them an entire stack, that'll soon get them going, won't it? That's it, little fella. You eat every single one of them. I'm going to go and fly back. Because if I'm going to fill that entire thing with camels... I'm going to need a lot more cactus. I'll just go for all of it. All eight stacks, seven stacks, whatever it is. And if I really want a lot more, I should go over to the Guardian Farm because there's so much cactus there. But I'm hopeful that this will be enough to just get, you know, get the sanctuary up and running. Ideally, every single room is going to be filled. But how many rooms is there? There's one, there's two, and there's a bit of window missing. It, 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 uh, what, what, how did I do that? I have no idea, but I can forget about trying to get loads more camels. I should probably focus on fixing the window. Because it was a little bit unnecessarily breezy in there. Is 13 stained glass going to be enough? Maybe the other stained glass is coming through the system. I have no idea. But knowing me, I'll just be one glass short or something stupid. No, I'm going to be more than one. Yeah, I, I would be very surprised if 13 is... Hang on a minute. We've got two to spare. Oh, fantastic. Anyway, back to counting how many rooms there are. So this is the second room. So far, I've counted nine. There's going to be 12 altogether because there's three in each corner. I don't need to, to, to count the last ones. As the other camel grow... Oh, it's the baby one. Where do you think you're going? No, you're not going into the other rooms just yet. Do you actually fit? This would be good to know if they fit through doorways. Because if they do... Oh, not quite. Okay. If we can get you in here. What about if we remove the door? Are you in then? No. Oh, you are. Okay. Well, that will make life easier. So I'll just move the baby camels in. And then when they become an adult, they're, they're, <laughs> they're stuck forever. Can we breed you guys again yet? No, not yet. Did, I think I bred the other ones. Yeah, I'm just going to wait around for the, the cooldown. So I'll just keep doing that. Guys, stop following me. It's creepy. But yeah, I'll just wait for the cooldown to end. And then I'll, I'll, I'll do it again. Okay, looks like I can breed them again. Fantastic. This baby one's still not grown up. Don't you think you can come over here for cactus? You ate an entire stack. I don't think so. But yeah, we've got another baby. Once both of those have grown up, we can get loads more. And I'll also breed the upstairs ones, because we need loads of camels up here too. I actually love this room. It's, it's really, really cool, isn't it? The camels really are starting to flow now. I've got four adults down here, so I reckon... Do I have to wait? How much... Oh, I've got so much cactus. If I just give them both a stack, they'll both grow up pretty fast. And it's basically having as many adult camels downstairs as possible is the key. So when the babies get a stack and a half, they actually grow in like one minute. 
Oh, less than one minute. Instant. Okay, we got you. Let's let's get you. let's move you away though. You're gonna grow and get suffocated in the water. You know what? If if that happens, I'll save your life. Don't worry. Because for now, I'm just gonna keep stuffing you with cactus till you grow up. That's it. Yeah, there's no way you don't become a big strong camel with all of this in your belly. I like the way they've all gone to sleep in the corner together as well. Guys, come on, rise and shine. Get out of there. The baby's grown. Fantastic. I think I can breed two of them again. I, I think I think I got the two that I can do it. Yep, we've got a new baby, and you are going to be the first one that goes into one of the extra rooms, all right? So you can come into this one here. I think it's just going to be easy if I mine the wall, to be honest, and get you in that way. That's it. Don't be don't be sheepish. or so say camelish. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my jokes out the best. Anyway, we'll put that back there and wait for their cooldown to end. Then I'll get three more. Three more rooms will be filled. I should be able to fill up all the rooms and have loads of camels before day 6,800. They can now be bred once again, so let's go get you two together. You and you. They've all gone for their own camels. Okay, this is really complicated matters, but anyway. <laughs> You, you come over here. You follow me. That's it. And you as well. Come on. Come on, guys. That's it. Love at first sight. It's, it's slow motion, but but anyway, that's going to work. And I think the other one has given me a baby as well. So we will grab you. I think I can just sneak you in the wall, can't I? That's it. Through it. Don't don't notice the diorite. It's not real. This will be your room. I feel like they're not the most decorated ones in the world, but it'll, it'll have to do. This is a double wall, by the way. Yeah, a bit of extra. And then there's one more somewhere else. Here you are. Don't think you can escape. Instead, you can go to room number four. I also keep forgetting I can really easily get to the top by this fountain. It's kind of one of the reasons that it's been installed. These guys are ready as well to be bred again. So, you know, we, I also put the heart particles on so I can see them again because I think it's easier. I think we've only got three adults up here, so that'll, uh, that'll have to do. I mean, in theory, I could take some of these babies and take them downstairs. You know, I'll just leave them as they are. I'll just wait another... Five minutes for the cooldown to end. I've filled four rooms. I've got eight to go. I'm sure it'll work fine. That's it. Three more babies and three more rooms filled. And what's the way for this breeding cooldown to end? I've just had an idea. When my netherite shovel broke earlier, I didn't make it a silk touch one. So whilst I've got a little bit of time to kill, might as well grab a book, grab some emeralds, buy silk touch, and get it added on to the shovel. 11 levels. Oh, and there goes the anvil. Oh, well, do we have any more anvils in here? The answer is... 31. Okay, we do. Well, that's not the end of the world then. It can go there. But I'm down to 1,011 levels. That is, that is quite a sad moment, really. Although there's more important things to worry about, like waiting for them camels to grow up and be able to breed more. In fact, that is a thought. Are you are you grown up yet? Oh, no, you're still a baby. What about you? Still about Sorry, I didn't mean to light a firework off in your room. Still a baby. I'm <laughs> just checking in them all. Hi, guys. Yeah, this is, these are your prisons more like anything. All these get to be together and you're just in rooms. Anyway, it, it makes it look like they went there on their own and they can go where they want. Did you cool down ended yet? Nope. Gotta wait a little bit longer. There you guys go. There's now only two rooms left. And then the camel sanctuary will be well and truly complete. Although just very quickly, I feel like there should be two blue stained glass there. So I'm going to get it. Available in this chest right here. Thank goodness we've got a little bit left. And yeah, it does just improve it. Make it look that little bit better because it's now it's all the same on all four sides. And once the cooldown ends for all of you, I will be done. Oh, we can now do it. What are you doing up there? Get down from there. You are crazy. I don't, I'm glad you didn't take fall damage. At this point, the sun has set. You can go in here and you can go in there. And with that, my camel sanctuary is now complete. I absolutely love it. And to get all the armor types, there is a new farm that I need to build. But it's pretty late right now, so I'm going to bed. So I'll see you guys in the morning. And I'm back in another studio. And so the next farm is going to be a turtle shell farm. And it, okay, I've went down the wrong stairs in one second. Why do I need one of those farms? Well, it's actually a farm that will give me scoots, but I need that because for these armor trims, yes, I've got all the leather armor, I've got all the gold, I've got all the iron, you know, chain, all of that, but I haven't got all the turtle shells or turtle helmets. I can't remember exactly what they're meant to be called. Anyway, how many eggs do I have? Nine. And you know, we have a decent amount of scoots, but I don't know if I've got enough and, you know, for brewing and stuff. You see, we have 20 of them. I think I need more. I don't think I need more. I need way, way more. What we'll do is we'll, we'll go ahead and get ourselves a lime green shulker box. So let's go put that there, stick that together, and then we can start putting all these in here. And I need 160 turtle shells. That's, that's how many I need. As you can see, I've got like 20 in there, so... Is a bit scot. Is it 160? Yeah, it definitely is. It's loads. Okay, so we definitely need a farm. They don't take that many resources to build. And you know me being me, I'm not just going to build a little simple one. I'm going to build a massive one with just loads and loads of turtles in, okay? Because I've just always got to go overboard. So we're going to need hoppers. We're going to need chests. Then there's ladders, fences. I actually feel like 64 fences isn't going to be enough. I'm going to grab... Okay, well, we don't have much spruce wood. We have a bit in there, so we're going to go ahead and craft this. Put it with some sticks because, like I said, I'm making multiple 
once. I can make this fairly close to where I am anyway, so if I need extra materials, it's not the end of the world. But yeah, the final thing is water, so I'm going to grab ice for that. That always seems to work well. I'm going to grab a couple of stacks of ice. And I don't know how I'm doing in seagrass. Oh, we have loads of seagrass. Okay. Well, that is very, very good news indeed. Also, I have nine eggs, so I can kind of begin a bit of an empire. But I think to start with, I'm going to go on a bit of an egg collecting spree. Also, guys, trying to get to 4.1 million subs. So make sure to subscribe if you enjoy. And now, if, if I head to spawn, I did used to have a massive turtle farm. I had to take out all the turtles because they were causing problems because I built a spawn. But I used to have it. I've taken everything out of it. I'm building a completely different design from this. This was built a long time ago. And the biggest thing I want to make sure I do is it's not too close to my house. And it's also not in spawn chunks. Those are my only two stipulations. And I need to kind of travel far, far away to find all the turtle eggs. Because I, I don't want to like slowly build the farm up by breeding. Nah, I just want to go gung-ho and just have loads and loads to start. Like if I can have a stack of turtle eggs, then that's going to be 64 turtles. Yeah, that'll get the farm going. That will definitely get the farm going nicely. So that's how I plan to do it. But to do that, I'm going to need to find new chunks because I've kind of explored everywhere that's nearby so that all the turtles are just going to be gone or swam off or something. So if I can get new chunks, when I get to that new chunk, a turtle will probably spawn in or two. And then I can breed it. Three stacks of seagrass should be enough. And then we just use the silk touch of my pickaxe to steal all their eggs. I think it's a foolproof plan. This should be far enough. And the reason I need this plan to work and I need the farm is because to get all the rest of the turtle helmets... I need another 700 scoops, which is quite a lot. Now, the good thing is we've spawned right by a village. Don't really need it, to be honest. But even better, we've spawned next to an ocean. So, we just need to keep an eye out for a little beach area. Any any sand that I might see. Because that is the prime location that turtles will spawn. And look at that. There's already, what, one, two, three, I think five here? That is not bad at all. Let's get you together and both of you. And you you could just throw away. We, we, we don't need you to be a part of it. So already I have three turtle eggs, I think. Is it? Okay, do you mind? I'm trying to steal them. And it wasn't three, it was four. Fantastic. And this one also laid four? Okay, that's a quick eight. I'll take that. And continue searching the land. Although it looks like the ocean has come to an end. Unless, I tell you what, I'll go over the iceberg area. Probably not going to find a warm beach in a snowy tiger, but I'm sure if I keep flying around, it'll connect back up to warm biome. There you go. Planes ahead and turtles to go with it. It's actually six in the area, which is kind of insane. We'll breed you, we'll breed you, and both of you guys. All in all, it laid me a grand total of 11 new eggs, which gets me to 28. Yeah, I'm going to get so many turtles from this. There's two more here. And if I get a stack of eggs and place them all, I'd only get 64 scoops, which is why I'm going to make a bit of a farm for it. Because if each of these turtles that hatch lay me three or four eggs themselves, and those turtles grow up into babies, or should I say they hatch into babies and then grow into adults, then I'll get a much higher amount of scoops. So I'm past halfway of reaching my goal of 64. So I'm going to keep flying around and searching the land. At this point, I think I've got enough. I've got, yeah, I'm going to have 70. I'm going to have more than 70. Yeah, 72 to be exact. So now I can build another portal and fly my way back home. There is also a fortress here. I usually never find the rib armor trim. Hey, but a load of obsidian. I have an obsidian farm. I don't need this. And it's a glitch one anyway. You know, forget it. Let's get out of here. A random floating portal. Okay, you just never know what you're going to see. And a bastion. You know, the snout template is kind of common. So there's a decent chance we could get. Okay, you can't get up here, can you? I'll put my chest plate on just in case and go crazy. Just obsidian here. I'm hoping a bit of ancient debris would be nice. It's a treasure one, actually. So netherite ingots are a good chance. And the upgrade template will be there as well. Other than that, there's not much of use here. I tell you what, that's kind of rare. So it was worth grabbing. Now, how do I get to the rest of it? Here it is down. Okay, I thought I'd be electron. Clearly not. Can't tell if I've been here before because there's nether. I don't know if that's natural or if it comes from me. I'm going to jump down here. Feather falling will serve me well. We drop somewhere. To there we go. Yes. And okay, I've made a portal here, actually. And there's nothing useful then, because we're not in new chunks. You know, it seems like there's nowhere in this world that I, I haven't already been. I've made it. And as you can see, my elytra are nearly dead, so I'm going to just pop up to this gold farm. Punch one of you guys in the face, and then I can repair them. And that's all. That's sorted out. So now I need to find the right spot to build it. Like I said, I don't want it to spawn, and I don't want it too near to here. Because it's, it's just going to be a lot of lag having loads and loads of turtles. Because I do think once it's all sorted and done, it's actually going to be quite a cool build. I reckon this could be a good spot. It, it is pretty much far away enough from where it needs to be. But still close enough for me to see it. This area will be big enough. My only worry is that I think the ground isn't quite flat. I could mine away this entire layer. I reckon it's going to be quicker. And we just fill in these gaps. It's also good news that it's going dark. Because it means I can sleep and stop the snow. And then I can start filling all of these gaps in. Also, look at this. Floating snow. That's not something you get anymore in Minecraft since they patched it, but it's 
It's very, very cool to look at, and I will be preserving it. And I think for the most part, this area I've got is big enough. Maybe just over here is going to need quite a bit of terraforming. And also over here, this is going to need to be extended. It's going to be a pretty big turtle. I don't know why I have to make such, everything such a big project. Could have made a simple farm. Look at that, more floating snow. Very nice. Anyway, yeah, could have made a simple farm, but instead I had to make this massive thing. But that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to not just build farms everywhere with no decoration. I'm trying to make them look nice and look cool as well. So I think when it's done, it will definitely be worth it. Although to do that, I'm going to need a lot more dirt. So it's time to make a trip home where I'm actually going to drop off all the items in my inventory. I'm going to worry about that later because instead I want to get the area ready and the giant turtle built. Also, this Soul Speed 3 can go on the bookshelf. There we go. I'll never be able to find it again and work out where it is, but it's good to know it's there. Probably have loads of them because I have a bartering farm, but I've also got an extra one now too. And yeah, now it's just going to be a case of making this whole area look really, really good. Or at the very least, I'll make it look like the kind of place that a turtle would reside. And with that, I think everywhere is flattened, cleared, sorted, ready for a giant turtle to go on. I can leave that ice there because there'll be a turtle built on top. In fact, you know, I'm going to mine it out now. Why not? We can just get the pickaxe to it. It's very quick. And then new ice will freeze over, although I have to wait for the whole thing to freeze before I can mine it. Also, Minecraft's rarest block right there. I, I don't know how I got it there because it wasn't with an enderman, but still very cool indeed. Now to build the giant turtle, I'm, I'm going to need many, many different blocks, such as 36 stacks of terracotta all dyed into different colors. So that's fine. I've, I've definitely got that. But one block that I need that I don't have, I don't think I actually have a single chest for it, is the brown mushroom block. Look at that. Brown mushrooms are completely empty. Now, the brown mushroom block can only be obtained with Silk Touch. And considering I don't even have any brown mushrooms themselves, that's what I'm going searching for first. I was going to go to the nether, but actually, I think I have a better place. There's a swamp over in this direction, and I'm pretty sure they're fairly common there. Unless I've already been to this swamp earlier and used up all the mushrooms, but I don't think I have. We'll, we'll have a, yeah, look at that. There's one there, and technically, one is all I need. I'm going to get more than that, but but that's a, that's a, oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that I was breeding these random villagers here. I'm sorry, guys. I just needed a swamp village and the rest of you were, were, were not necessary. At least I let them out of that hole they were trapped in. Anyway, where are the mushrooms? Is there more of that? Oh, yes. Look at this. Lovely little cluster of four. Oh, I have a mushroom farm. You know what? What am I doing? I'm nearly 6,900 days in, guys. It's easy enough to forget what kind of farms I have. I've built loads of them. But yeah, if I literally just go down this trap door, there's a mushroom farm all the way down at the end of this corridor. I wonder how it's doing. Is it doing well for mushrooms? It's doing well for red ones. I, I think... Both colors are meant to go in. Do we really not have any brown mushrooms growing in here? It's not because they can't grow, because there's loads of space. Look, at it, we've even got one on there that's uh, it's not meant to be. But I think it's because the minecarts seem to have stopped for some reason. So I'm going to put that back there. Then I'm going to push this so it starts moving again. That's it. Don't be stopping on me. All this time, I've had that mushroom farm. It's not even been working. Now, that's a lever that's meant to be there. This... I wonder if it stopped working. Did you pick that up? No. Oh, look at this. Loads of brown mushrooms in there. Oh, that's convenient. You get moving again. Get back to where you should be. Everything else seems fine. I don't know why this... Oh, there's just red mushrooms going up. They'll grow anywhere, will those mushrooms? Speaking of mushrooms, there's not really mushroom under there, is there? Right, anyway, let's, <laughs> let's the bad jokes. Patch all of that back up. In here, uh, well, doesn't seem to be many more brown mushrooms, but there's red ones anyway galore if I wanted that. More curious to see if the shrew cane farm's still working. I bet it isn't. I bet that, I bet it stopped as well. Oh no, this one's still going. All right, well, that's that's fantastic. It's just a really, really, really slow sugar cane farm. So anyway, I've got the mushrooms, but if I'm going to need 10 stacks of the block, there's no point manually bone meal them, growing and mining them up. No, 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 no. I'm going to make a brown mushroom farm. I tell you, you start building one farm, before you know it, you're building every type of farm going. And I could build it inside a giant mushroom. Wouldn't that look amazing? Right, <laughs> I, can't, I can't do this. I've just got to build a functional one. I'll make it look nice in the future if I ever get around to it. So I've just spent ages doing loads of research into brown mushroom block farms. And you know what I've realized? They're pointless. There's no point making one. They're, they're, there's so much effort for, for not really much reward. At least not an AFK one. It just seems that it's just it's, it's a bit of a nightmare to do. And it's not really worth it for the amount you get. Like, they're just all so slow. So instead, I'm going to make a simple manual mushroom farm. That way I can control the spawning. Like, I control the height that it spawns at. And if I can control the height, it means I can mine them up really, really easily. Plus, if it's an AFK one, there's always a risk that it might break your axe because you might, you know, lose the durability and you're away and you don't realize. But with this manual one, that won't be a problem. Now, straight away, I've realized I don't know the exact size of a brown mushroom. Like, is it always the same width? I can't say for definite. So, I'm going to go and grab myself a stack of bones, turn that into a load of bone meal, and then plant a mushroom down here in this little setup out for it. I think, I think this is the place. Will it grow? What about if it's here? Will you now grow? What if it's one lower? 
Grow. There we go. <laughs> and if you place it on my ceiling, it'll do in any light level. So I'll be using my ceiling for the farm. Alrighty. It is a one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a seven by seven. All right. Good to know. We might as well mine this up because I could do with the extra mushrooms. So I can't really make this room any wider because it'll end up going into the uh, the chorus fruit farm next door. As you can see, if we just have a little pop round, you can see we have the, the, the lovely chorus fruit farm. So we can't, you know, go across into that. But the only other way around this would just to be have like a row of mushrooms down the middle. I don't really want that either. So... What I'm going to do is move the entrance along quite a bit. So I'll first dig this tunnel to be longer. I don't think there's anything along here I need to worry about. Just a, a cave. Oh, well, that's very nice to see. And then from there, I can dig out a much wider room. If I can make it so that it's three wide, like three mushrooms all together in a, in a, in a row, that would be perfect. I know what I want. So I'll do the digging. I'll do the calculations. And I will make a room that is the perfect size. This has turned into a way bigger mining project than I first thought. It's a good job. I don't know where it is, but it's a good job there is a haste 2 beacon nearby me. Because otherwise, it would be taking me forever. But yeah, this is the width. Oh, look at this. The mushrooms are already spreading. Fantastic. But yeah, this is the width of the room that it needs to be. As for length, I'm about to work that out. If I want to grow 12 mushrooms at once, this is how long it's going to be. But I reckon I'll make it a bit longer. So then I can have five mushrooms all together in a row. Also, I've discovered where this beacon was. I have no idea exactly when I built this, but... I tell you what, it's very useful. Where does it go all the way up to the top? Piece of glass, that's where. Oh, I remember this. Look, there's a polar bear there. Yeah, I vaguely remember it. And all I will say is it's kind of in the way. So I'm going to block this wall up and move the entire room one block across. And that's a room that's the perfect size. I just want to actually make it look good now because at the moment it, yeah, it kind of looks terrible. I'm thinking the floor could be white concrete because I've got quite a lot of it. And I'd also like it to include some red. Maybe like a board around the outside or something. Red terracotta could look. I, anyway, we'll just go red concrete. So I'll first get the entire edge mined out and replaced. I have more than enough for that, which is good. I was, I was worried I wouldn't have enough. Then I'm actually going to go back to the chest room to get some glowstone. Because I'd like to put four of them around every single mushroom. I don't think it'll make it break. Can I actually replant it though when it's there? No, you see, I can't plant it down anymore. But when it's mycelium up, it won't be an issue. So we'll continue adding all of these. I hope I've brought enough glowstone, actually. A stack might not have been enough now, I'm thinking about it. There's 15 mushrooms. I've got 64 glowstone. There's four per one. Yeah, it's, I only need 60 glowstone in total, so I'll have four to spare, which is good news. Nothing like a bit of quick maths. And then I can break all the rest of this stone because it is going to be replaced with the white concrete. Mission accomplished. I don't know what I'm going to do with the walls, but they, they definitely don't look right right now. For a start, I think the roof needs to be one block higher. Since the room's so long that a, a low ceiling just doesn't really fit. That definitely works better. Now, let me work out what I'm going to do here. Whilst I do that, the simplest thing is just to break it, and then I, at the very least, have some space whilst I'm deciding. Space to place the blocks, that is. And I don't know how long that guy's been stood there. He has a bone in his hand, so I guess he could just never despawn. He must have been around since before I made the mob switch. Wow, I never really see mobs around my house. Well, prepared to be spleefed. And I oh, survived. Part of me feels like you deserve to live, but uh, not today. I've come to a decision with the walls. I think it would look good if it was red mushrooms. The only issue is I don't really have any red mushroom blocks. That's what the farm's meant to be there for. So I'm thinking if I first need to, well, well, well before anything else, I need a new axe. That's going to require two sticks, three diamonds, and the only upgrade on it technically is silk touch. I think I'll put efficiency and, well, I'll put unbreak, yeah, I'll put everything on it. You know what? Unbreaking and silk touch and mending as well, because then I can repair it. So that is all I'm actually going to require. I've just gone under a thousand levels. That is sad, but when I repair my pickaxe, I'll, <laughs> I'll get my levels back up as well. Next, I shall come to my little mushroom growing spot, which is here. Wait, is that the one? You know what? I'm... I'm sick of this. Why don't I just make my life way, way easier? And I was going to say grab a block of mycelium, but apparently I don't have any. What is this? Okay, right. Um, Plan B, I think there's some mycelium at the mushroom farm. At least I'm about to find out. If there isn't any there, then I'll just forget it for now. And I'll, I'll go on a, a mycelium collecting spree some other time. Never been to this mushroom farm so much. Okay, so that's... Wait, is it just all puzzle? I think, I think it is, isn't it? Now that, now, yeah, it's just all puzzle. Forget it. The nearest mushroom biome is, is just miles away. So I'll simply place dirt there, then the other block like this. Get the mushrooms. Get them down. Get them bone milled. Don't get crushed. And anyway, then we can go like that. And we're getting every single block. It's pretty quick. And I just rinse and repeat. Get rid of it. Place it. Oh, wait, did I? No, wait, why is it not placed? Oh, it is placed. Okay, I'm just, just an idiot. Bone meal again. And, okay, get the correct one. Get the correct pickaxe. And I, I'm going to need quite a lot of red mushroom blocks to make this building. And trust me, I'm telling you, once it's all done, it'll definitely be worth it. Already, I have made it to a grand total of th nearly three and a half stacks. Nice. In fact, yeah, three and 28. 
If I just mine away that. Grow it one more time. Come on, any moment now. There you go. It's over four stacks, which probably isn't going to be enough, but it's a good position to be in to start placing them down. I quite like how it's looking. I, yeah, I need another four stacks to get all the way around. And I'm thinking underneath this, we go mushroom stems, which is probably going to be the hard thing. But it, uh, mushroom stems, like, wh whichever way you place... Okay, I've just messed this up. I'm not going to look at this. Oh, no, it's okay. I was going to say I thought I'd made it so that those would um, look wrong, but they don't. So, anyway, yeah, mushroom stems, I think we place underneath as a nice little thing. I could even have them slightly indented, although I couldn't because the beacon's in the way. But getting those takes a bit longer, but it just adds a little bit extra to the wall. I love the spottiness of the wall. It looks good. I think maybe it needs a bit more decoration. Maybe brown mushroom blocks are the answer. The roof, I, I don't know, but right now, I'm just going to have to keep growing mushrooms and get in more and more of those red mushroom blocks. And thankfully doing so does not require much bone meal at all. A little bit of a change of scenery and the roof is pretty much complete. I decided in the end just to make it match the walls pretty much because I'm, uh, I've not got any creativity at the moment. And this build is not my main focus, so I didn't want to put too much effort in. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of glass to start the next part of the build. This is basically the bit where it's the actual build, not just all the nice aesthetic stuff. Yeah, I spent way too much time on that. So. This is probably going to break. Yep. And we want glass at this height. And we want this above every single mushroom. Now, these I have planted aren't even meant to be at this point. Instead, they need to be a little bit below. The reason being is a mushroom's minimum height is five high. So that's one, two, three, four. So I need to go down one more deeper. And this is where the mushroom is going to be planted. Another one? How long have you been here for? Well, you won't be here much longer. And I think my plan down here is just to dig the whole thing out. In theory, I could just leave it all stonework. But I, I feel like I've spent so much time decorating this room that I should at the very least make some sort of effort in making it look nice. The first way to do that is to add a nice white wall around the outside. And you know what? I feel like it's just a bit cramped down here. I'm going to make it one more taller. And then I can expand the wall. Although before I go any further, because I do need to still mine out a bit more of the wall and this floor... I should repair this pickaxe because I definitely, definitely do not want it to break. Mending really is such an amazing thing. Now we're back in business and I can continue mining out the wall and also the floor. Now to fill all this in and I'm starting to worry. Okay, well, we've got 64 there. Yeah, I'm, I am really starting to worry that I don't have enough. No, I've got nowhere near what I need. And there isn't much left in here either. Just some red terracotta. Guess that means I'm grabbing four stacks of sand and also some gravel, turning it to powder, and then I'm filling in the floor. And now you may be thinking that this just doesn't quite look right. Actually, I kind of like it, you know. Maybe I could just have a red concrete border. I'm going for it. I'm, I, I did not mean this, okay? This was not part of the original plan. But I think the powder is kind of a cool look. The original idea was to just place down all the powder and then put a water bucket over it so that it would change to be normal concrete. But yeah, I think I like this idea better. But a nice cool look. Anyway, I need to try and remember now which is the correct way out. It appears to be this way. So I'm going to make a nice little walkway that turns into a bit of a staircase it'll then come out here it's a little bit of a random one i know but yes this is this is what it's gonna look like okay it'll work trust me just need to make it look nice by surrounding it in white concrete and then yeah i'll actually add the redstone stuff because to say i'm meant to be building a turtle farm i'm pretty good at getting distracted and building something completely different that's mission accomplished i finally get to use my water bucket trick and make it as a, well do this little cool thing which is it's for look at it just flow down and transform into concrete and now i need mycelium if i'm ever going to make further progress on this build i need to find some mycelium surely i've placed some down somewhere in my world i reckon you guys probably know the answer to where it might be but around here i i really don't know i just have one place that i think will be where i can go you see there's one place where i can find any block in the world well any block before 1.20 anyway. Yes, my collection of every single Minecraft block. This is where I have some of the rarest stuff, like bedrock. Brown mushroom, oh, that's always nice. And many others, I can't need that diamond netherite for the trims. Anyway, mycelium. So, <laughs> if I'd have brought some dirt, which I didn't, you know, that would take brains, and I, I apparently don't have those. And then I can go up through the beacon hole. Dirt can quite easily be obtained. Nice. I should maybe not be yawning and, and concentrate more. Don't blame me for being tired, guys, all right? These videos take a lot of effort to make, and I, yeah, it makes me sleepy, all right? Just make sure you enjoy it and keep watching. That's all that bothers me. And now begins the great mycelium. Oh, look at us, it's bedrock. Yeah, the great, great mycelium spreading. So we begin by putting this around here so we can spread that way. And I think if I have it above as well, can it spread upwards? We're going to find out. I think it can, but I could be wrong. Who knows? All I know is it's spreading already. So once it's... Is that all the dirt I have? Okay. We could always use that bit of dirt, but we won't. But yeah. 
This needs to spread as much as possible. And I could use it for the brown mushroom block farm. You know, I've quickly come to realize that it does not spread on the block above it like that. I don't know why I thought it would, because it spread everywhere here, but then not onto those <laughs> up there. So let's go and fill some of these in. I know diagonal upward spread, so that, that could be useful. And once again, I now wait. And every single one is now spread. Perfect. I'll carefully gather them all up with my silk touch shovel. Are you back in the block collection? Yeah, I do need to update this place. Hopefully, maybe this episode. You never know. I'll tell you where else I could have got mycelium from. Not in here, not in here. But if I go round to this little... Well, it should be shut, should that? It should be like that, but it, it's not. It's not a passageway. But if I go round on this ladder, round to this bit... And then, is it is it one of these? Yeah, there's my ceiling right there. I could have just take it some of it, spread it, and put it back. Anyway, doesn't matter, because one way or another, I've got what I needed. Now, I just need to get all the redstone kind of thing. So, glass is going to be kind of important. Bone meal, yes, as well. Although, I think I'm just better taking a shulker box of bones. Since they will last a quite a bit longer. Dispensers are super important. Basically, a bunch of redstone stuff is going to be needed. Maybe not that, but that much, but yeah, that's going to be good. Observers, pistons. It has to be said, I need the whole shebang. And it begins with mycelium underneath every single one of these gaps. I'm actually kind of curious. If I place dirt, the mushroom... Oh, hold on a second. Where's my, where's my bone mill? Alrighty. Just out of complete curiosity, will a mushroom grow if I just place it on dirt? Oh, will. Okay, so I... <laughs> didn't actually need the mycelium, guys. Don't actually need it. But you know what? I need more mushrooms to plant for a start. And you know what else? I do think that having mycelium looks better. The only issue is that mycelium is going to get changed to dirt anyway in time because the dirt is going to... Well, the, the mushroom is going to ch change it to dirt. The way I was going to combat that was I was going to have mycelium next to the mycelium so that it could spread across. Can I be bothered with that now? Not really, truth be told. Also, I want to test something out because this will affect how I design it. If I have a dispenser underneath... A mycelium block. I think it does, you know. No, it can't do. There's no way. I was going to say, does it grow a mushroom? We will find out. No. I need to bone meal the mushroom, not the mycelium. You're an idiot, SP. All this redstone experience and I still don't know the basics. But yeah, dispensers dotted around are going to be very important. Then the dispensers will be hooked to observers so I can turn them on and off. This basically means I don't have to bone meal each individual one. It'll bone meal and grow them for me when I need to. Foolproof plan, I tell you. It's a foolproof plan. It's a bigger job than I thought hooking all the redstone up. So I put an observer next to every single dispenser. Then they all need a piston like so. The on and off lever can be here. I'm going to then get redstone to go behind. I've only got two stacks, so I think if I flick that, the redstone's gonna go on. Yeah, I don't want it to be on just yet though. Just like that, I've run out of redstone. So close. You think I have to go all the way back to my chest room? No, 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 because there's redstone there. I've just got to work out how I'm gonna get it. Fortune pickaxe must be the answer. I also have one in my inventory. Well, let's start by mining that up. Get it. Then we can get all of these little pieces and finish the trail. And in theory, assuming I've done all the redstone correctly, every single one should start firing. I've, oh, wait, I forgot to do the middle ones. All right, that, they're kind of important. But all of the ones that I've wired in work perfectly. It's, it's a miracle. I feel like an actual electrician as I do this. I'm just basically tearing up the entire floor for my wires, which I've been told is what they do. But honestly, don't, don't quote me on that. I'll just concentrate on Minecraft. And this is where the glass comes in handy because it's not going to block the line. Oh, fantastic. We can do that on both sides. Then we can carry on putting this down. Next, I flick that. Something's going wrong down here. All right, okay, yeah, we are probably not meant to do that. I should have that like that instead. From there, there's not much else to do. I probably need to clear some inventory space, which I can very easily do. And then my task is simple. I just go down here. I need to get a load of bone meal. So let's, let's grab, I don't know, nine of these, craft them all, and begin filling up dispensers, which is now successfully done, meaning I can get the brown mushrooms plant one on every single bit of mycelium, which I'm glad to say I have enough of to do that. I am then going to pick up these sugar boxes. I flick this lever. They should all grow. Okay, some of them are growing. What's... Are they all going to eventually... I think all of them will eventually grow, although... Okay, this something's not right here. First things first, this observer is upside down, so instead needs to phase that... Oh, not like that, but it... You know what I mean? It needs to face that way, which is the case for all of these. Next, I need two pieces of redstone dust and a block of stone. So I need to fix this bit of redstone here. Oh, two pieces of redstone isn't enough, is it? I, uh, is this going to work? Oh, we just need to do some moving around. I'm sure it'll work. Should be all sorted. Even have four redstone to spare now. I don't even need this. Now when I flick the lever, do they all grow? They've grown. Yes, they've all grown. Fantastic. Then I can go up here and place down a shulker box. This is going to have the axing and the spare mushrooms. I'm going to use my fortune axe first, and look at this. I can just go across, 
and mine out all of them so, so easy. It's, it, this is now just loads and loads of mushroom. Ready? Okay, and you, you know what? Maybe it's an oversight making the wall out of that. You know, probably shouldn't have done that. But everything else is fantastic. So you can see, I've got loads of brown mushrooms for this. I don't know if I need a load of brown mushrooms, but just in case, you know, for growing new ones and stuff, that's all sorted. I can put this axe to one side, and I can actually put these in the shulker box. And you know what? I've had a change of heart. I'm actually going to mine up every single one of these and see just how many brown mushrooms it gives me. Well, I think I had six in at the start, so it has given me about three and a half stacks just over that. I also want to change these so that they're not how they are right now. Instead, I want them to be like the full block on the inside. I think it'll just make a nicer doorway. I'm going to go up to my chest room to grab a stack of red mushroom blocks just in case I need to do more wall repairs. I can go in there and these can go right here. And there's not much more for me to do. Obviously, the stems have to go. I don't even know if the, the whole stem... What happens if I... Let's, should we just see what happens if I only break the bottom one? Does it grow through them or do you need to get rid of the entire... I bet you have to get rid of the entire thing. But there's only one way to find out. We'll grab bone meal. We go like this. Okay, oh, that, that was... <laughs> that was like the worst one to test it on. I have to do it on one where there's actually a stem above it. Take two. And the answer is... It does not work. Next, I'll get every single one of these planted down. Start the bone meal. Just watch them all grow. Some of them take longer than others. But they all eventually do... Well, apart from you because you've got one already above you. But yeah, now I'm starting with zero brown mushrooms. I want to see... How much it gets me? One harvest. How much are we going to get from this self-designed farm that I've done? Every single one is mined up. I've just got to kind of run around and grab them. And it is a grand total of... Wow, okay, that is a lot. Ten and a half. That's actually technically all of the ones that I needed. I, I didn't expect it to be that good. The farm's literally just too OP. But even so, with all that, I'm still going to use the farm a few more times and just see... How much I can get. You know, when I'm finished, I could make an entire brown mushroom house. I'll never have to worry about this again. Which is exactly why I wanted to build one that was so good. In fact, there's more there as well. Three more as well. Yeah, but that's why I wanted to build one that was so, so good. So yeah, I'll get busy using this farm a few times. And I'll see just how many blocks I can get. I've used this farm that much that I've nearly broken my axe. 29 durability. Just got to be careful. Because I definitely don't want to have to craft a new one. Conveniently, I have all these XP bottles. So if I just... Put this in the offhand and throw a load of them down. Yeah, that, that's going to repair it just enough for me to finish off these. Then I'll go down here and mine up every single stem. Which has given me a decent inventory full, hasn't it? Yeah, not too bad. Pretty happy with this farm. 18 stacks. Oh, by the way. Yeah, also got four shulker boxes. <laughs> okay, yes, I got a little carried away. But it's got to be worth it, hasn't it? Okay, I never have to worry about brown mushrooms again. I'm going to go and get this axe repaired. This gold farm's going to be the easiest way to do that. I have to say, Operation Mushroom has gone very, very well. And some more important stuff I'll need is stone bricks, which I don't have a lot of there. Let's just grab a few stacks of stone. Have we maxed out the stone space? Oh, okay, it's getting close. I should sort that out soon. Let's also get brown mushrooms down here. And the other item I want is black stone, these polished black stone bricks. I think I'm just going to need a bit of extra blackstone in case I run out. Because this corridor part, is, it's not looking very good. It's looking like nobody lives down here. So this is like the last thing that really needs sorting. I'll also, before I forget, put the axe into here. I thought I'd need stone bricks for the floor, but apparently I already did that. So I don't need to bother with that. Instead, it's just the walls and the roof that need sorting. Excellent. It's all done down here now. I don't have to, don't have to worry about mushrooms anymore. I can actually focus on what I was supposed to be doing, and that's is building a giant turtle. It's amazing how one project can just lead to you doing a million other things. Now, one material that I'm going to need a lot of is wool. Namely, green wool and lime wool. I'm really hoping that it's all in here. But I, I don't know. You know, it's, it's basically up, up to this sheep and this sheep to have eaten enough grass. I should make a more powerful wool farm, should I? Let's have a look. All right. I think we've got enough lime wool. And green wool? Okay, not quite. Now, <laughs> What's the solution for this? Could take the white wool and dye it, but I've got a better idea. That better idea involves first going to sleep. So the better idea is actually to not get any of the resources from... Hang on a minute. Have I got... Just a second. Oh, we've got... Oh, uh, you know what? Forget it. I was going to... Uh, you know what? Here was what the idea was. It's not needed anymore, but I still want to show you because I was kind of proud of it. I was going to fly to the EOL farm. Then I was going to go to where all the millions of pieces of string are kept take a few of them and craft them all into white wool. And from there, I must visit somewhere else. Namely, the Guardian Farm. Why would I go to the Guardian Farm for green dye? Well, as it happens, it's not just a Guardian Farm because there is a massive, massive, massive cactus farm above, which if I turn on, will get me absolutely loads of green dye. Just look at it. In fact, if I flick this lever, I can flick all the levers and then the 
furnaces will not dispense it out and then it'll just stay in there and I can collect it. It's basically a giant cactus XP farm, but I'm going to flick every single one. I've let the machine run long enough. You can see we get loads and loads of the dye. Now, in all of these ones, it's just 17, but it's increasing as we get further along because there was more green dye to go around. And so at this part where it's a full stack and we're actually overflowing, so yeah, I need to <laughs> get these out pretty quick. Now to do the same with these, about three and a quarter filled, which is definitely not bad considering how much short of a time it's been. And I can finish off by... Oh, I didn't mean to do that, but yeah, I can finish off by getting some lava. So whilst that keeps the machine topped up nicely, although... How buckets, how buckets are looking too bad either. I then need to remember to switch this off. Otherwise, all the minecarts break and I, I don't want that. So I know I can leave when the, when the soul sun moves. There we go. They've extended. I can swim home and store all this extra dye in here. I, I had quite a bit anyway, but you know what? You can never have too much, I always say. Could also dye all of these to be green. I'm not going to do that. I think the white wool is fine. And I can get busy with the task in hand of gathering up every single material for the giant turtle. All of this powder needs converting. And I think I'll do it in this tiny little machine. It, it's definitely not as effective, but why not? Okay, so we're gonna, I think it'll do one color at a time in this from what I remember. So we'll put all of those in there. I have got a, mis a mix match of uh, stuff. In fact, let's, let's go and take this out first and let it filter into the correct chests. And I can start placing and mining. It's all been converted successfully. Let's start putting it in the shulker box. Well, all that's apart from these 44, which apparently I forgot to do. <laughs> Just give me one second. There we go. And I still need a bunch of other materials, so I'm going to spend time gathering up every single one. I've gathered up all the materials. Kind of annoying me that I'm still on level 999. I will get to a thousand before the end. That's a promise. And you know what? I don't want to build this in the snow. It's just going to get everywhere. So forget this. Kind of want to look at a clock to see what time it is in the game. But apparently I don't have one in my hinder chest. Don't think I have one anywhere, do I? No, 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 it's just maybe my bedroom. But you know what? Let's go ahead, grab a piece of redstone out of this chest, as well as an item frame and four gold. Uh, four, not three. And then I should be able to craft a clock I can see the time. I can see that it's pretty much only just become day. What can go in my bedroom? It's been a while since I've had something new in my bedroom, isn't it? Although there will be a new poster coming to my bedroom next episode. Stay tuned for that. Also, that sub count is completely wrong. Yeah, don't ask why. Recording from two different setups, sometimes things mess up. Anyway, I've got about, looking at the clock, about eight minutes until night time. So I'm going to spend those eight minutes at the gold farm getting to level 1,000. And whilst I'm at it, I can also fully repair my pickaxe. I think everything else is good. Yeah, it looks like it is. But it's always worth getting my levels up. And here we go. Any second now. There we go. Up to level 1,000. Going to stay for a bit more XP because there's a little bit of time left. That should be long enough. And I'm glad I didn't wait until I got level 1,001 because I think having level 1,000 just looks better. The snow has stopped naturally now, so I, I didn't need to wait till night to sleep. But anyway, I've got rid of it for sure now. I've fixed the sub count. Yes, please, please subscribe. And the great building work can begin. I think I'll just get rid of these leaves manually. They, they don't need to be here. The first thing I'm going to start off with is the body. The bottom of the turtle. I feel like I need a turtle here to show you exactly what I'm doing, but I, I ain't got one right now. Out and transporting them is not easy. So I've got this. I've kind of marked out where the pattern, but it's going to be six of these. And then actually, to be honest, at the front, it's going to be a bit of brown mush. Oop, not like that. Uh, I don't have it. You know what? I'm going to need that silk touch axe. Quite an important component, if you ask me. And whilst I'm in the area, I do have some turtles down here that I can show you. At least I think I have some turtles down here I can show you. Where are they? Oh, there they are. Okay. Look, oh, there's loads of them. Fantastic. So these guys, look at them. They have the body. So the bottom of the shell. That's what we're building right now. You probably didn't need me to tell you that, but I've, I've told you anyway. If I can get down here without crashing, well, it would have been a miracle. It's very, very narrow, isn't it? And a long way down. But if I keep coming down here often, I'm sure I'll get it. You know what? I quite like this room. Now, I've just come into it. I, I think it's quite a cool looking place. It's also a lot easier to fly upwards without crashing. Well, still nice to do it. But it is definitely easier. Anyway, let's crack on with building. I have the needed tool to break that. And I also need to replace that. Because, yeah, if you do that, it, it, it messes it all. Bottom layer successfully marked out. You can see the size of this now. And the, the shell is only going to come outwards and be bigger, so it's, it's, even, it's even larger than this. And this next bit's fairly straightforward, because it's just basically a repeat of the blocks below it, so I, I don't have to think. I could just place. Here is where the head's going to go, and I'm actually going to have some storage there. So I've got some stairs that go in, up into a sort of sandstone area, and more blocks can be placed down. It's filling out bit by bit. It's actually going to be expanding outwards pretty soon, but on this layer, actually. But I think before expanding it outwards, I'm probably going to be better off making the flippers underneath it, and then... I don't start to get, like, you know, confused and, and everything. I have to build the flippers afterwards. So having these down first will just make life easier. We've got this on this side. It's going to be pretty much the same, but just a second layer high. So I'll start placing it all down for that. And now with that down, there we go. And you'll see I haven't placed anything here. And that's because over the top of this, we are going to be having the shell part. So you wouldn't see this bit, which is why it's not being placed. Nearly all the way around is done, but I also need to add another flipper right here. So I'll do that first and then add the shell expansion over the top. 
And since I'm doing all these flippers, I might as well do the rear ones as well at the back. These are lower than the side ones, so they're going to be actually on the floor. You can see those are kind of up there. Yeah, these are these are actually down here. So that's why I didn't worry about doing these before the shell bit because yeah, I've got I've got room to space right there. Room to space. Space to jump is what I meant. Okay, anyway, let me just build the other one. The rarest block in Minecraft will be preserved. It'll be hidden underneath because I'm not going to place any on this level because you can't see it. So that's a nice little side Easter egg. It's all looking good. Is it starting to look like a turtle? Maybe. You know what? The face is actually getting there. Right here, I started doing the eyes. I'm going to need some black concrete as well. I think it's in... No, it's not in there. This one is in. So let's grab that. We're going to have a bit of concrete there for the eyes. And Okay, let me eat some food. I'm struggling to sprint right about now. But yeah, one eye was over there and one eye was right here. I think that really will make it start to look like a turtle. Oh, yes, it definitely does. It looks really cool. That's a perfect segue into me building up the next layer. The underside part of the shell is done now, so we're moving into the green colours, which is a lot easier to do because there's just, I don't know, less combinations than there is with all the mushroom ones. And I'm not too far off completing the turtle's head either. Just a few more layers. Here's what I didn't want. The snow. Right, I'm getting out of here. We're not, we're not, we're not standing for this. I'll continue the project when it's stopped. In the meantime, I'm going to go down here and grab some string. I'll just get a whole shulker box of it. If I have a whole, I don't have it. You know what? I can spend some time consoling Consolidating these shulker boxes so that they are completely full, which kind of involves just chucking everything on the ground. As long as I remember to pick it up after, that's all that matters. I don't forget about it, SP. But yeah, if I just take everything out of here, if I can, and then put everything into this one. There you go. So that's full. That's full. And that one's not even worth filling. I'll, what on earth? Okay. <laughs> Get the other, I think. I'll just place those in there. Pick this one up. Stick it in this chest. And pick everything up. I think I can also put all the items in this shulker box. And kind of merge them into this one. Yeah, that, that saves some space. But you know me. It's something I'm always up for. According to the clock, it's nearly night time. So I'll, I'll just wait here for it to, to get dark. There we go. Quite cozy stood inside here, isn't it? And with the snow gone, I can now get back to work. I am also going to, yeah, <laughs> de-snow this guy by placing down string on him so that when it does snow next time, it's not an issue. He's going to be absolutely fine. Sad this or placing glass at sky limit. I think sometimes it is just quicker to do it with this method of placing the string. But the only issue is sometimes you can see it. You can't really. You, you won't be able to tell. I can't really place any other string down on the bulk of it because I haven't done the top. I, oh, I can do it on his flippers though. Don't need to do it everywhere, which is nice. Just got to do it. Okay, if I could jump right about here in this layer and everything in that direction. Now to do the same on this one and finally this one. With that sorted, I can now get the top of the turtle's head down and then I'll place string above that just because I might as well do it whilst I have the shulker box of string with me. And now all that's left me to get done is the turtle's actual shell. This is as high as I'm going to build the size. You can see it is starting to look like a turtle. To us from here, that's how it's going to look. It's going to be that... I, I don't like this tree being it. Straight away. This tree has got to go because it's, it's blocking my view of the beautiful turtle. So I, I might need to just change the terrain over there a little bit. But this is, this is what we're working with. I do, however, still need to fill in the entire top, which is going to be a load of different green colours. And finally, it is done. It is it's so big that it just takes ages to place all the blocks. But in my opinion, it looks pretty good. The only thing missing now, well, there's a few things missing. But one of them is that I need to get string on top of the entire thing. Nicely done. I did have to go home and get an entire new shulker box of strings. It took like 1,500 string, which I didn't really think about. And I do have some snow in my inventory. So I'm going to place it under the bits that aren't going to get snowed on. Because when there's, I actually want it to snow now. But when the snow snows... It'll, it'll fix all of this ground, but it won't fix the stuff along here. So I've done a bit of it manually. It'll take quite a bit more to do all the rest, so I won't worry about it now. Especially when you consider I'm about to get quite a bit. If I, everything inside here is going to be dug out, so I'm going to... No, I'm not going to try. I was going to say I'm going to try and dig out the snow layers as I go, but I don't think I will. I think I'm just going to dig. And then if I actually need snow layers later, I can just get them from my house. I'm having to dig the whole thing lower. This is this is where the actual bulk of the farm is going to be going. Round this outside, if I can find my sand, which is, is somewhere here, in the sand shulker box of all places. But yeah, the sand is going to... Not like that. But the sand is going to have a border all the way around this outside. And because grass blocks are a little bit hard to come by, I am going to conserve them by taking a load home and dropping them off. And whilst I'm here, I might as well actually grab all of my snow. I don't even know if I've got enough to cover the entire area, but I will give it my best shot. Flipper number one is done. It would be good to add more blocks along the front here as well. Yeah, terraforms out. If I'm quick, I can grab them from here before they despawn. I don't actually have to be that quick because I'm going to be mining up a load more anyway. Just like this. That's that sorted. I don't mind if dirt despawns because... Where's the sand? Because I have loads and loads of dirt 
from a dirt farm. That's good. It's just grass blocks are a little bit more precious. Let's bring all of this out like so. I'm actually going to completely cover up this ice lake. It doesn't need to be here. Perfect. It'll be a turtle in the snow. I'm going to just place it down so we can see what it looks like for now. But I think the answer is it looks pretty good. I like it. It's kind of annoying me that there's just one hole here that doesn't have it on. Then I'll put it underneath that flipper. Beautiful. All these flowers and grass has got to go. Everything else should fix itself. Well, Apart from under here, apparently I, I, I didn't do this. Man, I'm going to run out of snow soon. Yeah, I've only got three stacks left. All right, that's enough of that. Had enough of placing stuff. Oh, oh, of course. Oh, right. Nice timing snow. Are you kidding me? I just spent all that time placing extra stuff. Well, at least we know that's going to be sorting itself out. Now, <laughs> I should have just left it for the snow to come. Now I am going to put down some sand. Although I shouldn't really be putting down any sand because... I need to also break the blocks underneath it, and it's going to have sand. Oh, I've run out. Let me grab a bunch. But yeah, it's also going to have sand above it. So it's not the end of the world, so I'll just mine it, and it'll fall into place. But it just kind of means it's going to get in the way ever so slightly. I do find it really fun to build my farms inside of a cool build and make them look nice rather than just plunking them anywhere. But it, it does make it take quite a lot of extra time, doesn't it? And if I'd done this for every farm in my world, there's no way I would have had as much as I've got. But... At the same time, now that I have loads of stuff and have time to make my farms look nice, I might as well do it. Plenty of the sand is down. Now to build the walls that will divide up the three sections of the farms. And those walls are going to be two blocks high, along with little sections here. Now these are where the turtles are going to lay their eggs, and the adults aren't going to be able to get down these gaps, but the babies will. And that's how I can split them up and farm the scoots. This is probably the longest part of the farm. Once this is done, it's all smooth sailing. Mission accomplished. Next, the entire bottom part needs to be dug out and replaced with sandstone. With all that in, the next needed thing is probably trap doors. Yeah, they need to go in the middle. In fact, no, they don't need to go there. They need to go one higher than that. I should have done the trap doors and then added the sandstone, but yeah. Basically, they're gonna go along here like this. And the exact same thing is gonna happen on this side. And these are here to stop the adult turtles from just crawling across on over there. They need to stay in their own section. It's a bit of a tedious process, but every single trap door is now down as well. I'm going to need fences because there are fences going around the outside as well. You know, just the good old fashioned way of keeping them in. And then the way I'll get on top of those fences is with carpets. I can jump up. The turtles can't. It'll just make my life easier. So we've got moss carpets just for a little bit of extra texture. And then I'm checkerboarding it with lime carpet as well. Now for the next bit, I need water. I have a couple of buckets, but I, I feel like it's gonna be hard work because I need an infinite water source. Also, let's clear out this snow. Don't need to be here, does it? But yeah, instead of placing down all the water, I'm instead going to fly back home. And in fact, on the way, I'm gonna stop off at the desert sanctuary because all of these bits, I'm gonna need to film with snow at some point. Might not be today, but it does need doing because I've got I've got glass above it so snow won't fall on, but it kind of looks weird just having a massive green or well, green corners on each side so one stack of ice should do the job and once the water's in i can probably place all the eggs all the eggs where did i put the eggs oh, you know what? before I, while, I'm, while i'm flying about i should grab them and get the eggs placed down because they take forever to hatch so <laughs> i'd rather be ahead of the game and then they can be cracking whilst i work only thing i will have to make sure of is before they do hatch I place... Okay, what? why is there just loads everywhere else except for that one? Anyway, as I was saying, I need to make sure that I place some blocks. Otherwise, the baby turtles are just going to fall straight through. And all these eggs are going to be adults for the farms, not babies. Right, so that's all in place. Now I'm going to take the ice. And the way this is going to work, it's a very, very simple and I think quite a clever design. You just break... Well, you place ice in each corner. I'm going to have two here, actually, because it's going to go both ways. And you'll see the water flows everywhere and it will push the baby turtles to this very spot in the middle and that's the case on every single one so we can go like this put it in the corners and as you can see again it pushes them all to the middle so i'll quickly do this on all of them and then each of these holes needs to be dug down a little and then all tunnels connected up from there i'm going to need a lot of hoppers and a lot of composters i'm hoping that much will be enough but i'm not entirely sure you know and i do have quite a lot of iron so why don't i just grab five stacks and craft a little more just a bit, where are they? <laughs> Just to be on the safe side. Composters, I do have a decent amount of. Do I have a lot of slabs in any of these chests? Not really ones that I want to part with. So I'll do something like this. Don't know if I have inventory space for it, but we'll make a load of slabs. And then we can make another 54. I think that should be good. In fact, I didn't even notice I have these extra spruce planks. So let's 
do that. Now, it should definitely be enough. I'm also not going to sleep tonight because I'm pretty sure at 3 a.m. every night, the turtles have a guaranteed chance of cracking. Well, the eggs do, so I might as well stay awake. So, Because I need them to hatch before the end of the video. If I do all this and then don't start getting scoops before the end of the video, what a waste it'll be. So come on, guys. Hatch. Please hatch. And there is multiple ways I could do this. I could, I could have it so that once... The turtles fall down. The water could push them all to one place. But you know what? I'm not doing that. Instead, it's double chest right here. Followed by a long line of hoppers. And then composters above them. And also glass to like... I want to be able to see in if I want to. But that'll also make it so that when... I don't know if I can tell you this. But basically, when the baby turtle grows up, it might be a little bit big for that hole. Oh, wait. Hold on. If it's glass, it won't be too big. Uh, hold on. Um, it won't be glass. It'll be a solid block. Yeah, I definitely don't want to be getting that system wrong. So, once again, it's going to be that and that and then a bunch of dirt around it. More composters. And I think it is done. I'll just use smooth sandstone to kind of make this area look nice. Because at the moment, you can, you can see all the dirt and the rubbish. Oh, I hear some cracking. Is this the magical moment? Just look at them. They're all cracking right before me. <laughs> I feel like a proud mother. A hatch. No, no, don't go down there. No, don't go. Okay, I didn't know they could hatch as well. This okay, this is bad. Um... I should have filled this in. Well, you, um, yeah, it might not end well for you, little baby fella. Oh, no, more hatching. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> well, we know the farm's working anyway, guys. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good. Clearly, being a turtle mother is not as easy as you think. Look at this little guy. He's having a whale of a time just swimming around. It's only when he grows up will he maybe run into trouble because he'll be a bit big for down there. But until that day happens, he might as well enjoy himself. The place is as safe as it can be. The storage room is also complete. I'll make it look as nice as I possibly can. And then I can't do much more other than wait. I have to wait for all of these to hatch. Like anything, patience is key. There is one little thing I could do while I'm waiting, I suppose. I could go ahead and clean up all this snow, which is here from earlier. A minor task. Basically, anything I do, I have to stay in this area, otherwise... They won't keep getting the updates, uh, the, the game tick updates, so they won't, uh, they won't hatch. So yeah, I have to be in the area. And it's not too far from the sun going down, so some interesting things will happen eventually. Here we go, it's 3am, it's time of the crap. Wait, did I not? What am I doing? Why didn't I place any of this? I'm just an idiot. I'm so sorry, turtles. I've just, this is just a murder. This, I've, you're all, you're all gonna die, aren't you? I am so sorry for this. I, this is all my fault. Why did I, oh, they're surviving. I don't know how I missed this area. Thought turtle hatching was going to be an exciting time. It's just a stressful time every night. But we've got more babies. This time, they are staying on. I guess, yeah, I could just kind of wait for them to grow up. And some might hatch in the meantime, but most of them are going to hatch again at 3 a.m. I think a lot of them are, are, yeah, they're pretty close. Here we go. It's the moment of mass hatching. The hatching left, right, and center. Some of the adults are growing up as well. More scoops for me to collect. This, uh, table. this is the most exciting part of the night. Is there a scoop over here? Excellent. Another productive night. We're about to have the last of the 3 a.m. cracking things that I can have in this video. If, if they don't hatch, that's it. They're, they're, they're not getting out of here. Okay. Another one else. In fact, there's been a few which is good, but I've also realized I'm going to have to wait 20 minutes for them to grow up before I can move on. So, you know what? Forget it. All right? Any babies, they're just going to have... I am so sorry. That was an accident. That, I'm, I'm a monster. Anyway, basically any babies that there are now, they can just go down and we'll get the scoops from them anyway. Well, they're not going to be used as breeding turtles, all right? We, I'm sorry. I, I keep punching you guys. There's just too many of you when I'm trying to break stuff. Oh yeah, I don't need that many breeding turtles anyway. And if I do want more of them, I can just have like a section up there with loads and loads of eggs and then they could hatch and then I could move adult turtles across. That's an idea. Okay, I like the sound. I don't think you can put turtles on leads though. So moving them... Might be enough. Can you put turtles on leads? From what I remember, I don't think you can, but we're gonna test it. Oops, I'm sorry, I've just punched you again. And you may think I'm losing all these blocks, you know, by not picking them up, but don't you worry, because I just have to go down here. And into the chest they go. Oh, we've got two scoops, that's good. Now, th you will see, that there's, and you might think this is an oversight, because there is a bit of a section, it's actually all the way over here, where there's turtles, and he's just, he's just swimming there. But it doesn't matter, because... That, that turtle didn't have to die. When he grew up, the scoot still went in. So it's actually at like a nicer way. He didn't die, and I still got the scoot. I mean, if, if every turtle ends up in there, we're going to end up with an overload, and I might have to get rid of him somehow. I, I, I think you can work out how I'd do that. But as long as we don't get too overloaded with them, I don't see a problem with them swimming back and forth through there. It, it, other than maybe a bit of lag, I'm sure it's, uh, it's fine for them. You know, I've realised it's just way easier if I do this from down here, from in the water. Then I can just move around, walk, break it as I'm going. And there isn't loads of turtles constantly in my way. And there we go. I think every single bit is gotten rid of. Meaning if I grab a bunch of seagrass, I can now start breeding them. We can get loads and loads and loads. There must be, I should, I should have some slabs above so I can more easily walk around and breed them. But yeah, we can get loads and loads more 
baby turtles and eggs, which eventually will lead to loads and loads more scoots. Especially when you consider that sometimes a turtle can lay four eggs, so it may, you know, take up two turtles to breed. And you think, oh, I'm getting one one egg from it. But no, sometimes you're getting four, so you can get, like, twice as many turtles. So I'm quite pleased with the farm. Obviously, yeah, it's, it's more of these one of these ones you have to run through the night. Look at that. 17 scoots. It's not bad, you know. It's not amazing, but it's not bad. And the only turtles that'll survive are the ones that grow up when they're in the middle bit. Those I won't get seagrass from, but the other ones I will. I don't know if it's a guaranteed drop or not. Okay, so they can drop anywhere from no seagrass to two seagrass. So on average, they all drop one each. So yeah, I, I dare it. It should be a seagrass farm as well, which is what I can use to breed them. But I, I shouldn't just use that for the seagrass because... Yeah, seagrass is pretty easy to get. All I need is some shears. And I can get loads of it from the bottom of the ocean. Nearly two stacks of it, pretty much instantly. And I, I think using bone meal, I can actually make a farm of it. So I've got the turtle seagrass farm, and I can actually make a real seagrass farm to, to fuel the turtle breeding, if I need it. it. It depends. I'll see how it plays out with the farm, and if I actually do use up way more, because... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think it might be okay, but time will tell. Let's have an ender chest in this corner, and then if I go ahead and grab two of those we can have a seagrass chest up here so it's just gonna be a single one because it, it don't need to be massive does it so that can go there seagrass in there now i think there is some seagrass at the bottom i'll just keep scoots in there yeah that's fantastic i should have stairs really on this bit it would be a lot faster wouldn't it i'll, I'll worry about that some other time that is looking very very good obviously i haven't yet got all the turtle shells that i want because you know we, we spent too long making the farm and getting it functional for, for us to actually test it. I didn't expect it to take this long. But once it is uh, it is going and it's it's working, we should get loads of it. And I should get all the turtles. To, well, I think they're called... Are they called turtle shells? I want to check. I want to find out. Yeah, they're called turtle shells. For some reason, I always want to call them turtle helmets. They're not that. There was, I accidentally just broke a block in the, uh, in the thing. So I need to get one brown mushroom. It's very easy to break a brown mushroom block because it's insta-breaks. And if you break it with your axe, you just lose it, which is, is why it's kind of an... Oh, what a flight out of there, anyway. But yeah, as you saw earlier, it's easy to accidentally break it. So I shall quickly fix up the gap in his head. <laughs> kind of important, isn't it? And yeah, turtle farm's, turtle farm's done. We'll get the turtle shells next episode. Now, in order to get way, way more diamonds way, way faster in Minecraft, I'm going to build one of the ultimate mining machines, the Infiniball. But such a machine is massive and very, very complicated, so I am going to have to go away, do some research into it, fully understand it, then I'll be able to build it. And it's going to also take a lot of different redstone resources. As you can see, the build takes a lot of different items. And I'm going to start off by grabbing some red stained glass to make a border inside this chunk so that I make sure that I've got the right alignment both in the y-axis and in the x and z. Basically, if you don't align this perfectly, then the entire machine will, will just not work. That's this cube done. And basically, the way this machine works is it loads TNT into chunks that you don't have loaded. Then TNT can be flung out and warped to certain positions. And once you then load those positions, it'll blow it up. It's... <laughs> It's kind of complicated. I kind of understand it. It's all created by Cubic Meter. I watched both of his videos a few times to, uh, to kind of work out how it works. But basically when the machine is running, the red chunk will not be loaded. That'll be out of your render distance. And the green chunk will be in your render distance. Hence the reason that I'm building these giant cube outlines. And now with that out of the way, I'm going to start adding redstone components. And to make sure that I don't accidentally miss anything, I'm actually going to load up the droppers and hoppers and whatever as I go. So this one right here needs a shulker box full of minecarts. So that can go right there. And I can continue building. I'm also going to shove a load of minecarts in here. Basically, there's going to be a bunch of chests and hoppers all feeding into here. And then these all these will be dispensing minecarts out. Here is where the shulker box loader is going to be that recycles the minecarts. So this empty shulker... Oh, where does that go? Into the system somewhere. No, yeah, it's not going to go there. It can go on top. And if I shove all my items in here, I can then craft a load more shulker boxes. So this system keeps completely loaded up. Progress is steady. I think this is kind of one of the more complicated bits of the build. Basically, what I'm... Well, this bit isn't complicated. But I'm filling all of this in with minecarts because every single one of these double chests and every single one of these hoppers needs to be completely filled. Which, when I've done this, should be the case. Then a full shulker box can go on top. So that, that's got it. So this system is, is loaded fully with minecarts. So yeah, there's still quite a bit of work to go, but slowly but surely it is getting there. The way the minecart's gonna break as well is through a cauldron with lava inside of it. <laughs> Not like that. <laughs> I said lava inside of it. Oh my god. I didn't mean to do that. Not the end of the world though. I also need to put this 
So that's like that. And then hopefully I pick it up without burning. Yeah, so now I've got that kind of slope with the honey on top. I can sleep to get rid of the rain. And I'll continue laying up all the redstone components. I do also need this chest, this hopper, and this dispenser to be completely filled with shulker boxes that are completely filled with minecarts. There's a lot of minecarts needed, but once they're done, that's like the, the most amount of items sorted. Of course, all of that's going to take up a lot of inventory space, so I think my best bet is to maybe clear a load of it by just putting it all there. Do I have a shulker box? I already got one shulker box full. Oh, well, that's, a, that's something. So you can go in there. So we will go like that, craft the remaining minecarts that I need, put them in there, break it, and, and basically just rinse and repeat. Keep doing that. Oh, didn't mean to fall. But yeah, keep doing that over and over again until I've completely filled up the system. A good amount have been put into this chest, although I've now run out of wood. As you can see, there's a little bit left, but not enough to make more chests. So I'm going to have to fly back home. And if I could, I'd eat, but I, uh, <laughs> I left my food in a chest down there. Not very smart of me. But anyway, yeah, let's get back home. Then this shulker box. Yeah, that's got loads more wood. That should be more than enough. And that can all be used to make the rest of the shulker boxes. Even got a spare one here now because that had the wood in, so I can just keep crafting them and keep filling them. And at long last, it is done. And I've got three minecarts to spare. The whole process took me so long, I've even had a haircut in between. But the chest is full of shulker boxes, which means I can pick up all these items again and get back to building. I've pretty much done all the complicated redstone stuff that at least has containers and stuff. Now, you know, a lot of it, it's not going to be as wide. It's just going to be mainly this bit that's going to be built upwards. And there's going to be that, that wall to transfer signals upwards and down as well. And I'm very glad that I won't have to do any more crafting of loads and loads of minecarts and all sorts of items. That bit is completely sorted. And that's pretty much the bottom part of that redstone done. Like, it's still going to all have to connect up. And it has components going into it. This is just kind of going to keep being repeated upwards. It's like, you know, sending a signal. I, mean, I don't fully understand what every single component does. I'm just I'm just building it. Just rebuilding it. Um, obviously, my... Uh, my wall thing is going to keep being built upwards as well. That's going to go up loads and loads. It's just a good way to send signals up and down big distances because if you change the state of a wall, it changes it all the way down to the bottom so the observers can detect it. It, it just, just makes life easier than using loads of redstone wire. There needs to be redstone going under here. Actually, I've got that wrong. There needs to be an observer here and then there needs to be rails along this way and these rails connect all the way around then there's going to be another observer and that's just kind of it's just a better way to um transmit the signal and at this point all the redstone down there is pretty much done i'm just now adding a system that will be able to transmit more signals up higher and that's where like the tnt is going to be made and everything and there's also going to be a signal of doors and observers going upwards there but all of this is done. Also down here and all the way along there, I need to build what are known as the entity separators. So it'll separate out the TNT that's unloaded into batches so they can be shot. I've realized I've faced it the wrong way. So it's actually facing that way. It's going to shoot over there and blast that wall. I meant it to blast that one. It doesn't matter too much. I don't think it'll destroy the farm, but if it does, it doesn't even work now anyway. Since Minecraft already fixed light suppression and I, I, I need to look into how to how to maybe get it back so that it, it works again. But I don't even know if there's a way. You never know. There might be. We'll see. But for now, my main priority is just getting this machine finished. The machine's really starting to come together. You can see we've got some cool barriers for the TNT. And then this is all the slime that is going to push it into position so that it all ends up in, in like one spot down there and it can all be it can all be processed and all that i do think it's a really cool concept for the machine so these all need to be extended out oh, i missed a bit of rest i wondered why that wasn't extended and now we're getting up to the point where all the tnt is going to be created so i'm making other slime bits so that it'll be aligned in the other direction because obviously that's aligned it in i don't know which is the x but in that direction and then this is going to align it in that direction and the good thing is whenever i get an empty shulker box which i think i've only got one at the moment just uh, this one here i can break it and take it all the way down here to this little redstone area which looks so small now that i've built all of that and if i can find the place i want to avoid that bit of string because that'll just set off so much redstone i think this pressure plate doesn't really affect anything so we'll just kind of go there and then we can put... No, wait, that's the minecarts. Wait, where are the shulker boxes? This is the empty shulker boxes, so they just go in there. Then we can grab a brand new full one. And then I can get back to work. Right here is the containers for the lava. And then I'm going to put the lava in. And the glow lichen is what will hold the lava up, but not get in the way of it dropping through, of the TNT dropping through. That's why it's better to use that rather than something like ladders. Because obviously, well, they'll burn anyway, so that, that'd be a problem. I could have used warp signs, but anyway... I've, uh, I've used it. Where's my fire up rockets? Let's, uh, let's get up there. And each corner is going to have lava in it like this. I think it's probably going to be easier if I just swap out everything in my inventory, put it in there, and then fill it with lava buckets 
so that I don't have to get keep breaking off. In fact, let's get more of it. All everything off the hot bar. Then it can be all lava buckets. We can put that there. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, let's get to work. Now I'm starting to get to the point where all the redstone is happening again so that we can kind of make the bit that activates all the TNT with the pistons. But that does mean that I need to add the redstone for the system here to connect that to that. And, and the way that it's done, if I just swoop on down, in fact, whilst I'm down here, I might as well go to sleep. Then it stopped the rain, made it day. And from there, if I can fly on top of this door, it's a bit of a challenge, but oh, SP can land on anything. And from there, I've just got to make a very long tower that consists of observer, concrete, door. And then again, observer, concrete, door. And I just have to keep repeating that all the way up to there. Yeah, quite, quite a long way. But uh, that's why I've got all these doors and stuff. And it's at least it's not complicated redstone it's it's just repetitive and a, and a long one so yeah that's uh, that's what i'm gonna do and it is done we can put an observer there in fact there's gonna be two observers there and then one right here and that's what connects this to all the redstone up here so as you can imagine it's, it's quite an important part of the machine there is also another important thing which i can add back in basically you can see here this trap door will send a wall signal down. But as I was building the wall, it, it kept updating the observer at the bottom. And that observer was then triggering this redstone line and, and doing all sorts of like dispensing minecarts. But that's all sorted now. So I can go ahead and add the repeater back in. So before I forget, these hoppers that you see, some of them need to have items in so they actually give a proper output to the comparators. Otherwise, it's, yeah, it's not going to work. I don't really have any compostable items on me. So I'm thinking if I go into my ender chest, grab some shears and mine up some leaves, then I can add them to the composter to get them to the right... Oh, not like that though. <laughs> but yeah, to get them to the right power level. And actually for all these, they only just need to be power level one. So they just need a tiny bit in. It's actually quite easy to do. So guys, the missing cakes were bothering me. So I kind of looked back through my footage to see where they were. And there, there is the missing shulker box. If I just fly up, grab this if I can. There we go, we've got it. And then fly back on this platform. You will see there they are. And a lot of glass and a lot of other basically important stuff. Also while watching the footage, I realized something else. But before we can realize this, I need to grab these firework rockets because uh, we've run out. But yeah, basically, if I fly all the way back home, you may remember I made some cakes in my base because I, I was looking for the ones. Well, in doing that, I, I left some shulker boxes back here. I, I just noticed when I was looking for them. So there's that one which has all of that in, which is kind of important. And there's this one which has all the TNT, which is important. I need nothing else. Now I can definitely finish this build. My, that post looks cool, by the way. I think it'll be good to have another one on this wall at 8,000 days, won't it? Anyway, can't worry about that because I've got a machine to complete. And the thing that he's doing right now is putting down all the stuff so that the TNT can go in. I will be placing down the TNT until the very end. That's just basically rule number one when you're building a machine like this. Don't put the TNT until the end. Otherwise, you'll probably accidentally blow it up. More progress has been made. Now, this is where the TNT is going to go above these gates. But... As I said, I'm not placing it. It's going to be a bit of a nightmare to actually place it because I've got a lot of redstone to go above it, but I'll, I'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. But right now, I'm going to place as many of the blocks around the TNT as I can without placing any above it. Now, this barrel is also going to provide a signal to all of this, and for it to be the right amount, it needs 17 cakes in it. Now, I do have three... No, in fact, I'll have four spare cakes. You can see things are starting to happen when I put them in. So I have four spare cakes... I need to go and make another 13 at home. Didn't think I'd be a cake baker today. I have here all the ingredients, just need milk. And then I can get busy making cakes. That's all of them. The buckets can go back into storage and I can fill this barrel. Tell you what, we're in a thunderstorm. I just heard a bolt of lightning. You know what? It's a great chance to use the mob head farm. I should, I should probably take it. In fact, I've got an even better idea. But if I'm going to execute it, I have to act fast. This is basically just putting everything else I'm doing on hold, all right? All these items... Get him in a shulker box because I need to do something that I should have done ages ago. It involves first heading to spawn and quickly grabbing my channeling trident. Then I'm going to craft some boats, turn off the shulker mob switch, which is making it so no other mobs can spawn. And then I need to go out here and find some creepers. Aha! Wait. Did the thunder stop already? Yep, apparently it was the world's shortest thunderstorm. Now it's just a rain. Oh, uh, well, you know what? I'm going to sleep. Although I couldn't sleep because there was monsters nearby. So I'm going to turn the mob switch back on and just stick to the task in hand of building this machine. I also need some lectures. I'm pretty sure I brought them, but again, I don't know where they've gone. Probably another lost shulker box somewhere. You know what I'm like? Pretty stupid with it. So I'll grab a load more from in here. And it's good that I've come back because I do actually need nine book and quills as well. So... 
There's the feathers. There's the ink sacks. And with nine books added into the mix, I can craft nine of those. Also, whilst I'm just in this general area, my elytra are kind of half broken. So I think it's a smart idea just to come up here, punch someone in the face, and get a bit of free XP to mend the elytra. So three of the lecterns are going to go in front of the comparators. And then I have to do the annoying part, which is actually write the books. Now, none of these books are going to be signed and sealed, which means I can't just do the duplicating them of the crafting grid. Because you, you can, if you put like a book that's signed with another book and quill. It'll dupe it there, but because I'm not signing them, it's just going to be like So we're going to put it in, and you can see, based on the setting, is, is the page. So it's just basically the page number, but you put these here so you know what it means. So this one is set to page five. The book on here is exactly the same as that one. I could just put it like that because it is set to page one, but I need to write all of the pages as well. Just in case I want to make modifications to the settings further down the line, I have that option. So yeah, I'm really just trying to future-proof this. Perfect, they're nicely all in. I'm gonna set this to be on page nine. So that's page nine, that is page one, and that is page five. And before I can add the rest of the lecterns, there's plenty more building to be added. Next, there's gonna be three more lecterns along here, and these also all need their own books. They're all gonna be set to the first page, but they are all different, and I'm just gonna write all the values out so it, it's correct if I ever need to change things. Since I'm only gonna build this machine once, so I might as well get it right. Nicely done. Set to the correct page, now I can get back to building. And there is a lot of redstone and blocks in this section, but obviously I'm not doing anything until I've got the TNT down. Since that's the final job on the list, it won't be happening anytime soon. And that's the final book in. It needs to be on page 13, so... That's the correct page. That should be page four. And this final one should be page five. I think all the books are set. The machine is coming together. And I'm sorry to say this. It is also nearly, nearly done. I mean, it's, it's a complicated thing, isn't it? There's just a few more bits to add at the very top, such as the player detector. So it's, it's a really simple system that will just detect if the player is in the area. So there's going to be a fence like that. And then I need a pressure plate. I need a gold pressure plate. That's going to be here. And then... If the minecart is loaded, so it needs to be on this bit of rail. You'll see, it keeps pressing, pressing down the minecart. But if that becomes unloaded, let's say I'm far away enough in that direction where that chunk's unloaded, then the machine can then work and it won't break when the player's in the area. Because it's very important that the player does not load the machine when it's working because the TNT needs to be in lazy chunks, which are the chunks just out of the player's render distance. That way, the TNT will not just blow up and instead it can be stored until the player loads it and then it'll blow up. And that is kind of how this entire machine works. It's a very, very clever system. Cubic Meter has absolutely smashed it with this one. And I still cannot wait to use it. And I think for the most part, all the redstone is done. The only stuff that's missing now is for me to add the TNT and then I can add redstone stuff on top of it. Obviously, I couldn't add that until I've added the TNT. So that's why it's not there. And the only other thing missing is a bunch of observers down here because I kept activating these rails and they were activating the pistons and, and messing up the machine. So I th I'm thinking add the other observers last. There's like just a couple. I'll, I'll show you where they go, but that'll be a bit further down the line. Instead, I need to go ahead and grab the TNT. Also, I know I said these are the last little bits. I also need to add the TNT separator, which is a massive, massive trail of stuff that goes all the way from one side to all the way in distance. And that's what's going to line the TNT to shoot it at that wall and make a massive, massively long hole. So in reality, what I actually mean is once the TNT is down and all the redstone components above it, I've done all the hard stuff because that long trail is just very repetitive, the same thing over and over again, which is easy enough for me to do. And that is all the TNT in so far with no disasters. Next, target blocks are gonna be placed above wherever there's redstone and then at the very end, there's gonna be glass. And above these, there's going to be white concrete. I have to be so, so careful with this because one wrong move and I will literally blow up the entire machine and all my work will be down the drain. Which would be the worst thing that could happen. It will basically just ruin the entire video. So yeah, I've got to get this right. All of the redstone is now down. I didn't set anything off. I'm very, very glad. I say all the redstone. There's one piece left. I've got to place it there. But I know when I place it, it is going to extend this piston, which is going to attach to the redstone. And it's, it's going to do some stuff. And I'm kind of worried. That it, well, it's gonna, it's gonna put itself. I just hope it doesn't set off the TNT. It shouldn't do, but you just never know. Here goes nothing. Oh, it's fine. Oh, well, that's good. I feel like that was really anticlimactic in the end. Anyway, it means I can go ahead and get down these observers that I wasn't doing until it was safe to do so. I need to somehow get around. Let's do a little. Okay, well, we're falling. But yeah, I also need to get one there. 
That, this is all set up now. Up here, everything is done. Everything is ready to go. I just now need to build the system that separates out all of the TNT. It consists of glass blocks spaced one block apart, like so, all the way in the distance. I can kind of keep collecting these up as I go. And then there's a massive row of concrete that's going to go all the way over there. Then after adding a bunch of other blocks, I now need to start adding trip wires both sides, every other block. And then there's going to be string in the middle. Next, I'm going to add vines all the way along here. Now, the reason for this is it basically reduces lag because it makes the TNT not do any calculations for fall damage. I know it doesn't make sense because TNT doesn't take fall damage, but that's just the way Mojang decided to code it. It still does a calculation for fall damage, but if it goes through vines, then it doesn't because obviously you don't take fall damage on vines. So yeah, it doesn't make much sense, but all you guys need to know is that it works. Then I need a load more glass, pistons, repeaters, observers, trap doors, and even more observers. And I think the entire machine is done. I'm, I'm pretty sure there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> this, is, this is where it gets scary because then it, it comes to the time where I have to test it. And so if I have done anything wrong, it'll definitely show up. One thing that definitely needs sorting though as well is every single one of the... Oh, I didn't mean to. Oh yeah, every single one of these vines needs to grow downwards. So maybe it would be wise if I just go around and do that manually. It is going to be hard work, but I'm sick of waiting for them to grow. So this might just be my best option. It's done. It is done. Okay, I don't, I don't think there's anything else I need to worry about. So I'm going to fly up to the top, put on chunk borders, and then I'll go to a certain chunk to make sure that the correct chunks are unloaded so that the TNT can be warped into the correct position. So yeah, I've, I've, I've got to do a little bit of counting here. It's basically 16 chunks in this direction and seven this way, which takes you to this very spot. From here, I can build upwards and make myself a nice platform to stand on. Although I, I'm going to need more blocks for that. Yeah, I didn't have enough glass left over. Let's go ahead and just... Pick up that and break this. And then I'll fly back home, get more glass, and complete the platform. I'm thinking that it may be good to have a red border around the white glass, just so you kind of know where the end of the chunk is, because when the machine is running, you cannot go outside the chunk. Because as we discussed, it could break everything. And then there's also the fact that I don't want any phantom spawning above me. So I'll make a nice little roof above my head as well. Well, I'm, I'm like one or two stained glass from making this a, a perfect little roof. Though with a bit of clever brain usage, if instead we just do this, then it works out. Okay, I'm putting way too much effort into a spawn platform. This is all it is. I just have to make sure I stay under there. And I don't think there's much more to do other than run the machine. I'm actually kind of nervous, but I've checked every single thing. I don't think there's anything more I can do. So we're going to take two iron nuggets from there and put it into this dropper. Then... We are gonna press this, and once we fly away onto my platform, the machine should start, and it, it should just be running, and hopefully everything works. The thing is, I'm gonna struggle to see it, because it looks like it's not loaded in. It is loaded in, it's just that it, the, the fog is making it so you can't see it. And it also happens to be at the bottom of the hole, which, which doesn't help either. Something I can use, however, is the replay file, so this is kind of after it's happened, but I'm, I'm gonna talk you through everything going on. At the moment, the machine is just creating loads and loads of TNT and storing it into a lazy chunk. And then the TNT is going to be pushed along and separated here, so it is ready for blasting off. At this point, enough time has passed for the machine to do its thing, so in theory, I should have a lot of destroyed blocks. We're about to see. Is there going to be a massive hole? There is! Okay, fantastic! It didn't destroy the AOL farm. Oh, look at this. So we've got loads of items on the ground, and I'm thinking if I'm quick, I can pick up all the diamonds. Look at all these diamonds everywhere. So, we've got to go fast, all right? We, we, we're going to clear out some space here, you know, combine some stuff, make some stacks of diamonds, and then we just go to town, picking up as many of them as we can. And hopefully, this is going to let me get all the diamonds that I need, and it's going to expose so many. Look at it. Oh, it's absolutely massive is this hole. I've basically got five minutes till everything despawns, and to increase that time, I've made it so the render distance is really small. That way, if it's not rendered in, it's not despawning. I will also just grab my fortune pick quickly, because if I see some diamonds in the walls and I'm nearby them, I might as well grab. I've also already reached over a stack of diamonds, and that was just in two minutes of searching. There's so much more of this to get through. This might just be what I need to get all 25,000 diamonds. With that, I've got over 100 diamonds, and there's still plenty more to be found. And that is my second stack, as well as the third. And that's it. There isn't a fourth, because I've reached the end of the blast. But don't, 
don't think that's the end. Oh, we only got three stacks in 10 minutes of collecting because the size of this blast was merely a test run. The tip of the iceberg as to what this machine can actually do. Just a, a small amount. Because in reality, this machine is capable of making a tunnel half a million blocks long if it wants to. Just, just for reference, this one's about 400 total distance. So yeah, it's capable of making a tunnel a thousand times longer. And the way you do that is you have to modify some of the numbers in these lecterns. I spent a bit of time testing. I think the way it works is the more items you put in here, the longer it will make your tunnel multiplied by 192. So if your tunnel is 190, it's one, you get 192 blocks. If it's there's two in there, which I had, it was 384 and so on and so forth. So I'm going to put 20 in and in theory, it should make me a tunnel that's 4,000 blocks long. <laughs> We're gonna see if that actually works. The machine will now be working. It'll take anywhere from eight to 10 days to complete it. So I'll see you guys when it's done. At this point, the machine is now finished. It took a little longer than I expected. I'm just going to grab some extra rockets and I'm also going to clear some extra inventory space. I'll leave those here for now. I'm going to completely fill my inventory with diamonds and hopefully it's worked. Hopefully we have an absolutely massive tunnel that is just ready to be harvested, okay? The moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. And, okay, there's a lot of blocks on the ground, but I think these are items that I already got. Has it expanded the tunnel? Oh, it's miles big. Look at it. Oh, it's huge. And we've got loads of damage. Let's go. This is fantastic. So I put the render distance down to two so that all the drops don't despawn, and I can then run backwards and forwards, collecting up all these diamonds. If my calculations are correct, the tunnel should be about 4,000 blocks long. And I have absolutely no idea exactly how many diamonds that's going to get me. And in roughly half an hour, I have now got about 500 diamonds. So it looks like searching these tunnels is about 1,000 diamonds per hour. Maybe even more than that because I have worked out it's just faster if I fly and just get the diamonds on the ground. And when you see a diamond on the ground, look above and below for a diamond ore. Just a shame that the diamonds that have been blown up don't have the fortune effect. Otherwise, they'd be way, way more. But this is still proven to be an insanely good method. And once I have mined up these four, that is 1,001 diamonds. Yeah, using this method, it's so, so fast to gather them up. Tell you what, this tunnel just keeps going on and on and on for thousands and thousands of blocks. It is never ending. I, I can't wait to show you at the end when I put my render distance up to full and just fly through it for you to see just how long it is because it really is insane i've also managed to get over 1500 diamonds now and if you include that with the three stacks of diamonds i got when i did the test run of the infinibore then i am closing in on almost 2000 diamonds and with that we are now at over 2000 diamonds i don't know how much longer this tunnel is going on but it seems to be quite long so i'm optimistic i'll get loads more i'm so glad i built this machine I, my only wish is that i'd built it ages ago because it is so so effective so the total amount of diamonds that i have in my world is 9,548. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. And according to my calculations, I don't even know if it, I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't think it's going to be enough for every trim. But straight away, I'll grab a bunch of diamonds and I'm going to make more of these trims. I just can't believe how much it takes, but yeah, I'm pretty sure we can do this and keep going round and round. So we need three stacks and 58 all together. All my beautiful diamonds just disappearing into a massive armor trim project. Why am I doing this to myself? Sometimes I wonder. So that should be it, I think. Or do I need one more? I do need one more. The reason for that is I want one spare. Then if I ever need extra, you know, if I ever need to apply it again, I've, I've not got to go and find another one. So that's, that's all those done. And the spare can go in here. That's two out of 16 done. Now I can do the same for the host armor trim. So again, I'll just grab loads of diamonds and... and convert them all, and then get busy crafting. It is actually quite satisfying to do this. It's just a shame that the diamonds don't last very long. That's also all the Vex ones done, as well as Razor, the Coast Trim, and also Sentry, which I've unfortunately run out of diamonds for part way through. All them diamonds used up, and I've worked out I need another 50,988 to make every other smithing template. Quite a lot still needed. But you know what? I have all the different armor types here. And they're just in chests. I feel like I should make an area where all the armor stands are going to go. Yeah, this is the future. Right at the bottom, we start with 10 armor stands. And they're going to be everywhere. It's going to be absolutely covered on them. I, I, you know, I've just got to get my best foot forward here. So let's go ahead and get all the sticks out. Craft so many armor stands. 53. It's not actually that much. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, I need 1,000. I should have more than enough to get them all down. So let's do this. And I'm not actually sure if it's the armor stands that cause lag. 
or if it's when the armor's on them. I think it's just when armor's on them. So this shouldn't be too much of a problem placing them all down. It's the armor trims that could be problematic. Crafted loads more here. It looks like loads anyway, but because they're in stacks of 16, doesn't actually go that far, does it? Anyway, let's continue placing them down. And that's one section. It's going to look amazing. When it's done, it's going to look so, so cool. But just the fact that it's taken me ages just to place all the armor stands makes me realize it's going to take ages to add the armor even more. Yeah, it, why did I do this project? That's all I keep asking myself. Why, why, why? But you know what? I'm really, really looking forward to the end of it. It does also look like it. I'm correct. The armor stands themselves are not causing lag. So I don't have to worry about getting all these placed down. I can just get busy and get to work. Are you kidding me? Four of you? It's only just gone down. Is this because I didn't sleep for ages when I was dealing with the turtles? Probably. Let me fly away. And then I can get some shut eye. And also continue placing. My goodness, I feel like I've placed so many armor stands and I'm, I'm only just past halfway. Progress has been brilliant. I'm very, very happy with the Infinibore. That has been the big highlight to get, you know, to up to 10,000 diamonds. I know the world's looking a little bit sparse, but we've, we've done all right. And the sun has now set on day 7,000. Don't forget to go and grab a sign poster. You never know. I might turn up at your house to deliver it. Who knows? I might even have to travel all the way to America to deliver one if, uh, if it randomly gets selected there or any other country. So that'll be a very, very fun experience. But yeah, that was 7,000 days in hardcore Minecraft.